are with the most awaited marathon lecture for direct taxation CA CMA inter. Right from the slab rates, the agricultural income, all heads of income, clubbing, set off, deductions. Till here everything is covered in this marathon. We'll soon be coming up with a part 2 of it for TDS, TCS, return of income which is actually very important. And of that the major points are already covered up in the tax amendment lectures. So I want all of you, so many of you have joined telegram group and are clearing their doubt through voice note. So if you have not done just below the description box, voice note uh, clearing for that we have made a telegram group link is given. So you can join that while you watch these revision videos repeatedly, you know, please. So that that gist is in your mind, what is the format, this is allowed, this is a disallowed. Logics if you want to learn, then detailed you need to watch the videos. But while you watch these revision videos, I have used some booster notes, some PDF material. So in the description box, concept classes app link is given. In that on the left hand side, free material content is there. There you can see all these PDF booster notes are available for all the heads of income. Still, if you have any doubt in booster notes, do comment below the video and would be glad to clear all your doubts. So learn with the logic so that you don't have to mug up. Every day is very precious for you, dear students. So keep working and while you study other subjects, also give weightage to accounts costing other subjects. But income tax is a subject which needs lot of repetition. So while you are traveling, while you are uh, not able to do full-fledged studies, at least just put the headphones and listen to this marathon lecture for just revision of all the heads of income. Every minute thing has been taken care of where uh, students usually go wrong. Okay, so make most use of it and I have already uploaded the marathon video for accounts and costing. These are my core three subjects and right now regular batches are going offline for inter taxation and CMA final taxation also. So just being busy with that. Marathon was the demand of most of the students. Ma'am please put marathon. And thank you so much for all your appreciation you are giving to the tax concept videos also. Those who have small doubts like ATTT, ATTTB, interest on loan, age of the capital asset, there are more than 58 tax concept videos in the playlist. Just check the playlist tax concept videos and 5 to 7 minutes your doubts will be clear. I don't want any student, dear students, to go with doubt in final exam. Sometimes that doubt doesn't come in the exam also. But if you go with the doubt that 1% confidence goes down which I don't want. So any which way is through connected with WhatsApp or Telegram or through our app or through our Gmail account. You are putting mails. I am replying to that also. Stay connected and if you have any doubts, I am always there with you all to solve it. All the best to all of you. Work very hard. There is no substitute for hard work. Leave aside all your distractions. And take super benefit of these marathon. Start by watching the slab rates now. And if you really feel that these efforts of compiling all the revision videos is helpful. And if you feel so many of you message me that my concept is so clear by watching your YouTube videos. But when I am saying comment below the video so that it motivates others also that you are not doing. Do it now please. Comment below the video if it is really helpful to you. Do share it with at least 5 to 6 of your friends whom you feel it will be helpful. The tax concept videos, the amendment list and the third is this. And coming up, upcoming just 80% it is over 20% finishing is to be given is one MCQ test in our concept classes app portal. At a very reasonable rate, I'll put up the MCQs test, which you all can avail and do a lot of practice of the questions for the final exam. Okay, all the best to all of you. And after this, the next one upcoming is the mock test uh, paper discussion, which I'll be doing live in YouTube with all of you. So keep watching for this space. If you subscribe, you can take part in the live lectures and ask your doubts there itself, right?
all the best to all of you blessings always there with all of you thank you so much bye bye hello all of you here we begin with the first class for our booster program now what is this booster program is already you all have received the time tables never it can happen ki ma'am i will prepare first whole syllabus and then i will start writing the chapter wise test series it's not going to happen so the coming week we have three exams in all the three subjects one one exam in accounts you have single entry exam as per the schedule and in uh, costing you have the basic first chapter wherein theory questions are repeatedly asked they'll give you some example and they'll give you the put the unit of measure what is distinguished between cost reduction cost control so basics and the cost sheet right so this is your exam in costing and in income tax we have the first exam for the slab rates the special rates the marginal relief and the unutilized basic exemption agricultural income so this today's lecture is very helpful for all the ca cms students writing inter as well as final exam i will emphasize a lot on pin points where generally students make mistake so be with me and those who are attending it live in zoom any doubt is there you can pause and ask me chat box is also on and those who are watching this as a recorded video if you have a doubt you can always comment below the video and all links are given you can connect with us through our gmail through our telegram group and all so as to get more updates about these live classes okay right and now the mindset is if you know that after 3 days you have to write exam of single entry then after 3 days you have to write the exam for cost sheet this is weekly meet so at least you will pick up the books and prepare more than what you have planned i'm telling you by 15th of october two months from now all your syllabus is going to be completed thoroughly do first our institutes material you have already taken the coaching then keep revising the booster notes chapter wise booster notes which we have written in the revision lecture for single entry it's more than 1 or 10 minutes i have discussed all the booster notes and formats so if you have missed watch that revision video same for cost sheet cost sheet i have given you all the booster notes how to distinguish between variable and uh, fixed cost jab semi variable hai to usko segregate kaise karna hai learn it for once you can use it in all the many chapters okay and today we are taking up this special revision class for income tax okay next week we will discuss all the papers also what you have written how you have written that will not be recorded of course i don't want to keep it open for everyone amir khan ne mana kiya hai but in the zoom meeting i will discuss the papers and let you know the presentation the speed and immediately after writing this exam check your answer sheet and the suggested answer this is your own place you have come to learn here i don't want you to do the mistake in the final exam <clears throat> so suppose your four points are there advantages of um, cost accounting system and you have written three which is the one you have missed out so that you get good score in the exam you have already linked up the subject with the practical aspects and learned while learning so right now it's the time of repetition and writing practice these exams are prepared of the professional quality it's a committed promise you will get that feel of writing the final exam so that you will not come and tell me ma'am i knew everything but i went blank when i directly wrote the final exam you will get to know the speed you will get to know the presentation you will get to know your speed of the calculator use the same calculator for in writing this exam which you use in final exam hope you know all the functions also m plus m minus all right notes which i am discussing here are basic slab rates and the pdf of, of this is available in our uh, <clears throat> concept classes app in the free content so you can download from there 
and these are the slab rate, marginal relief, agricultural income. Five five marks questions are asked not only in inter and the final exam also. Okay, so let us begin with the complete revision first of the slab rates. I'm sharing the screen, and if you have any doubt, you can ask. All right, here we go. <clears throat> See, some definitions are there. Okay, right. Whatever we earn in the financial year is taxable in the next year, and next year is called as what? Assessment year. Okay. Now, individuals, HUF, AOP, BOI, AJP. These people they pay the tax according to slab rates. Okay. Now, what are the slab rates for male, female, resident, non-resident, all up to sixty years? What are the slab rates up to two lakh fifty thousand? Income is nil, basic exemption. Yes, your very question. I have made separate videos for paper pattern, and of course, we will solve the mock test paper and all in detail. Please watch all my videos with the help of the playlist before I start with the slab rate. One very important uh, instruction. I want to give you a listen carefully. In the uh, CA Dipti Shada's YouTube channel, in the playlist, separate five very good videos are made for tax amendment, which are applicable for the upcoming exam for inter inter and final. Separate playlist is there, and for some of the important tax concepts like interest on loan and house property, ATTTA versus ATTTB, maximum marginal rate of the tax. MMR, like these small concepts videos are there in taxation concepts playlist. Do watch the videos with the help of the playlist. You will do a better revision. <clears throat> okay. So now we are starting with this lab rate. Up to two lakh fifty thousand, it is called as basic exemption and no tax. On the next two lakh fifty thousand, that is from. Zero to two fifty nil from two fifty to five lakh it is five percent from five lakh to ten lakh it is twenty percent. So sometimes you know you can just remember these rates. Five lakh to ten lakh it is twenty percent. Okay, so on five lakh twenty percent comes to one lakh. So can I say if your income is up to ten lakhs, what is your tax? One lakh twelve thousand five hundred. Clear or not? To all of you, zero to two lakh fifty thousand nil, two fifty to five lakh five percent. On the next two lakh fifty thousand, that is twelve thousand five hundred. Five lakh to ten lakh, it is twenty percent. Above ten lakh, it is thirty percent. So if your income is thirteen lakh, doesn't mean thirteen lakh ka thirty percent. In thirteen lakh, zero to two fifty nil, two fifty to five lakh. Five percent, five lakh to ten lakh, twenty percent, ten lakh to thirteen lakh. On the last three lakh, it is thirty percent. Okay, right. Now, <clears throat> if you are a senior citizen, sixty years. Whenever I say less than greater than equal to, कहाँ जाएगा? So sixty years, you have completed your sixtieth birthday year in this financial year. 60 years and less than 80 years for resident senior citizen non resident even if you are 72 years what will be the basic exemption for you yes 250 very important for all the final students to get exclusive question for 7 marks on non resident taxation so if your income is up to 3 lakh basic exemption here it was 250 But for senior citizen, resident senior citizen, three lakh tak exempt hai. Three lakh to five lakh on the next two lakh five percent, five lakh to ten lakh twenty percent, ten lakh above thirty percent. All clear? This I am again saying if you are a non-resident coming to India and paying tax, your age is seventy-two years. Basic exemption will be only two point five lakh for you. Clear? Now. If you are a super senior citizen, who is a super senior citizen? 
80 years and above. <clears throat> so 80 years and above, if you are a super senior citizen, then the basic exemption is 5 lakh. 5 lakh to 10 lakh, same, 20%. 10 lakh above, same, 30%. Easy, but again, if you are 82 years, NRI who has to come to India, and I would say come to India, not physically, but NRI, uh, taxation is there. They have to pay tax in India. Then, will your basic exemption will be 5 lakh? No, it will be 2 lakh 50,000. These are the pitfalls. This is a revision class. So, my emphasis is on pitfalls. And score beautiful full marks in your MCQs. Is my speed fine? Those are attending live. If you can tell me, is my speed, volume, everything clear? And can we go to the next concept for only for individuals? Only for individuals, we get a relief in the tax payable in the form of rebate under section 87A. Rebate under Section 87A is given to resident individual. Resident individual who has total income up to 5 lakhs. Not your gross total income after ATC to ATU deductions. If your total income is less than 5 lakhs or up to 5 lakhs, then from the tax payable, you get a rebate. Rebate is a kind of relief in the tax up to 12,500 rupees. Please don't add ESS first. Calculate the tax as per slab rates minus the rebate on the balance tax add ESS. If you want to write down huh? tax minus rebate. Suppose you have capital gain tax, 4,50,000. So from capital gain also basic exemption is given, 250 and your income is 450 on 2 lakh capital gain, long term capital gain, tax is 40,000. So out of 40,000, give rebate 12,500 and on the balance tax add ESS. Tax minus rebate and then on the balance tax add ESS. I hope you all are noting down the important points which I am saying. Always pause the video and note down. Rebate is allowed up to 12,500 to resident individual who has income up to 5 lakh and rebate is up to 12,500. This rebate is not given from long term capital gain on share, listed shares on which security transaction tax is charged, which are chargeable at 10%. Unpe rebate nahi milega. Okay? Right. <clears throat> and one very important thing, sometimes you may do silly mistake in the exam, but blunder nahi karna hai. Blunder nahi karna. Wo blunder kaise hai? I'll just wait. It's two minutes. Huh? Please wait. Along with tax, do you need to pay surcharge sometimes? Yes. On the very next page, I will teach you these are the rates of surcharge if the income exceeds 50 lakhs and all. <clears throat> so listen, if income exceeds 50 lakhs and above, you are paying on tax surcharge. If the income is less than 5 lakhs, you are deducting rebate, both cannot come. Oh, aapki income, your income is less than 5 lakhs. You are a very small person. Take a relief. Oh, you are earning more than 50 lakhs. You pay additional tax on tax in the form of surcharge. Now, I have made separate videos for this concept, but I am revising for all of you. And look at the screen. Just give me two minutes so that I can put it in writing mode. Before I go on to the surcharge part, yeah, please see with me here. On total income, you calculate tax as per the slab rates. On tax, 
you add surcharge if your total income exceeds 50 lakhs individuals and all and on tax plus surcharge tax ke upar bhi surcharge ke upar bhi mila ke you pay education tax are you all with me on total income calculate the tax on tax calculate the surcharge and tax plus surcharge at the interest okay right now let us check the surcharge rates for individuals hus aop doi ajt what are the surcharge rates if the total income exceeds 50 lakhs and less than or up to 1 crore 10% is the surcharge rate on tax. 10% surcharge rate on tax. If the total income exceeds 1 crore, less than or equal to 2 crore, 15%. Total income is 2 crore to 5 crore, 25%. Oh, total income is above 5 crore. You are earning too good. You can pay surcharge at the rate of 37%. So what are the rates of surcharge, dear students? 10%, 15%, 25%, 37%. This is a revision. You can pause and note down if you want. Right. Now, many times in the exam, in MCQ, <coughs> uh, of course, these surcharge rates I teach you with others. What is maximum marginal rate? Maximum marginal rate is the highest rate of the tax what an individual is paying. Okay, right. Let us check how it is. Maximum rate of tax. Suppose your total income is 100. How much tax you are paying? 30% 30. On the 30, 37% surcharge you are paying. Okay, so calculate it. I will also do it now. In exam, you can calculate maximum marginal rate. It is used at many places. So on 30 rupees tax, 137% surcharge ke saath, it is coming to 41.1. And on this whole tax plus surcharge, that is 41.1, we will pay 4% ESET and that is coming to 42.744%. That's why sometimes, you know, jokes are coming. Na, department ek kaam karo na. Aap hawari puri income rakh lo, tax humko de do. That's the highest rate of the taxes we are paying in India. Right? So what is the maximum rate of tax? 30%. Maximum or highest rate of surcharge? 37%. And on tax plus surcharge, highest rate of uh, ESET? 4%. In short, tax surcharge recess menake 42.744 percent you are paying to government. Clear to all of you what is surcharge, what is tax, what is lab rates. Right. Now I told you this additional basic exemption 3 lakh and 5 lakh is only for resident individual. Now here if the person is born on 1st April, it would be considered he has attended the age of 31st March preceding date, you know, AM, PM. Therefore, resident individual whose 60th birthday falls on 1st April 22 would be treated as senior citizen for previous year 21-22. And he will be eligible for exemption 3 lakh. Are you now getting what I am saying? Hmm? So your birthday, 68th birthday is on 1st April 22. Only one day is release is given. So it is assumed that it is 31st March 22. And if it is 31st March 22, then for 21 and 22, what is the... <clears throat> So relief you will get instead of 2 lakh 50 thousand, 3 lakh. Clear to one of you? Right. Now, for partnership from LLC, 
there is no slab rate flat rate if a partnership firm is having total income 1000 on 1000 they have to pay 30% tax 300 and on that 4% 12 rupees is as 312 man 312 yes so flat rate of tax is when the firm llc is having no basic expense flat rate of the tax okay पार्टनरशिप फॉर्म के असेसमेंट में इसको और डिटेल में रिवाइज करेंगे बट एल एल पी एन ऑल थर्टी परसेंट टैक्स नाउ इट इज द टैक्स रेट फॉर द कंपनी ओके टैक्स रेट फॉर द कंपनी या सो इंडियन कंपनीज हैव टू पे थर्टी परसेंट टैक्स फ्लैट फॉरेन कंपनीज नॉन डोमेस्टिक कंपनीज हैव टू पे फोर्टी परसेंट टैक्स now if in financial year 19 and 20 two years back preceding 19 and 20 mein if your turnover or gross receipts of the company is less than or equal to 400 crores for you what is the tax rate 25% but it is a flat hai so company ka turnover 19 20 if it is up to 400 crores flat rate of the tax 25% otherwise flat 30% foreign company 40% easy clear cooperative society up to total income 10000 10% 10000 10, to 20000 20000 20, above 30% okay now special normal income normal slab rate or flat rate there are some special incomes which are taxable at special rate let us check that long term capital gain on property gold jewelry your open plot and all 20% long term capital gain on share listed share section 112a 10% and most important is up to 1 lakh it is exempt This one lakh is over basic exemption. So suppose I am having only share trading income eight lakh. How much is my basic exemption? Two point five lakh. Additional one lakh I will get basic exemption. Additional long term capital gain. And beyond three point five lakh up to eight lakh, whatever is long term capital gain, it is taxable at ten percent. okay very important is in short term and long term basic exemption is allowed basic exemption is allowed unutilized basic exemption also i'll tell you the concept okay rebate is not allowed in this long term capital gain <clears throat> short term capital gain on shares 15% other than shares short term capital gain on property gold jewelry open plot slab rate casual income lottery crossword puzzle kbc prize bone vita quiz gambling online ye jo pubg aur gaming <coughs> ab to cricket 11 and all sab open ho gaya na 30% and undisclosed sources of income we have already done section 68 अनएक्सप्लेन एक्सपेंडिचर कैश क्रेडिट आपके घर में ऑफिस में कहीं पे देर इज अ रेड एंड करोड ऑफ रुपीज एंड प्रॉपर्टीज आर रिकवर्ड विच यू नॉट शो इट इज टैक्सेबल एट सेवेंटी एट परसेंट आई टेल यू द ब्रेकअप ऑफ दिस इज इफ यू वॉन्ट नोट डाउन सिक्सटी परसेंट इज द टैक्स रेट अन अनडिस्कलोज इनकम ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट इज द सरचार्ज रेट and on tax plus surcharge ecs nice clear to all of you yeah please note down long term and short term capital gain basic exemption will be there If you don't have any other income, normal income is a basic exemption. Wow, 
you will take it there and this will be taxable okay now let me tell you one very important thing which is helpful now also and in uh, income from other sources from this casual income and undisclosed sources no deductions are allowed no basic exemption you can't say ma'am i am a housewife mujhe kbc ki lottery lagi hai 4 lakh ki so 2.5 lakh basic exemption to do nahi milega okay ma'am i went to and fro in flight and stayed in hotel in mumbai no lottery ka kharcha to do no so what i want to say from casual income no basic exemption no deductions are allowed no losses can be set off nothing that's why it is taxable flat at 30% and undisclosed sources unexplained expenditure unexplained investment cash credits they are all taxable at 78% clear right okay now we have already seen the surcharge rates for individual huf aot boi all now what are the surcharge rate for partnership form only one surcharge rate partnership form is income is taxable at flat rate 30% no basic exemption surcharge rate if the income exceeds 1 crore 12% 10 crore wala limit nahi hai 1 crore ke upar kya to 12% domestic company 1 crore to 10 crore if the total income is surcharge rate is 7% above 10 crores it is 12% foreign company 1 crore to 10 crore 2% 10 crore and above it is 5% <clears throat> now how to remember this you know dear students if domestic company ka tax rate you check it it's 30% okay domestic company tax rate is 30% then in that case the <clears throat> surcharge rates are high up to 10 crores 1 crore to 10 crore ke beech mein 50 lakhs is only for individuals 7% and 10 crore ke upar income hai to seedha tax ke upar 12% surcharge foreign company the basic rate is only high 40% surcharge rates are low 2% and 5%. Okay. Now, short term capital gain arising on transfer of equity shares 111A, long term capital gain 112A, and dividend income. On these three income, maximum surcharge rate is only 15%. So, if you have long term capital gain on shares. 8 crore how will you calculate the tax basic exemption you will get additional 1 lakh exemption you will get tax rate on long term capital gain is how much 20% surcharge rate even though it is 8 crore see you are an individual so 5 crore ke upar hai to surcharge rate kitna hai 37 and 25% Are not applicable to short-term capital gain on shares, long-term capital gain, and dividend income. Even if it exceeds two crore or five crores, maximum surcharge rate is only fifteen percent. You want more example, or this is clear? Long-term capital gain on shares, short-term. I am going to take in capital gain also revision of taxes on capital gain. short term capital gain on shares listed shares fcd star long term capital gain on shares and dividend income highest surcharge rate is 1515% 25% and 37% is not applicable at all okay whatever income is there ecs is there right chalo let us check the concept of marginal gain one second only back you for waiting chalo 
Now the concept of this marginal relief is marginal. Little my income exceeds the limit, and I'm paying surcharge on the whole tax. Look at any one of the examples. Let us take the first example. Suppose my income is fifty one lakh. So zero to two fifty, nearly two fifty to five lakh, five percent, twelve thousand five hundred, five lakh to ten lakh, twenty percent, and fifty one. Me say ten lakh, nikal do. So on forty one lakh, this is the tax. Okay, you can pause and calculate. So tax on fifty one lakhs is coming to thirteen forty two because income exceeded fifty lakhs. You are paying surcharge at the rate of ten percent, one thirty two. And what is tax plus surcharge? Fourteen seventy six seven six. In the concept of marginal relief, don't mug up any tax. Just listen to me carefully, and don't calculate this tax with ESET. I want all of you to note down without ESET. You have calculated tax on income. You have calculated surcharge on tax. But look here. Suppose my income is suppose my income is fifty lakhs. Okay, then what is the tax? Thirteen lakh twelve thousand five hundred. Yeah, tax calculation. I hope you know it. I'm just revising the concept. Now, on fifty lakhs, there is no surcharge. Above fifty lakh, it is ten percent. So, if your income is fifty lakhs, what is the tax? Thirteen lakh twelve thousand five hundred. Just your income exceeded by one lakh. Your excess tax one minus two, one sixty for two hundred. Is it justified? Just because my income exceeded from fifty to fifty one lakh, one lakh se income bada, so the tax went up to one lakh sixty for two fifty. Whatever I am getting additional income more than that, I am paying tax because just the income exceeded, so I have to pay surcharge on the whole tax. Now, what is excess income? Yeah. Fifty lakh and fifty one lakh, one lakh. Excess tax minus excess income. This is the marginal relief. I'm saying to department, just my income exceeded one lakh. You are asking me to pay excess tax of one sixty four. Whatever I am earning, no one lakh, up roughly. But give me a relief of sixty four two fifty. Finally. My tax payable is on fifty one lakh fourteen seventy six. I am asking for a relief of sixty four two fifty. One minus five. This is the tax payable, excluding set. And here you add ESET. Dear students, in the concept of marginal relief and in the step method of agricultural income and non, don't calculate tax with ESET in initial step. ईसेस के साथ करोगे तो आंसर गलत हो जाएगा यस टैक्स कैलकुलेशन यू कैन जस्ट पॉज एंड चेक आई होप दैट्स क्लियर एक और एग्जाम अच्छा डू यू नीड टू मग अप द स्टेप नो कैलकुलेट द टैक्स ऑन 51 लाख कैलकुलेट द टैक्स ऑन 50 लाख द कट ऑफ ओके हाउ मच इज द एक्सेस टैक्स यू आर पेइंग 1 माइनस 2 स्टेप How much is excess income you are paying? One lakh. You want a relief of three minus four. Okay, sir. I have earned one lakh extra. No, keep it as tax. But income extra is one lakh, and tax extra is one sixty four. Not justified. So I want a relief of sixty four two fifty from my basic tax fourteen seventy six. And now fourteen lakh twelve thousand five hundred. I will pay. With ESET, a card करें. Just let us see one more example with this very quickly. Suppose your income has exceeded above two crore. So two crore and one lakh. First so twelve thousand five hundred, then one lakh, ten lakh, then about thirty percent, fifty eight. Now because the income exceeded two crore, twenty five percent surcharge. So you are paying seventy three lakh. Three thousand one twenty-five tax without ESET. 
Suppose your income was two crore. Just because it went two crore one lakh, you are paying surcharge twenty five percent. Had it been two crore, you are ready to pay surcharge. But how much? Only fifteen percent. So now whatever is the tax on that fifteen percent surcharge, and your tax is coming to sixty eight eighty four. Are you all with me? Check karo, pucho. Here the surcharge rate is twenty five percent, two crore one lakh. On two crore surcharge rate is fifteen percent. Now, what is the tax payable? Excess tax payable six lakh eighteen thousand. Oh God! Just because two crore and one lakh extra on the end, so you are paying six lakh eighteen thousand seven fifty extra tax on the whole income above two crore. It's like you are paying surcharge at the rate of twenty five percent instead of fifteen percent. You are ready to pay surcharge, but fifteen percent. Now you are paying twenty five percent. So how much is excess tax on excess income? Six eighteen minus one lakh. So what is the marginal relief? Five one eight seven five zero. This is the marginal relief. Okay, whatever one lakh I have earned extra, no, keep it as tax. Finally, what is your tax payable? Seventy three lakh minus five one eight. So in short, sixty seven eighty two. You know what tax you are paying? Actually, you are paying tax on two crore plus one lakh. Jo extra kamaya, pura ap tax me de de ro. Dekho, two crore ka tax hai na sixty eight eighty four three seventy five plus one lakh extra. Whatever you have earned, you are ready to pay. What is step one? What is step one? Tax. Calculate tax on higher amount. Calculate tax on lower. Excess tax. Excess income. This is the relief. Jitna excess income I rakh lo. But tax beyond that you give me relief and this relief is from the first. After giving the relief from the first step, one minus five, whatever six is the tax payable, and on that add the E step. Is this clear to all of you? Marginal relief, whenever it is asked, it is even in final exams, even in inter exam, five marks exclusive question is asked on marginal relief. And this so I have done for individual. Can you do it for companies also? Can you do it for companies also? Like, uh, say, let us take a partnership firm whose income has just exceeded one crore. So, on tax, so it's thirty percent, but they are paying surcharge at the rate of twelve percent. Had it been income only one crore, no surcharge for partnership firm. Same concept is applicable for firm and company for marginal relief. So, understand, right? Pause the video. Right calculation for one example. So many examples are there in the screen. Just pause and do the calculation for one example. You will never have to mug up the step for marginal relief. And still, if you have any doubt in marginal relief, you can put me a message. <clears throat> Once again, to recollect, calculate tax on fifty one lakhs. Calculate tax on fifty lakhs. Both these tax calculation with tax and surcharge without excess. One minus two is the excess tax you are paying on fifty one lakhs instead of fifty lakhs. Step number four is excess income. Can three step three excess tax can it be more than excess income? Answer is no, and that's what I want relief. And when I want this relief. From step number one, relief is step number five. I get my tax payable, and on this tax payable after relief, add E step. Please don't do silly mistake from your tax minus rebate. If your income is less than five lakh and you are a resident individual, minus rebate on the balance tax add E step. Okay, sure. So that's all for the major slab rates and all. Yeah, many times this is asked in MCQ section two eighty eight case. 
income is always rounded off in the multiples of 10. So if it is 82, 78,082, take it as 80. If it is 85, 86, 87, take it as 90 on the higher side. Income is rounded off in the multiples of <clears throat> Income is rounded off in the multiples of 10. Tax is also rounded off. Now, dear students, please don't keep on rounding off every tax. We recess for round off ki after total SNE user. The final tax plus surcharge plus e sales, whatever you are liable to pay to government, if it is coming 866, pay 870. If it is coming 862, Pay 860. So rounding off of tax and income is done in the multiples of 10. And see this presentation. Ye to aap karoge computation of income mein. <clears throat> Five heads of income, clubbing others income, set off plus minus match, gross total income, ATP to ATU deduction, total income. Huh? 14 marks, question number one compulsory, which is asked is compute the income, compute the tax, and one of the Topping mala adjustment is either agricultural, non-agricultural, which I am taking the very next, or ATG donation. ATG donation adjustment is usually asked in question number one. ATG deductions ke saath I will revise. Tax on total income, add surcharge minus rebate if any, and on the tax add ESIS. This is the tax payable, but if there is any TDS deducted, advance tax deduct. Balance may be refund or payable. And whenever you are paying late, you have to pay along with 234 ABC interest. If you file your return without adding interest and which is due, it is treated as defective. These are problems and all we have done. I think all major slab rates and all I have done. <clears throat> yeah, these are all undisclosed sources. And income is taxable at 78%. Distinguish between application and diversion. Check it once. Definition of India. This is all basic. Now, going to agricultural income. Very quick revision. There is a separate one and a half hour class also in the tax concept playlist. Please do check it for agricultural income. Especially the questions which are asked, you know. The um, <clears throat> agricultural income hai ya nahi hai. So, agricultural income is income what you get from agricultural activity in India. If I get agricultural income from Sri Lanka, from Burma, very well it is taxable in income from other sources. So, this is agricultural income from land situated in India and it is used for agricultural purpose either by yourself or you have given it out on rent to farmers. Then your rental income is also an agricultural income. If it is a partnership firm, then partnership firm. All right. So, agricultural income is income derived from agricultural land and doing agricultural activity. Now, what is agricultural land? If this is Hyderabad, leave 8 kilometers radius from all the sides. Beyond that, whatever is the land, it's agricultural land. But on this land, you have to do agricultural activity, either by yourself or through others. Like Ramoji Film City is located 35 kilometers away from Hyderabad. Is it an agricultural land? Yes. But what are the activities done? There are studios for recording and amusement park and all. Is this an agricultural activity? No. Is it taxable? Fully? Yes. So, very quick revision is, Agricultural income should be derived from land situated in India. Rent and revenue, which is used for agricultural purpose, or you yourself are doing agricultural process, or it is used as farm building situated, you know, outhouse or farm building situated near the agricultural land. Not farmhouse, which is given for weddings and birthday parties and all. No, those resorts and all. <clears throat> Very well taxable. 8 kilometers within the city limits. 
if the population is up to 1 lakh and less than 10 lakh then 6 kilometers nahi shuru ho jayega and if the population is between 10000 to 1 lakh 2 kilometers mein hi shuru ho jayega and less than 10000 is a very small village on its agricultural activity yes if it is a partnership form profit salary received by partner from agricultural operations exempt rent growing of plants creepers potted plant activities huh? these examples are clear but if you do other activities like cement and mining and fisheries and brick making poultry farming dividend received from a company company's income is agricultural income they are doing rose farming and sweet corn or dragon fruit or so bahut commercial ho raha hai to to exempt hai but if as a shareholder you are receiving dividend on the money invested your dividend is not exempt by just saying that i have invested in a company which is having agricultural income company's income will be exempt to those who are doing agricultural activity dividend will be taxable rent of agricultural land is exempt ye ra first thing rent or revenue derived from agricultural land is exempt but if you are receiving interest on the late rent received interest is going to be taxable okay now if three generally agricultural income in india is exempt under section 10 1 i want to repeat agricultural income in india is exempt under section 101 okay right <clears throat> but indirectly it is taxable if three conditions are satisfied ssc is individual huf aop doi ajp agricultural income is above 5000 non agricultural income is above the basic exempt clear right now how do you pay tax agricultural income non agricultural income calculate tax without e cell e cell ke bina agricultural income basic exemption calculate the tax without e cell are you getting agricultural income non agricultural income mila ke calculate the tax in working out one Agricultural income and basic exemption calculate the tax in working notes too. One minus two is the total tax payable minus rebate. If your total income is less than five lakh, the non-agricultural, you can take a rebate. अगर आपकी total income four lakh fifty thousand है और आपकी agricultural income है five lakh, तो आप step method से calculate, you will calculate the tax. But will you give a rebate because the total income is less than five lakh and you are a resident individual? Yes. Give the rebate and on the balance tax, this is the tax what you pay. Add education fees four percent and pay the tax. Agricultural income, non-agricultural income, calculate the tax. Agricultural income, basic exemption, calculate the tax. One minus two is the tax payable. Minus the rebate, it is balance tax at each. So this is the way we have solved all these questions in regular class. And if it is some kind of business like Tata Tea, growing of the tea is agricultural. But then drying, pruning, crushing, and getting Tata Tea in the granule form is commercial activity. So Tata Tea ke case me 60% is agricultural income exempt, 40% taxable. This table really you have to remember. Rubber. मैन्युफैक्चरिंग में 65 फाइव एग्जाम थर्टी फाइव टैक्सेबल कॉफी ग्रोन एंड क्योर्ड कॉफी बीन सेवेंटी फाइव एंड ट्वेंटी फाइव कॉफी ग्रोन क्योर्ड ग्राउंडेड पाउडर टी एंड पाउडर कॉफी आर सिक्सटी फोर्टी रबर इज सिक्सटी फाइव थर्टी फाइव कॉफी जस्ट ग्रोन इज सेवेंटी फाइव एंड ट्वेंटी फाइव कॉफी बीन यू नो सिंपल प्रॉब्लम सो दिस इनकम इज एक्सेप्ट this business income is taxable okay and sometimes if you have your own sugar farm and from there you take it to the market then there is a small concept here okay i'll just explain with an example very quickly kya ho gaya 
गायब के होंगे एग्रीकल्चरल इनकम रेसिडेंशियल स्टेटस इधर राइट में नाइन अमेंडमेंट आर आल्सो देयर इन या सपोज यू हैव एन एग्रीकल्चरल फार्म वेयर यू गो शुगर के एंड शुगर के इनका मार्केट वैल्यू है 12 लाख तो फार्म इनकम तो पूरी एग्जेंट है नेक्स्ट टू इट इज योर फैक्ट्री वेर यू मेक शुगर ग्रैन्यूल एंड सेल इट फॉर ट्वेंटी फाइव लैक्स मार्केट वैल्यू ऑफ दिस शुगर केन इज इट रॉ मटीरियल हियर ट्वेल्व लैक्स मार्केट वैल्यू ऑफ द शुगर केन यू कैन गेट अदर फार्मर्स दे मे बी गिविंग टू अदर शुगर फैक्ट्री यू आर टेकिंग इट टू योर ओन फैक्ट्री दिस इनकम इज तो एक्सेंट दिस इज एग्रीकल्चरल इनकम Growing of sugar cane, but bringing it to the factory raw material twelve lakhs market value you can deduct. Other production expense of three say three lakhs. What is the profit net profit? Ten lakhs. This is your business income. Check this example. This is your business income. Okay. clear to all of you yes so that's all for the revision of the tax rates flat rate rebate surcharge yeah unutilized basic exemption i have made a separate video also but if you want i'll just explain in two minutes with the help of an example and that is called as unutilized basic exemption unutilized basic exemption now what is this just look at this example on the screen suppose my normal taxable salary income or anything is 1 lakh 80000 now what is my basic exemption 2 lakh 50000 and what is my normal salary income 1 lakh 80000 still there is unutilized basic exemption which is not utilized rupees 70000 What is the tax on my normal income? No, normal salary income is one eighty. So two fifty. तब तो कोई tax नहीं है. Go home. Bye bye. Seventy thousand is unutilized basic exemption. Now suppose if I have long term capital gain six lakhs. Just an example. Six lakhs. Can I set off? Unutilized basic exemption seventy thousand year. Un basic exemption is two fifty. Ma'am, if I have only long term capital gain, can I take basic exemption? Yes. Casual income may no. Un in disclosed income may seventy eight percent may no. Capital gain income is six lakh. Okay, not on shares. Asay koi bhi other. Unutilized basic exemption can I set off? Yes. Balance long term capital gain five lakh thirty thousand pay twenty percent tax dena hai five lakh thirty thousand pay twenty percent tax dena hai apko and on that whatever it is coming as income did you get the concept of unutilized basic exemption if your normal income is less than the basic exemption. then the balance basic exemption you can use from long term short term capital gain all shares without shares all you can get unutilized basic exemption benefit and on the balance special income pay the tax at special rates all the gist i have tried to cover up but still it went on for one hour i hope this is helpful for every student kick start your preparation Two three days, you will be motivated. You will be going according to plan. Again, you will go down again. You need to keep yourself motivated every day. कभी कभी ना आगे planning करने से अच्छा just look back. 
okay yesterday at least i did quality good study of 5 hours and this is over i will do i will do talk positive to yourself don't punish yourself it is strict nahi hona hai but committed hona hai right so every 2 3 days whatever motivation i gave your parents give or anyone give but again and again you have to remember your higher goal that you have to add those beautiful words ca cma in front of your name for that you have to study eight subjects of final or exam dena hai karna hai or for that you are preparing your inter and for that you are listening to this lectures so keep your why very clear and keep on talking with your goals now and then let it be there in your mind mo junoon hona hai so you will perform well so look forward to your life after 5 years a beautiful amazing life and sometimes where did your time go wo bhi ek analyze karo so that's all from my side don't doubt 1% also yourself it's not easy to clear entrances and come to this level so many of you listening to me writing final exam yahan tak aake aap thodi chhodoge so there's no point in giving up you have never a dp1 आप कितने अटेम्प्ट में क्लियर हो आफ्टर टू थ्री इयर्स इट डजेंट मैटर ऑफ क्वालिफिकेशन वेदर यू क्लियर इन थर्ड अटेम्प्ट दैट डजेंट मीन वी शुड टेक थ्री एंड फोर अटेम्प्ट आई एम जस्ट सेइंग कि इट्स योर ओन जर्नी मेक योर ओन स्टोरी चेक योर वीकनेसेस योरसेल्फ कि राइटिंग प्रैक्टिस नहीं हुआ था स्पीड वाज नॉट देयर कांसेप्ट्स वर नॉट क्लियर सिलेबस वाज नॉट कंप्लीटेड और यू जस्ट चेक ऑल द वीडियोस ओरली व्हाट वेंट रॉन्ग do the correction whatever help you need take from us and perform super well and i will be taking like this in zoom interview for all of you in our success echo stories lots of blessings and wishes to all of you bye bye thank you hello all of you hope you are watching all the revision lectures and taking notes along with it so that you can revise now and keep listening to this videos again and again repeatedly so that you keep revising the provisions before the exam okay so let us begin with the revision of residential status right Uh, i am i am always giving instructions once again please watch these videos on full screen with headphones and uh, preferably in the laptop so that whatever screen sharing i am doing especially for sharing all my flow charts which i give in the regular class you can take it down okay right so we are uh, starting with the revision of residential status now residential status this chapter actually is little taken quite leniently by students but nowadays return of income residential status tds tcs these are the chapters from which exclusive questions are asked okay so let us revise the residential status from the beginning why is residential status important this chapter is divided into two parts determine the residential status of a person be it individual huf form and all decide the residential status according to some conditions okay everything is in section 6 and all so subsections and all if you remember fine if not that is fine so let us first decide the residential status of a person there are some conditions to be satisfied once you decide the residential status according to residential status we will decide on what income this person will pay tax in india is this clear so what exactly we are learning in this chapter residential status determine the residential status of every person every year according to the conditions which we are going to see once residential status is decided based on the residential status you will decide whether this income is taxable or not and accordingly you will compute the income of that person right so let us first begin with the 
residential status of individual yes let us begin with the residential status of individual yeah one more thing there are two ways of learning one is you read the theory and then you all have the material so i'm showing you the flow charts which i ask students to draw with me in the class these flow charts are not to be drawn in the final exam but the way they are just as a mind map as a guide you can go through it very fast and if you keep revising your pen will flow and you can solve practical questions of residential status also very perfectly weightage of this chapter is minimum 7 marks right so let us begin here is the flow chart hmm? first we are deciding residential status of individual now whether an individual male female he is a resident or not he has to satisfy any one of the basic conditions which are given in section 6 subsection 1 he should be in india for 182 days or more are you all reading on screen huh the person for whom we are looking the residential status his present presence in the financial year 2122 he should be in india for 182 days or more or he should be in india for 60 days or more in the previous year or the financial year and 365 days or more in the preceding four years i call it ppy preceding four years so 21 and 22 he should be in india for 182 days and more he is resident or he is just 60 days in india in 21 and 22 and preceding four years he is in india for 365 days or more if any one of the basic condition is satisfied he is said to be resident now very important uh, thing over here is basic condition any one should be satisfied by individual and when you are counting these number of days that is this 182 or 60 these days need not be continuous in a financial year you can come stay in india for 90 days go again come and stay in india for 100 days in one financial year continuous stay is not necessary the day you come to india and the day you leave india both the days are counted yes to din class you all have solved the problems how we are doing so i'm not going into that depth now if you satisfy any one of the basic condition you are said to be resident if you are not satisfying any of the basic condition you came to india stay stayed for 40 days and went bye bye you are said to be a non resident so for resident individual he has to satisfy any one of the basic condition once basic condition is satisfied then for resident and ordinary resident additional conditions are there and both the additional condition should be satisfied i want to repeat basic condition any one is satisfied you are resident additional condition both should be satisfied are you clear till here any doubt is there do comment below the video those who have joined the booster challenge you all are there in the group just put me a voice note click the picture send me i will clear every doubt any book any problem you have a doubt not necessary concept classes material any book any doubt you have you can ask chalo now additional conditions both should be satisfied for resident and ordinary resident he should be resident in 2 out of 10 preceding previous years you know one thing very important is basic condition you check the number of days of presence in the financial year 21 22 whereas for additional conditions you check the number of days and everything in the preceding previous years so he should be resident in india not present huh? he should be resident in india in 2 out of 10 preceding previous years before 2021 last 10 years 
any two years you should be resident and and he should be in india for 730 days or more in the last seven months if he satisfying any one basic condition both the additional conditions he is said to be resident and ordinary resident if he satisfying one of the basic condition one additional condition or none additional condition he is said to be resident but not ordinary resident and if he is not satisfying any of the basic conditions he said to be a non resident look at this flowchart look at this individual any one of the basic conditions satisfied resident none of the basic conditions satisfied non resident after satisfying the basic condition both the additional conditions should be satisfied then he said to be resident and ordinary resident any one of the additional condition or none of the basic conditions satisfied he said to be resident but not ordinary resident clear the day of coming and leaving in india counted continuous stays not necessary and true and false may repeatedly they are asking this question residential status has got nothing to do with the citizenship and while counting the number of days like 25th april you came and 30th april you left india so 25th 26th 27th 28th 29th 30th 25th is also taken 30th is also taken so actually if you say ma'am 25th to 30th i am in india then 5 days but actually it is 6 days yes so here we come to an end for the basic and additional conditions fir se ek baar focus se recollect karo individual will only take time residential status of all the other ssc's and all are easy and there are two major amendments deemed resident concept significant economic presence concept which i will revise uh, in this so pay attention now two basic conditions are there any one of which should be satisfied for being resident he should be in india for 182 days or more in the financial year or he should be in india for 60 days or more and 365 days or more in the preceding four years any one of the conditions satisfied you are said to be resident none satisfied non resident now after being resident you satisfy both the additional conditions you are resident and ordinary resident world income you have to pay tax in india resident and ordinary resident ke liye additional conditions are out of the 10 preceding previous years preceding previous year before the financial year 10 years any two years you are resident in india and and last 7 years 730 days this looks like batti paying and all but i'm telling you a super tip is two to three problems from institute material from our material when you solve the problem when you calculate the days write the condition he is in india for 830 days in the last 7 years he is resident in india for 2 years out of the 10 years so he is resident you write two three problems you will be clear yes right now some exceptions are there for this residential status of individual let us see exception to the rule where second basic condition is not applicable which one is the second basic condition 60 days and 365 days in the four preceding previous years this is not applicable ye yeah, applicable nahi hai where let us see where it is not applicable exception to the rule <clears throat> a person a person of indian origin or indian citizen going i hope all of you know indian citizen means hmm, who is citizen of india or a person of indian means a person himself or his parents or grandparents are born in undivided india so a person or indian citizen going abroad for employment then second basic condition 60 days wala is not applicable a person indian citizen leaving india as a member of crew ship then he is said to be resident only if he satisfied 182 days condition okay so for all these 
second basic condition 60 days and uh, 365 days in the last four years is not applicable. Second basic condition. A person leaving India and going abroad for employment purpose. A person leaving India as a member of crew and ship. Okay. When you leave as a member of crew, the day you join the ship, board the ship, you need to sign the discharge certificate. Continuous discharge certificate. The day you leave the ship, you need to sign the continuous discharge certificate. And these are the dates which are considered as a member of crew. So many times you board the ship, but other procedural things are there. And you board it today and the ship leaves the port after three days. So the day you sign in the discharge certificate, bye-bye will be counted. The day you come in, welcome will be counted. And these many days you are out of India. So you will be said to be resident only if you are in India for 182 days or more. 182 days or more for employment, for crew. Now the googly. A person of Indian origin or Indian citizen who is staying abroad. Huh? You may be born, uh, born outside India, but if your parents, grandparents are born in India, you are said to be a person of Indian origin. You are staying in Singapore. You have come to visit India. Then in second basic condition, instead of 60 days, it will become 120 days. How? I want to teach the second one. Indian citizen or a person of Indian origin who visits Sorry, huh? who's staying abroad, visits India. He is in India for 120 days or more. And 365 days or more in the fourth. This is an amendment of financial year uh, 2020, but very important now also. Last year, say, yeah, I do one. 120 days and more, less than 182 days he's in India. And in the last four years, 365 days or more, he is in India and, and his total income in India exceeds 15 lakhs. If he is satisfying all the three conditions, he is said to be resident and ordinary resident. Phil say, you are a member of ship and crew, 60 days not applicable. Are you going abroad for employment, 60 days? Yeah, clear. Now third, if you are an Indian citizen, or you are a person of Indian origin and you are staying abroad, you come to India and stay in India for 120 days or more, your total income in India exceeds 15 lakhs and in the preceding four years, you are in India for 365 days or more, you are said to be resident but not ordinary resident. What about if he is in India for 120 days and say come and even though he's getting total income 16 lakhs, still non resident. If your income in India exceeds 15 lakhs, you have to stay in India for 120 days or more. And what about if you stay 182 days and more? Anyhow, if you stay 182 days and more, you are coming in the grip of the first basic condition. Or first basic condition ke liye total income se to koi matlab nahi hai. Huh? This point is many times confusing to the students. Can we pause here and can you please pause the video, write this, I will re-explain. Click look. Everything you should write. Finished. Let us begin. An Indian citizen or a person of Indian origin staying abroad, coming to India, staying above 120 days, having total income in India above 15 lakhs. And in the last four years also, he is in India for 365 days and more. If all these three conditions are satisfied, he is said to be resident and ordinary resident. Ma'am, if the total income is 21 lakhs in India, but he is in India for less than 120 days, non-resident. Ma'am, total income is only 5 lakhs, but he is in India for 182 days. 
182 days and more you are caught up in the first basic condition and first basic condition mein total income se koi lena dena nahi hai first basic condition says 182 days or more you are in india is said to be resident on second basic condition these are the things okay still if you have a doubt message me i will clear it hmm? so residential status of individual is clear to all of you three exception where second basic condition is not applicable a person leaving india for employment a person leaving as a member of crew a person um, of indian origin staying abroad coming to visit india staying in india less than 182 days now less than 120 days non resident 120 to 180 days resident and ordinary resident Ah, uh, sorry, resident, but not ordinary resident. I'm really sorry, resident, but not ordinary resident. If he satisfied all the three conditions, he's of Indian origin, stays abroad, comes to India in the financial year. He stays in India between one twenty to one eighty two days. Last four years, three sixty five days and more, and his total income in India is above fifteen lakh. Nice and clear, and more than one eighty two days or more, he is in India. So, so for routine, he will satisfy the first basic condition. Yeah. While solving the problems, many times students are confused between the word called received and remitted. I literally say this in my regular class, though I don't know my speed is low. I think for the revision, but it says the bhag nahi sakte. So. Uh, this is like teaching you all English, dear students. There's lot of difference in the word income received in India and remittance. Remittances are not taxable. My father is a doctor. He's a businessman. Just giving an example. My father is a doctor in London. He is working in a hospital, and he says to hospital directly send the income in my Indian bank account. so this is doctors nri doctors fees received in india taxable now my father is getting the fees in london from there he is sending some amount to me for my education in india this is remittance application of income used so income received is taxable in india income remitted is not taxable are you getting same way one more case is there i am remembering while solving the problems past untaxed profit brought to india you all must have watched uh, ddlj yes shahrukh khan's hit movie kajol and shahrukh khan amrish puri has earned lot of income in london he was for years in london this is an example i am just giving so he he closed his business he winded up his business in london And brought all his earned income in London to India for permanent stay in Punjab. Now, these profits are past untaxed profit brought to India. Why they are untaxed? Because they are not taxed in India. And are they income in India? No, they are capital transfer. Amrish Puri has earned income in London. He has built up capital in London. He has paid tax in London, maybe. Now he is just bringing all that income, his savings in India, as a capital transfer. So whenever past untaxed profit are brought to India for whatever may be the reason, they are never taxed. See, this is a revision class. When I am taking residential status regular class, almost like seven to eight classes it goes up. Ek ek din ek ek concept problem. Mere saath solve karo, homework karo and all. But When I take revision, all past few exams questions na, ऐसे सामने दिख रहे हैं. So these are the pitfalls. Am I clear, dear students? What the first one? Income received in India is taxable. Remittance is not taxable. And second one is, uh, a past untaxed profit if it is brought in India, it's not taxable for anyone. Resident, non-resident, ordinary, वो किसी के लिए भी taxable नहीं है, because it's a capital transfer. So here we complete with the residential status of individual. Let us now revise the residential status of other entities. Yeah.
All right, look at this flow chart. Residential status of HUF, firm, AOP, BOI, LLP. All. Hmm? Other than companies and other than individuals, subco. Residential status of Hindu and divided family, firm, AOP, BOI, all. A person is said, I mean, say this HUF and partnership firm is said to be resident if control and management is wholly or partially in India. Non-resident, if control and management is wholly outside India. Are you getting? What do you mean by control and management? Control and management means the heads and brains of the organization where major decisions are taken. So, a person is said to be HUF. Chalo, HUF le lete if HUFs, all the major decisions, the control and management major decisions, the heads and brains are in India, wholly or partially, they are said to be Indian. And they are said to be non-resident if control and management is wholly outside India. So, once you decide the residential status of HUF firm AOP, how do you decide? Control and management, major decision taking, the heads and brains of the company are in India. Yeah, wholly or partially. They are said to be non-resident if control and management is wholly outside India. Right. Now, firm AOP BOI, that's fine. For firm, partnership firm AOP BOI LLP, either they will be resident or they will be non-resident. Fine. Okay. But now, for HUF, if additional conditions are satisfied by Karta, both the additional conditions are satisfied by Karta, then HUF will be resident and ordinary resident. If Karta satisfied one or none of the additional conditions, then HUF will be resident, but not ordinary resident. Firm, LLP, AOP, BOI, this can either be resident or non-resident. So let me tell you one thing. Additional conditions are applicable, both for two out of 10 years, um, 730 days out of the last seven years and all that is applicable either for individual or they are applicable for karta of HUF. If karta of HUF is satisfying both the additional conditions, both the additional conditions karta is satisfying, then HUF is said to be resident and ordinary resident. If karta is not satisfying any of the basic conditions, then they are said to be non-resident, right? Hmm? So I hope residential status of firm, firm, LLP, OP, BOI, they will be resident and control and management only or even partially in India, partially outside, then also it will be resident. HUF partially control in India, resident, but additional conditions both have to be satisfied by the karta. So let us now see the residential status of company. Yeah, you want to revise this? Check. I hope this is all clear. See this additional conditions to Hannah? Don't know. Two out of 10 years, 730 days out of last seven years. These are to be satisfied by Karta of HUF. Now let us see the residential status of a company. Indian company is always said to be resident. Why? It is registered under Companies Act 2013. Indian company is always said to be resident. Yes. Now foreign company. Foreign company is said to be resident only if POEM is in India. What is POEM? Place of effective management. Foreign company is registered outside India. But if the control and management of the foreign company is 100% from India, then only foreign company is said to be resident. Clear? What is the full form of poem? Place of effective management. Indian company is always resident. Foreign company 
is resident in india if poem is in india if poem is outside india it will be non resident clear to all of you so here we complete with the uh, residential status conditions in exam you have to write the basic conditions the additional conditions if it is a full fledged question if it is mcq or small question you can calculate and write the answer are you clear now what is the residential status of individual of huf of firm llp aop boi and of company these are this is the grouping now based on the residential status we will decide which income is taxable in india for that we have a table right like for example if you are resident and ordinary resident the world income is taxable of course you get relief and all in section 90 and all but the world income is taxable and if you are non resident whatever you get in india is taxable so now i am sharing with you one very important table for the residential status which will help us to decide how you are going to tax and in exam if they give you triple column then do particulars a uh, resident and ordinary resident resident but as a team columns banao or tax kar and here we begin with the table yeah for all the ssc's this is applicable now look at this table we will see first left to right income received in india uh, excuse me income received in india whether accrued in india or elsewhere yes all three will pay tax whether you are resident and ordinary pehle to residential status decide kar lo once it is decided then if income is received in india it is taxable for all irrespective of whether it is accrued in burma or china or any income deemed to be received what is deemed to be received section 7 hai ye raha section 7 we will abhi niche karenge but if it is deemed to be received means the best example i can give is tds take this is your salary 10 rupees take then 1 rupee tds i am deducting and paying to government i am giving you 9 so 9 rupees is income received in india 1 rupee tds i have deducted that is also deemed to be received in india no so income received in india deemed to be received income accrued in india best example is income accrued in india ha huh? which is generating in india whether received in india or not and income deemed to accrue deemed to accrue section 9 i can give you a nice example a person is stay, staying in sri lanka he is selling a property to someone staying in france but then that property is in india property india mein who is the seller sri lankan who is the buyer france person but where is the property located in india why is that no? so will they have to pay tax in india yes why because income is deemed to accrue or arise in india are you all clear with this income received in india taxable for all deemed to be received yes it's not actually received i am paying you salary 100 i am putting 12 rupees in your pf you are not receiving this pf but it is deemed to be received no ye lo 100 is your salary take 12 rupees is your provident fund listen pf i am taking back and putting in the pf account on your behalf so income received in india taxable for all deemed to be received taxable for all income accrued in india yes 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 income deemed to accrue yes these four are taxable for all now comes the googly income received outside india accrued outside india from business controlled from india heads and brains in india income received outside india accrued outside india but controlled from india then it is taxable for resident and ordinary resident resident but not ordinary resident no for non resident so this is an exception yes yes no received outside india accrued outside india controlled from india these two will pay the tax now income earned and received outside india business set up outside india 
सोर्स आउटसाइड इंडिया कंट्रोल्ड आउटसाइड इंडिया ऑल आउटसाइड इंडिया स्टिल हियर यस नो नो कैन आई से नो वर्टिकली डियर स्टूडेंट्स If you are resident and ordinary resident, you have to pay tax on the world income. You will get relief if you have already paid tax in Switzerland and all all. That is in final you will study. But at inter level, yes, 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 yes. Received in India, deemed to receive. Accrued, deemed to accrue. Controlled from India, but business outside India or everything outside India still because you are resident and ordinary. Now take the case of non-resident. Non-resident is saying, if I have business connection, if I am earning in India, received in India, deemed to be received, accrued, deemed to pass, then be taxable. Hoga. Then, right, resident but not ordinary resident. Only exception is this. If you want, you can also make boxes like this. This is one box. This is another, and this. Resident but ordinary resident received deemed to be received accruing. उसको छोड़के business accruing outside India income received outside India business controlled from India. Check the table and if you have any doubt, ask me. पूछो. Yes, ma'am. clear to all of you hmm this table is not to be buttified this if you have in mind you can solve the question interest received in india from say uk bonds so taxable for all because it's received in india income from bonds received and kept in uk then taxable only for resident because non resident will say i myself i am non resident This income is generated in UK. It is received in UK. Why should I pay tax in it? Non-resident has a blunt answer. Income which has got connection in India, received, deemed to receive, accrued, deemed, bus, wo hi tax hoga. Clear to all of you? Chale aage? Yeah. Now, what is income deemed to be received? It's assumed to be received. I told you, like PF and all. Your six, section sixty-eight, sixty-nine, illegal income. You have earned and spent, and when there is rate, they'll say this is your deemed to be income. Yeah, though you have gone for a world trip, but paise kahan se hai? You have done lavish wedding of your daughter. Where did you get? So though you have spent, it's all your deemed to be income. And income accrues and arises in India. If there's a business connection in India, we'll check that now. If the property or source is situated in India, as I told you, capital gain. A person from Burma, Sri Lanka, selling a property to someone in France, Russia, and the property is in India. Income from transfer of capital asset. Any income which falls under salary and earned in India. You know, even if you were employed in India, now you are staying outside India. But if pension is received from India, if the salary is paid by government of India, it is taxable in India, deemed to accrue or arise in India. You are working with Indian government, but now you are settled in uh, Kazakhstan. Man, ja ke aap settle. But government of India is paying you know salary, pension, taxable. Yeah. Perquisites and allowances paid by government of India outside India, you know, to those embassies and all, they are exempt under Section Ten, Subsection Seven. I have spoken. Yeah, income deemed to accrue. May we will check all this in detail now. Dividend paid by Indian company always accrued in India. Where is Indian company registered India? Where will be the AGM India? Dividend कहाँ declare होगा India तो it has to be taxable even if NRI has purchased the shares of Indian company because the dividend is from Indian company you have to pay some tax in India interest payable outside India if money is borrowed and used for the purpose of business or profession carried on in India hmm? interest is payable outside India. Hmm, this I will explain. I think with the future, interest and royalty, interest, royalty, 
fees for technical service. These are beautiful examples. Listen, I'll, I'll tell you the gist of seven, eight, nine. Listen, interest paid outside India, royalty, technical fees, you know, like in the Hyderabad Hussain Sagarli, that statue got while erecting the Buddha statue, it got sunk. So we call foreign technical person. They brought their cranes and all and help us get it fitted back. So we are paying to the foreign company. Yeah, interest is paid. We pay interest outside India for loan taken from a foreign party. We pay royalty outside India. We pay fees. But are these services used in India? Then the foreign non-resident, whoever it may be, individual or company, will have to pay tax in India. Very simple it is. One minute. I'll explain it with the help of an example also, and I have given the flowchart also here. But before we uh, continue, listen to this. Deku. You are resident. You are borrowing money from outside India. So you have to pay interest. You have to pay salary outside India. You have to pay royalty outside India. You have to pay technical services outside India, and you are resident paying all this to a non-resident. Are the are these all services for purposes India? Are you paying technical services for your factory in India? Are you paying interest on loan and the loan is used in India? Are you paying salary to an employee or non-resident outside India but for services in India? Taxable in India. Non-resident has got a purpose in India, taxable in India. Now, resident Kathogya, suppose you are a non-resident. Non-resident is paying salary, interest, royalty, fees for technical services to another non-resident or to a resident for purpose in India, taxable in India. Are you getting? Non-resident is paying, uh, say, royalty or fees for technical services in India for some of their case in India. Will they have to pay tax in India? Answer is yes followed. So still not clear. I have shown you. Now I'm reading from the flowchart and I'll share the word notes also. Here they come. In my running class, I have given it like this. See, if salary, interest, royalty and all is paid by government of India, it is deemed to accrue and arise in India because paid by government of India, very well taxable in India. Now, exception. Perquisites and allowances paid by please mark it very, very important for true and false, MCQs, fill in the blanks, whatever exam you are writing. CA or CM. Huh? Perquisites and allowances paid by government of India, outside India are exempt under section 10 7. But salary interest and all paid by government of India, they are all deemed to accrue or write in. So, you know, when government of India pay salary to embassies in Pakistan and in uh, Russia and all these countries, we have embassies. So they stay there. But because it is paid by government of India, it is taxable in India. Now, government of India for side man of this. Salary, royalty, interest, technical fees paid by resident to non-resident outside India. But for the project in India, taxable. For project outside India, not taxable. I am resident, I am paying technical services to a non-resident for my project in Thailand, not taxable. Thailand wala India mein kyo tax pay karega? Not taxable. Resident paying any of these incomes to non-resident for project or purpose in India, taxable India. Purpose outside India, not taxable. Salary, royalty, interest, fees, technical services paid by non-resident to resident or other non-resident. Again, for services or project in India, taxable. For services outside India, not taxable. Okay, once again, we will revise this part of uh, taxability. Look at the screen. What I was revising, no? And then the last two more amendments are there. So stay connected till the end. It takes, you know, dear students, lot of effort to make these kind of the videos. 
normal class is easy i'm working i'm problem with you i'm sitting you are doing we are discussing homeworks huh so i hope this are helpful to you and if really yes then at least promise me you will share this video with at least five of your friends who want crystal clear knowledge for residential status and below the description box box we have link of joining the whatsapp and telegram group for all the updates amendments pdf material and other motivation yeah and look into this playlist there are other videos also there are four videos already prepared for the text amendment and these are the revision videos okay right see look at this income from salary payable by government of india outside india taxable for all except allowance and purposes which are exempt dividend paid by indian company taxable for all now interest interest is deemed to accrue or arise in india if it is payable by government of india so to it is taxable now income is deemed to accrue or arise if it is payable by resident person if it is payable for debt or money borrowed or carried out outside india that's an exception usko chhod ke it will be taxable so if a resident is paying to non resident and if it is used in india taxable third non resident when it is payable in respect of debt accrued or borrowed and used for the purpose of business or profession carried out in india except interest or money borrowed by non resident for any purpose in india other than business or profession will not be deemed to accrue or arise in india so not resident paying money to non resident for business connection or purpose in india taxable non resident paying to resident for purpose of business or profession in india taxable same is for royalty royalty paid by government of india deemed to accrue or arise royalty paid by person resident in india to non resident taxable except if it is for services carried outside india non resident so same for technical fees huh? capital asset and all is so very clear problems we are not solving now i am going towards two most important amendment which are to be covered here okay let us go from the beginning if you have any doubt you can ask residential status of uh, citizen and this third exception 120 days and 365 days and 4 years and income in india exceeds 50 is a clear i hope hmm? resident and ordinary resident additional conditions are clear hai theek hai right yeah very important amendment now i am discussing concept of deemed resident actually you are not resident but we are assuming you are a deemed resident under section 6 subsection 1a an individual being an indian citizen having total income other than income from foreign sources exceeding 15 lakhs means you are having total income in india above 15 lakhs and you are indian citizen yeah he is not liable to pay tax in any other country through his domicile or residence or anything however this provision will not be applicable in case of individual who is resident in india in normal course then so no problem deemed resident is always said to be resident and ordinary resident no need to check additional conditions no need to check now i'll tell you what is the reason okay listen there are people who are having more than 15 lakhs income in india but they are escaping residential status so we are asking you are you having more than 15 lakhs income in india yes are you an indian citizen yes you are not paying tax anywhere else in the world yes then pay tax in india you are not paying tax anywhere else and in india you are having income above 15 lakhs then pay the tax in india no better followed or not a an individual this deemed resident concept is applicable only for indian who is indian citizen he is having income in india above 15 lakhs and he is not liable to pay tax in any other country then you are said to be resident but not ordinary resident and pay the tax in india is this clear to all of you
चलो प्रेसिडेंशियल स्टेटस हैज गॉट नथिंग टू डू विद सिटीजनशिप ऑफिशियल टूल्स आर परमिटेड प्रेसिडेंशियल स्टेटस ऑफ फॉर्म कंपनी ऑल इज क्लियर टू यू राइट यस नाउ सम थिंग्स व्हाट हैपेंस लास्ट कांसेप्ट नाउ बिजनेस कनेक्शन और उसमें भी देयर इज एन अमेंडमेंट the concept added this is from this financial year 21 22 significance economic presence significant economic presence of non resident in india okay it shall also constitute business connection and they have to be i'm going to take business connection also but how do you have significant economic presence sep in india now when there was lockdown last two years uh, we have the teaching the knowledge this industry has gone global sitting in hyderabad i am taking coaching from trinity institute of uh, london music coaching and i am writing exam so is trinity institute have coming to india no are they having any agent in india no are they present in india no are they receiving income in india no i am paying income in dollars to them but are they earning huge to india same for example all the online coachings were taken through zoom did zoom came zoom is from usa do they came to india no are they having any agent in india no are they having any direct business connection no but are they having huge subscribers in india so so many times only through internet we have access to so many foreign games foreign software and foreign people are earning through indian only through indian ipa like internet protocol address is from india but they are earning in lakhs all this is online so huh? say for example a female singer is there vidya vox she is from usa she is doing show in usa yes you are watching the show online yes you are buying the ticket online yes are you paying in dollars yes she is saying mera to koi connection nahi hai i to didn't receive any income in india i don't have an agent in india i have never come to visit india but is she earning huge through indian portal answer is yes from this financial year if they fit into the criteria of significant economic presence they have to pay tax in india let us see what is this concept significant economic presence of non resident in india shall constitute business connection if in respect of any goods or services or property carried out by non resident with any person in india including the provisions of download of data or software in india आपको समझ में आ रहा है आर यू गेटिंग इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ एनी गुड्स और सर्विसेज और प्रॉपर्टी कैरिड आउट बाय नॉन रेसिडेंट विद एनी पर्सन इन इंडिया इंक्लूडिंग डाउनलोड ऑफ डेटा और सॉफ्टवेयर इफ एग्रीगेट पेमेंट अराइजिंग फ्रॉम सच ट्रांजैक्शंस और ऑल द ट्रांजैक्शंस इन द फाइनेंशियल ईयर एक्सीड्स 2 करोड़ इफ दीस फॉरेन एंटिटीज कंपनीज पीपल आर गेटिंग मोर देन 2 करोड़ पेमेंट from india they need to pay tax how they are going to pay tax and all yet clarity is not there but they have to pay tax systematic and continuous soliciting of business activities or engaging in interaction with users in india like in youtube we have subscribers so many games and all we have users so if you have number of users at least 3 lakhs from india or if you are getting payment 2 crore and above from india okay right then above transactions or activities shall constitute significant economic presence in india whether or not aggregate for such transactions is entered in india they have not entered any agreement with india non resident doesn't have a place of business in india non resident doesn't come to india still through significant economic presents they have to pay tax in india yes and that is through this way income attributable to operations carried like income from advertisement targeting customers resident in india 
or income from sale of data collected through ip of india or other goods you know all these imported goods and all what you call in india they have indirectly more than 2 crore payment from india or 3 lakh subscribers they are said to have significant economic presence and they have to pay tax in india so what are the two important amendments in residential status and they may ask you question deemed resident to no i missed actually and i don't know how long so say ye video hum sochte hain just fatafat se kare but you cannot rush to your students re wo jo deemed resident wala concept hai na ye dekho deemed resident so they can give you example like this like if you are just in india for 45 days forget about the date but tarak is not taxable in rambu he is not paying tax anywhere else and uh, he is indian citizen tarak is indian citizen he is employed he is not paying tax anywhere else and if he is having total income in india 25 lakhs is he a deemed resident yes 10 lakhs no so like this they can give you practical questions and you have to solve for residential status okay and last one if there is direct business connection they have to pay tax what is direct business connection we have it here a business connection includes an person acting on behalf of non resident was habitually excised in india a contract on behalf of non resident carries out activities are limited to purchase of goods and all you have an agent to whom you are buying the goods then you have an a business connection in india or who maintains stocks in india and from here you do the sales ha huh? amazon usa is having one store room in mumbai and through them then they have to pay tax habitually secures order in india for for the non resident so in any ways if you are having business connection you have to pay tax in india okay exception is that uh, news and views and if you are just purchasing the goods for export or if you are coming to india shooting and then showing it on your tv channels in other countries and all these are the exceptions where it is not taxable shooting of cinematography and all in india you know? foreign uh, hollywood uh, Uh, director is coming to india shooting the movie in india and then releasing in hollywood and all you can't say pay the tax and all your movie income is taxable in india just because you have done shooting in india so these are and same way we have professional connections also yeah like a london barrister who carries out uh, <clears throat> some work or for a firm in delhi and has earned a professional income you know some case is there in delhi and we have called a barrister from london even though we make payment in pounds and all and in london still it will be taxable in india hmm? interest royalty fees for technical services and all and uh, one more thing i was looking for i took two amendments no one was uh, deemed resident and another is significant economic uh, importance और एक मुझे कुछ डिस्कस करना था आई होप दिस टेबल इज क्लियर हाउ इट विल बी टैक्सेबल फ्लो चार्ट यू टेक इट डाउन वंस बाय वॉचिंग द वीडियो अगेन एंड अगेन एंड इट विल बी क्लियर या गिफ्ट वन आई वॉन्टेड टू टॉक अबाउट गिफ्ट गिफ्ट भी अब से टैक्सेबल हो रहा है वो सेक्शन नाइन के लिस्ट में है सेक्शन सेवन एंड सेक्शन नाइन आई हैव डिस्कस लास्ट वन ये क्या हो गया विथ सेवन एट नाइन आई वेन डायरेक्टली टू द फ्लो चार्ट लास्ट वन income around the arising outside india being any sum of money paid without consideration by resident indian to a non corporate non resident foreign company whether aggregate of such sum is greater than 50000 if you are a resident if you are gifting above 50000 it is taxable in income from other sources now gift by a resident to a non resident or anyone maybe the gift is outside india but if it exceeds 50000 that non resident ke liye whatever gift is received is taxable here because they have received it from resident right my best to justify this revision do comment below if you feel that deemed resident concept or significance in all is clear or not and the flow charts are helpful or not 
we'll make sure if in some way i can compile our flow charts in a photograph way and can send you all in our telegram and whatsapp group you can take it on for once i know it will take time but then if you have this with you it will be very helpful to revise one day before exam and so many times you are traveling you are standing in queue in your colleges for your vivas blah blah just put headphones and listen to this revision lectures and utilize your time ha huh? of course you all have taken good coaching and wish you very all the best those who are going to write residential status exam day after tomorrow with this revision lecture revise everything what is taught to you in the regular class if you have any doubt send me and your slabrate papers we will correct and give you and we will soon discuss it through a zoom meet also right any other queries are there you can comment below the video thank you so much for watching the video till end all the best to all of you bye bye hello all of you how is your preparation going on super duper in a very good speed yes right here we begin the revision for agricultural income how to calculate tax when you have agricultural income that's what we are doing discussing today this is very important chapter though very small not exceeding more than 2 pages very small chapter but very important for your tax calculation so many times in question number 1 only there are two best favorites of the paper setters i can say with the years of experience in teaching i qualified in 2000 and since then i am in teaching so i've seen one thing in question number 1 either they will give you in the computation of total income either they will give you atg ATG is uh, deduction. Are you getting what I am saying? ATG donations deduction is little technically fifty percent, hundred per hundred percent of the qualified amount. Or they will just add agricultural income sixty thousand. Basically, agricultural income is exempt under Section Ten One. Constitution of India does not have power to uh, charge tax on agricultural income. India is said to be an agricultural country. Basically, this is the reason. But indirectly, there are huge, uh, you know, middlemen. They kind of show income from farming, which is in lakhs of rupees, and they escape paying tax. So now, how to tap this? Hmm? So in question number one, if they add agricultural income, you have to calculate the tax as per a uh, format, which I am going to discuss now. So carefully do it. And in MCQs and true and false also question is uh, of agricultural income are asked. Not separately calculate the tax with agriculture, but in a very small way they add it, and the weightage is very important. So let us begin. What do you mean by agricultural income? Income what you derive from agricultural land. What is agricultural land? Any city, town, village. just leave the radius of 8 kilometers if this is your town hyderabad beyond that 8 kilometers radius you leave beyond 8 kilometers whatever is the land on that activity done that land is called as agricultural land now all the agricultural land is it agricultural income answer is no in the outskirts of hyderabad matlab city limits ke bahar we have resorts we have water parks we have ramoji film city is ramoji film city located on agricultural land answer is yes do they have to pay um, i mean say do they have to calculate the tax of ramoji film city as agricultural income no so very important to understand for this chapter two basic conditions is there should be agricultural land and they should derive agricultural income now what is agricultural income if you are doing agricultural process on your land or you are getting revenue and you have given it to some farmer or someone who is paying you rent and he is doing agricultural activity or you are using it as outhouse and farmhouse so this was just an introduction 
uh, if you remember carefully, this is a revision lecture, but in our routine class, we have seen 15 to 16 examples of what is an agricultural income and what is not. Very important for 12 persons. If 40 kilometers in the outskirts of the city, I'm having poultry farm and all those activities, dairy mill. Is it agricultural land? Yes. Is it agricultural activity? No. Commercial, very well taxable. Cement factories, there are so many activities. Achha, what about next to my house? Very well in the heart of the Hyderabad city. Next to my house is an open plot. And I'm doing organic farming. And every Sunday, I keep flea market. People come and buy vegetables. No pesticides, nothing. Am I doing agricultural activity? Yes. Is it agricultural land? No. It's very well a commercial land in the heart of Hyderabad. Then, is it taxable? Yes. Are you getting both the examples? You have to do agricultural activity on agricultural land, which is situated outside the city limits, 8 kilometers radius. Eight may put change be hai. Let us see it right now. Sure. Look at the screen. Agricultural income is rent or revenue derived from land situated in India. Oh, very important thing. If I get agricultural income from Sri Lanka, very well taxable in income from other sources. Only agricultural income from India is exempt. So agricultural income from land situated in India and used for agricultural purpose. It may be income derived from land through agricultural process. See, you perform agricultural process yourself or you give it on rent and revenue. Agricultural income may be derived from any farm building situated. So in all these cases, agricultural land agricultural income here. Now what is agricultural land? Shortest aerial distance from municipality cantonment board where population is above 10 lakhs, 8 kilos. So this is Hyderabad city, 8 kilometers radius Chordu. Beyond that, this is agricultural land. Hmm? In outskirts of Hyderabad, almost like 25 kilometers you go, and Shamshabad airport is there. That is actually on agricultural land. So for population above 10 lakhs, this radius is 8 kilometers. 1 lakh to 10 lakh, this is 6 kilometers. And if the population is a small town village, where population is above 10,000 and less than 1 lakh, so city ke 2 kilometers radius, chhod ke agricultural land shuru ho jai. This is a part of your syllabus I am explaining. Exam ke le is... 8 kilometers generally generally is relevant. What about if the population is less than 10,000? And it's an agricultural land. And if you do these activities on agricultural land, it is exempt. <clears throat> then what is the list of agricultural income, rent of the agricultural land, growing flowers and creepers? What about nurseries? In the outskirts of city, nurseries are there, but then they do the activity in the potted plants. So can we say, nahi, nahi, it is a pot mein ho raha hai, zameen pe to kaam kari nahi ho, land pe to no. It is agricultural income, even if you are doing sale of plant and activities in potted plant, but then it should be agricultural land. If you have nursery in the heart of the Hyderabad city, Hyderabad Road, we have so many nurseries. What about those nurseries? Can they say we are doing agricultural activity? No, they are commercial activity. They are doing super good business and very well taxed. Income from sale of replanted trees. Hmm? Share of the profit or salary received from partnership firm. And the firm is agri uh, in, uh, going in agricultural activity. Firm is paying salary to one of the working partner. So salary received by that partner will be the or interest received by partner will be exempt. But if it is a company, huh? see nowadays farming and all these activities are done at company level. So if you are doing farming at a company level and companies having agricultural income and then shareholders are getting dividend, can shareholders say we are getting dividend out of agricultural income? No. 
dividend is very very taxable this is the list of not taxable this is a list of tax dividend paid by company out of agricultural income tax these are just examples i am trying my best to explain fees collected from allowing the cattle to graze exempt compensation received from insurance company for damage of tea gardens exempt growing of mulberry leaves mulberry leaves sirf grow karna agricultural income but feeding the mulberry leaves aayega kahin pe kam gaya feeding of mulberry leaves to uh, cocoons and then getting silk worm and all that is commercial activity very very taxable hmm? fishery is taxable mining activity brick making see we usually travel by railways no to outskirts of the city where good quality earth mud is available you have brick making units over there is it an agricultural land yes but are they doing agricultural activity no they are to making uh, brick making so very well non agricultural income taxable stone quarries hmm? if you receive rental income from agricultural land exempt but if you receive interest on the late rent interest will be taxable mulberry ka nahi hai ye ra ye ra hai hai growing mulberry leaves and feeding them to silkworm is very well a taxable income this is also actually taxable income yeah next transfer of urban agricultural land you know in city limits we have open plots which are purchased and sold that is not an agricultural activity there was a case by uh, isro for this that one uh, open plot was there and they said there is agricultural activity and they wanted to exempt some income then they saw with the drone and all you know this is a barren plot or wahan pe to koi farming hui nahi hai so urban agricultural land like open plots and all you give it for circus patanjali yoga ka koi class hai aapke open plot mein very well taxable under income tax and income from other sources so is it clear to you what is agricultural income these three on what you have to do agricultural land now how to calculate the tax when these three conditions are satisfied you have to apply step method so what are the condition sse is individual huf boi aop so only these people have to calculate the tax and pay on the step method sse is individual huf bop uh, boi aop agricultural income exceeds 5000 non agricultural other income salary ho gaya business ho gaya koi bhi other income exceeds basic exemption hmm? how will you calculate the tax agricultural income and non agricultural calculate the tax without ess in the last lecture when i taught you marginal relief initial steps don't calculate ess like that here also agricultural income non agricultural income calculate the tax agricultural income and basic exemption calculate the tax plus surcharge if any but not ess 1 minus 2 step 1 minus 2 is your tax payable minus rebate if your income is less than 5 lakh balance tax may add education cess i have literally seen students getting zero out of 5 they have written all the steps but agricultural non agricultural income they calculate the tax and on with ess the answer will go wrong simple maths agricultural income non agricultural income calculate tax without ess note this point i don't know if you are seeing in my re, uh, revision videos i am emphasizing a lot on pitfalls pitfalls to so without ess calculate karna hai aapko agricultural income non agricultural income calculate the tax agricultural income basic exemption calculate the tax 1 minus 2 is the tax payable minus the rebate final tax may add the ess nice okay and last part of this 
yeah these are all the routine problems we have solved yeah there are some businesses now like growing tea leaves is agricultural uh, process but then processing those green tea leaves into granules drying packing and making it commercial tata tea that is a commercial activity business income so part is agricultural income part is commercial so how will you do yeah so for such they have given rules in rules rules are explanation to act act says agricultural income and don't pay the tax directly but if agricultural income is above 5000 yes non agricultural other taxable income is above 250000 yes and are you an individual yes if all conditions are satisfied calculate by step method but step is not possible for all these so for them they have given specific rates you need to remember this table and solve the questions growing and manufacturing of tea 60% is agricultural income exam 40% is taxable so if you are growing and manufacturing tea your income is 1 lakh 60000 is exempt as agricultural income 40000 is business income pay the tax if it's a company 30% if it is a individual slab rates and so on rubber manufacturing 65 35 non taxable taxable ratio coffee grown and cured coffee beans you all know coffee beans in kerala munnar and all those places when we go we can see coffee farms so coffee is grown and those beans are roasted and all 75% is agricultural income 25% is commercial but if coffee beans are not sold as it is they are roasted grounded powdered and you get coffee powder then 60% is exempt 40% tax take your time check this table is it clear to all of you or not hmm? so many times you know these revision videos even if the screen is off you are traveling and you just put your headphones and keep revising to so bar bar if you listen no that repetition will it's not butti fine income tax is subject i teach accounts costing also but those are formats if you know capital account of partnership format any problem they give you know by opening by net profit so that is concept based income tax is concept based but it is vast you have some rates so repetition and hi hello is required yes or no costing ek bar acche se kar liya after one month if i say last whole month you have not done cost sheet solve the problem you will do prime cause this that income tax you need to lot of revision so make the best use of revision videos keep listening to them again and again while you are doing your other activities also other than studies i know this is little madness ma'am padhai bhi kare aur baad mein ye bhi kare to karna hai karna hai then only the results will come 8 hours of quality good study and 2 hours of listening to videos audios solving some rtps mtps will be very helpful okay yeah now those who are involved in sugar cane business and all and growing their own sugar cane and sending it to their farm so for them uh, partly it's business income i think better i'll take you to one solve problem and uh, there it will be clear agricultural income this all i have explained these are routine problems see hurry one second i didn't share the screen one second yeah see these are routine problems ye to aapko samajh mein aa hi gaya hai agricultural land ka all explanation and all yeah agricultural income non agricultural calculate tax agricultural income basic exemption calculate tax 1 minus 2 is tax payable minus rebate if any add ecs and final tax deed hmm? and then these uh, slab wala problems rubber and tea coffee and all yeah now sugar farm bhi hai and sugar factory bhi hai so if you grow your own sugar cane it is exempt look at this example i am growing my own sugar cane if the market value of that is 10 rupees i am into the concept so 10 rupees do rupees always select crores be for tv serial tv serial mein karono ke niche baat hi nahi hoti chalo so my sugar cane's market value is 10 rupees what is the cost of cultivation from seeds to all and all 4 rupees 
land revenue like in city we have to pay municipal tax in farm buildings you have to pay land revenue so that is your agricultural income okay 4 rupees now same sugar cane you got into your factory and now you are processing sugar cane to get sugar juice and from that jaggery and crystal clear sugar so you are selling the sugar for 25 rupees in your factory can you take this agricultural land ka sale value as your cost of the production cost of raw material sugar cane market value 10 rupees and other manufacturing cost and supervisor salary and labor and overheads and all this is your business income let us see market value of sugar cane which you have supplied to your own sugar factory is 15 lakhs growing of sugar cane expense is 12 lakh 3 lakh is agricultural income exempt under section 10 1 now that sugar cane which you have supplied in your factory here sale consideration of sugar cane for the farm is the raw material for the factory add manufacturing expense add other expense and you sell the sugar you get business dear students initially i thought we don't need revision video for such an easy topic but when i'm correcting these booster exam papers what you are writing slab rate is over residential status exam is over i'm seeing that in the total income and all these problems everything is correct but agricultural, non-agricultural, ESS ke saath kar diya, gaya. Step may somewhere you are confused. So, in a 20 months computation of total income problem or 15 months, 5 months weightage is this step method of tax calculation. So, chota hi say 5 pages of your material, 15-20 minutes long I think duration. So, this my video and you can score 5 out of 5 marks in this chapter. Right? If you have any doubts below this video, link is given. You can, uh, and if you really like these videos, then subscribe to the channel. I've seen the views are more than those who have not subscribed, and so many classes and doubt clearing classes are being taken light. Right? Subscribe, share this videos to others if you feel it will be helpful to them. And if you feel no, no, I'm still confused, ma'am. I have a doubt. Bindas, it is a YouTube video. Comment below. All plus and all minuses are. So comment below the video. Ready to help you out. Thank you so much for watching till end. Work super duper hard. Sab chhod ke sirf padai kar. Karna hai to karna hai. Padna hai to padna hai. No one can distract you from your goals. Right? All the best dear students. Thank you so much. Bye bye. So did you enjoy these conceptual learning? If yes, then below the video, the link is given for our telegram group. You can join for concept classes app. You can download. Lot of videos are there in the free content also along with the PDF material. So whole chapter, you can download the material. You can watch all the videos in detail and do learning. Lot of theory questions, other PDFs are all included. Okay, right? So do connect with us with all the links below. If you have any query, you can write a mail and you can connect with us through the link. I would be more than glad to help you join our concept classes app community. Waiting to welcome you all. Right? Thank you so much. Wish you very all the best. And if you really like these kind of the concepts, hit the notification button, hit the like button so that you're notified next time when we are taking a lecture or we are uploading it in the YouTube and do share this video with friends. Do comment below the video for any query also, any doubt also and if you have really taken some value addition. I'm on a mission to help more than 10,000 students. I really want to help by putting a lot of value addition with the way I have learned. These all subjects are interlinked. Account, tax, costing, FM. And you will enjoy this interlinking knowledge. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Hello, all of you. This is a bonus class for salary chapter first. We are doing deductions right now. We will take it little later. You all are writing exam for salary chapter, which is very important for MCQs also, and very very important for the ten marks exclusive problem also. Either it will be allowances and perquisites, or it will be all retirement benefits. and very nice questions in the mcqs are asked for motor car for that 20000 1000 30000 now the problems which are picked up and we did one by one they were all very good okay so i am sharing the screen and we are doing right now revision of salary wherever i feel i will cover up all the doubts okay still you feel you have more doubts in salary chapter no rush to go to deductions let us do one thorough revision and everyone should write the exam put your 100% no exam if there is no exam tomorrow definitely you are not going to study so much salary as at least you will study and write considering that tomorrow is exam something is better while writing the exam also you may get more doubts good before the final exams it will be clear okay right and salary exam we are taking because when we do total income uh, once we complete deductions and tax and tds and advance tax that time also salary is super important and final students you can ask now because the class is online so many final students are saying that so many minute questions from inter level are asked theek hai so shall we start ask if you have any doubts initially one is related to allowances when i come i will discuss so to start with right now yeah whenever we say income from salary the chargeability section is section 15 whatever comes to employee from employer in the form of salary allowances perquisites retirement benefit kind may cash may profit in lieu of salary everything is included as salary and salary's definition is inclusive inclusive means more things you can add on like employer can contribute 12% to rpf if they contribute 15% difference is taxable same way overall limit i have explained very important hmm? that all we will see so how do you compute salary in a column you do working basic de allowances and outer column you know in inner column you write like this allowances received 8000 exam 6000 outer column 2000 and whenever you calculate hra rfa whatever that time start your answer with working note one definition of salary for hra definition of salary for gratuity and so on right now salary from two three employers due received all will be taxable salary received by director will be taxable here if they are deducting the tds under section 192 and if he is a full time director and he is taking it as his income from business and profession then the tds also will be deducted more clarity will come for this part when we do the tds chapter next is salary paid to the partner of a firm that is taxable as business income you are a partner there is no employer employee relationship but you are getting salary because you are a working partner so it will come here okay right and these two i said market very important for true and false and all questions foregoing of salary foregoing of salary is that uh, indirectly it's like diversion of income i am saying to my employer please don't pay me salary paid to my younger sister and she will pay college fees and all so foregoing of salary is very well taxable because salary is taxable on due or received basis whichever is earlier but if i have taken 3 month salary in advance now advance salary is taxable again it will not be taxable next year and exception to the rule is if you surrender the salary 
under the central government's voluntary surrender of salaries uh, rules okay then it is exempt okay is this revision okay for you now salary paid in india outside india paid by government anywhere everywhere it is taxable okay scheme and insurance some employees are very important for organization so they take a different kind of the policy that is called as scheme and insurance policy for their employees who is taking this policy employee on maturity if the amount is received by employer it will be treated as uh, business income hai na if it uh, if it is received by the employer on receipt from any some received okay now if it is received by employee then it will be taxable under that salary profit in lieu of salary if it is received by the deceased employee's family members so like family pension it will be taxable under income from other sources clear to all of you key man insurance policy now profit in lieu of the salary okay this we have seen that apart from salary they get bonus or they get uh, unrecognized provident fund and all lump sum this profit in lieu of salary in parts i will teach that time and say this is profit in lieu of salary hmm right now what are the three deductions which are allowed from the salary chapter first one is standard deduction up to 50000 i have repeated many times once again if your salary is 30 you can't say ma'am standard deduction 50 and loss income from salary may never there is going to be loss because deductions are restricted to income but yes if you are a retired employee you are just getting pension monthly pension then also can you get the standard deduction answer is yes income from gross salary you get standard deduction sometimes in the total income problem when i teach or set of problem it's given salary income 80000 computed computed means it's net salary after the standard deduction now is it clear to all of you right so this is standard deduction next is entertainment allowance this deduction is allowed only to government employees who are receiving entertainment allowance and least is 5000 one fifth of salary and actual entertainment allowance we have worked out one concept one problem ha huh? that's why almost more than 10 classes we have taken for salary still if you have any doubt ask please what do you mean by one fifth of salary only basic then profession tax see employer and employee both have to pay pt but if employer is paying employee's profession tax is it a benefit received by employee from employer answer is yes then add it and deduct it otherwise directly deduct it is my speed fine you all are following ha huh? like this in the coming weeks i said because capital gain and business head are long no wait once we complete these small small chapters you write individual exam and even if the classes are over i'll take one zoom class revision doubt clearing for business at separate capital gain separate you write one exam for clubbing other source and set off set off is such a small chapter but then problems are asked huh? right any doubt until now in these two pages otherwise i'll start with the retirement benefit yeah two minutes i'll be back put your doubts please here yeah. okay shall we start with the revision of the gratuity and i hope you all have written the booster notes and if missed the class taken the booster notes from someone 
so that whenever you revise the gist, everything is clear. And keep on adding in the booster notes if you feel that you have done some mistake while solving the problem and you were confused. Keep on adding that. Take care. All right. Shalom. Yeah, please ask. Ask your doubts. Yeah, surrender and foregoing of salary so many times I have explained. Still okay. Doubt help of the explaining currently. Foregoing of salary is one salary accrues subsequent waiver by SSE employee does not absolve him. The waiver is only application and hence chargeable to tax. Application or you can say diversion. Joby here. Like for example, I received a salary from my employer. And in the uh, office where I was working down, Ganesh Pandal was there. My whole month's salary I donated just as a devotee. So I donated in the Ganesh Pandal. Now tell me, can I say, Kai salary? I didn't receive salary. I have foregone means. Foregone grammatical meaning is sacrificed my salary. Got it? Still this is taxable. It's chargeable to tax. You divert it, you apply it. Surrender. If you voluntarily surrender your salary for the central government, voluntary surrender of salary scheme. Where many employees, they surrendered that salary and that salary money was used for some good cause. Then it is exempt because you are doing a registered justified cause. Now clear to all of you? Yes. Or puchho? Kisko kya doubt hai? Chalo, all clear you all are saying. So we'll start revising retirement benefit. Achha, retirement benefit before I start with gratuity, pension, retention, tak, tak, tak. Common rules for all. Government limit are for the lifetime. 20 lakhs or 3 lakhs or 5 lakhs are for lifetime. Second is any retirement benefit if you receive during service fully taxable. Gratuity received dikta se shuru ni ho jana, 20 lakhs and this and this. If I am yet not retired, 3 years more I am going to work, whatever retirement benefit I get, it is taxable. Right? And make sure you remember the sections of gratuity for your match the pairs and objectives. Sections of all the retirement benefit. 1010 is gratuity. Government employees exempt. Other employees, if they are covered under the Payment of Gratuity Act, then least of the three is exempt. Not covered, it is here. Now, actual amount received and 20 lakhs, this is same. Here it is, 15 days last salary. 15 days means not 15 by 30, 15 by 26. Because if you are covered in the gratuity, they said in a month only 26 working days, 4 are the holidays. So, 15 by 26 into last month's salary into number of completed years. Even take the fraction. 10 years and 7 months, 11 years. 10 years and 5 months, 10 years. 5 ke upar, you know, uh, if you cover, sorry, 6 ke upar, 7 onwards, you will take it as the next year. So, you take the fraction. Here, you don't take the fraction. Ignore here 15 by 26, here 15 by 30. Here last salary done. Here average salary of the last 10 months, excluding the last month of the retirement. Wonderful problems we have worked out, see, on this bits, if you remember. And what is the definition of salary? If you are covered under the payment of gratuity act, then it is salary includes... Um, your uh, basic and DA. But all the DA you will include. If you are covered under payment of gratuity act, you will include all the DA, whether covered or not in retirement benefit. And if you are not covered under the gratuity act, basic DA for the terms of retirement and commission. Is this clear to all of you? Right. So that's all for the gratuity. Now, let us go to the 
commuted pension commuted pension is lump sum pension what do you receive under section 1010 and lump sum you know you need for some reason you take lump sum so if you are a government employee it's exempt non government employee if you receive gratuity then one third of not what you have commuted or encashed suppose you have encashed 60% of pension for 60000 so what is 100% pension 1 lakh so 100% pension ka one third you get a deduction if you receive gratuity if you are not receiving gratuity half i want to repeat not half and one third of what you have received half and one third of 100% this is commuted now uncommuted uncommuted pension is monthly pension it is taxable for all it is taxable for all but here also the googly is suppose i retire acha retirement problems you have to be very careful that if you retire on 39 2020 and your basic is 10000 you have to take the basic salary only for 6 months multiply by 12 nahi karna because april may june july hoga september finished october onwards you are getting monthly pension 3000 October, November, December, January. Just an example. Four months. So twelve thousand. Three thousand into four. So twelve thousand. This is monthly pension. February first, you encashed seventy percent. You are saying, sir, please don't pay me three thousand per month. Seventy percent you pay lump sum. Still three thousand thirty percent. That is nine hundred rupees for February and March. That too you will receive monthly, no? Yeah, we have solved all problems for this. Two minutes pause. Yeah, government employees will also get standard deduction. Hmm? Whatever doubts you are asking in chat, I am clearing it now. Keep asking. If you are not able to type, unmute and speak up. Yes. government employees will also get the standard deduction bonuses they will get uh, entertainment allowance deduction also if they receive and then profession tax all of them will uh, get yeah some students by mistake they deduct tds tds ka koi deduction nahi milta tds is a different concept and teach you abhi humne padha hi nahi hai tds chalo leave salary is your accumulated leave on the date of the retirement so maximum cash equivalent of leave salary is 30 days for each completed year ignore fraction so say i have completed a service of 25 years so 25 into 30 750 days or you can do it in months this is the leave allowed and suppose i have already taken 600 days leave how much credit is accumulated 150 days so 150 days and per month salary they will give you divide by 30 to per day you can do this in months also what i made you write you know in detail leave salary avail minus leave salary uh encashed what you have taken remaining is leave at the credit clear to all of you right And then ten months average salary, government limit is three lakh, and actual leave salary received. Acha, some companies they may give you forty five days or sixty days per year, their wish. But how much leave salary I am allowed as per section ten ten double A? Thirty days only is allowed. Less await. Actual. Okay. And if the company allows twenty five days per year, then take twenty five days. बट थर्टी के ऊपर है तो मैक्सिमम थर्टी डेज इज अलाउड ठीक है डेफिनेशन ऑफ सैलरी इज सेम अनलेस आई डोंट से बेसिक डीए कमीशन ऑल द प्रॉब्लम्स वी हैव सॉल्वड इन क्लास रिट्रेंचमेंट कसी बेसिकली ग्रेच्युटी एंड पेंशन एंड लीव सैलरी दीस थ्री आर ओनली आस्क्ड रिट्रेंचमेंट एंड वीआरएस इज देयर वी हैव डन 5 lakh is the limit 15 by 26 into एवरेज ऑफ द लास्ट 3 मंथ्स इनटू कंप्लीटेड ईयर Our actual amount of the retrenchment. 
Retrenchment is you are removed from organization before your retirement. So they give you money. Same way VRS, you want to leave the organization. Your age is 68, for 58 only you want to retire. Okay, take. Last salary drawn into three into completed years. And last salary drawn into remaining months. Because you are taking completed years, multiply by three. Remaining months, file like and actually least of this is exempt. That's all how to solve retirement problems. I hope you remember. 13, 14, kuch bhi homework nahi ta, sab class mein ki hai mein. Chalo, anyone is having any doubt in retirement? Is my speed fine? Are you all preparing? Scanners, past exams. Your material, my material. Hmm? Liko, it is very beneficial to write the exam. Don't say, ma'am, nothing much I have prepared and if I get 15 out of 50, I lose confidence. Aise kaise? Hmm? At least you will study well and be honest with yourself. 100% try karo pura paper attempt karne ka. There only the major mistake is if you attempt only in the final exam 85% paper, how do you expect to get 82 and 85? Hmm? Right. Shall, shall we go to the next one? Any more doubts? Okay. Now PF. I hope now you will follow public provident fund better. Employer cannot put the money in PPF. Who can put? Employee himself. Interest is exempt. And when you get lump sum, it is exempt. An employee will get a deduction under section 80C. So this PPF is over. Now let us see this. Statutory provident fund is PF Act 1952. Can employer put money for you? Answer is yes. It's exempt. Interest is exempt when you receive lump sum also is exempt. Recognized provident fund is your own provident fund which you have got approval from the commissioner. How much employer can contribute to PF? 12% of basic DN commission as a percentage of turnover. So if employer contributes 15%, the difference will be taxable. But don't say 15 is not 12 is not. 15 they may contribute for basic, but 12% tax the exemption is allowed for basic DN commission. Interest is exempt up to 9.5. So if you receive 15% interest, so kitna aega? 5.5% interest will be taxable. Lump sum, it is exempt only. This one is asked in exam. Unrecognized provident fund. A big, you know, hitch, you can say. Unrecognized. Uh, who told you to contribute as employer in the URPF? Still you contributed. So right now exempt. No deduction is allowed. Interest be abhi to exempt hai. now. When unrecognized provident fund matures, employer to employee, whatever contribution, plus interest on employer's contribution taxable under salary, profit in lieu of salary. See. Employees' contribution and interest will be taxable under salary. Employees' own contribution, not taxable. You have put money, you have received back. Not taxable. Interest, it will be taxable under income from other sources. So with this all four type of PF, we have solved these problems also. Hmm? Superannuation fund, you can contribute 150 I have written a note. If I am not getting, I will write again. But let me tell you, employee can, con employer, sorry, can contribute to recognize provident fund. Yesterday in deductions, we have done national pension scheme. Employer can contribute 10% of the salary. Recognize provident fund may 12%. NPS may 10%. Superannuation fund may 1,50,000. Now from this year, overall limit is employer cannot contribute more than rupees 750. If you have not written here, 
Please write it now. I'll wait for you. And here only. Look, look. How much employer can contribute to three limits individually and overall limit? This you have to check hmm? when you solve the problems. Any doubt in writing, ask please. Recognize provident fund 12%, national pension scheme maximum 10% of the salary and statutory provident, uh, sorry, Superannuation fund, 150,000. These are individual limits. Put together 750,000. Bas khatam. More than that, if employer is paying you all this, it will be taxable in your hands as salary. Please give some response. We have almost finished like 30-40% of the salary chapter. Huh? Let it take. One hour, jitna time, put it out. I'm going to allowances and then focus it. Ask if you have any doubt. Until now, retirement benefits and PF is over. Only for this we took four to five classes. Hai na? Bolo. Or koi doubt? Are you all following or not? Is my revision clear to all of you? I'm not solving any problem. I'm not giving examples because each concept minutely if concept is missed in problem, I have given my own options. Option 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 tak gain. Retirement benefits. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Great, great, great. So many. Yes, ma'am. Clear, ma'am. All. Thank you so much. Chal. Now we will go to allowances. Some doubts are there in allowances. That also are clear here. Allowances are fixed in nature. Then you spend or not, we don't borrow. City compensatory allowance is given. If you stay in metro cities like uh, huh, Chennai, Mumbai and all, and even little bit like metro only, Bangalore, Hyderabad, the cost of living is high. So to meet up, companies giving you city compensatory allowance. Fully taxable. You can't say out of that, see, this must have already spent extra on rent, on food, on this, on that. No. So few allowances like entertainment and all these medical allowances. We will give you 1000 medical allowance into 12, 12,000. Now, now, you know, you fall ill or not, we are, we are not bothered. No need to submit as bill. Ki, ma'am, you gave medical allowance 12,000, but my medical expense due to this all pandemic and all is 25,000. No. We are not bothered. Or you got medical allowance, but touch wood, you didn't feel ill at all. High immune. So, up to bimari ni pade. Still, it's a fixed allowance. Whatever you receive, it is taxable. One exception to the fully taxable is rule. Can't get a rule. Two double be thana. Actually, by mistake, a part is deleted. Even I had typed this, I remember. Maybe while saving the file. Rule 2BB was there. It says that any of the allowances you are getting, like suppose you are getting uniform allowance and you are spending 70% of the uniform allowance for official purpose, then that much is exempt. If we are giving you traveling allowance, and 80% you are using for the traveling of the company only, then it is exempt. Clear to all of you? Right. Now, few allowances are all exempt. Allowances granted to government employees, samtari allowance for high court, supreme court, judges and all, they are exempt. Okay? Otherwise, salary paid by government is taxable. But if they give allowances outside India, then they are exempt. Okay. 
okay now we come to allowances which are partly exempt hra 1013a and special allowances so let us first take hra house rent allowance you are getting exemption you will get first you promise you are paying rent company is giving you hra okay and you are staying with your father and father is paying the rent then why will you get a deduction are you getting my point because for hra exemption the first point is rent paid minus 10% of the salary rent paid minus 10% of the salary so if you have rent paid is only zero this will be zero and least of the zero zero so no exemption 40% of salary 50% in case of metros allowance actual hr released is exempt and salary's definition is basic da commission as a percentage that's on for hr okay i hope hr is revision is clear and we have individually worked out problems also more than that now important are the specific allowance children education allowance is exempt 100 per child maximum up to two children company may give you 500 for three children but how much is exempt 100 per child maximum up to two children Hostel expenditure is three hundred per month per child, maximum up to two children. And transport allowance. I said more are there, but you remember these three enough. Transport allowance is exempt up to three thousand two hundred per uh, month, provided the employee is orthopedically handicapped or ah uh, partly blind or some other uh, disabilities. wherein he has to get the certificate from government hospital doctor okay now here some googlies are there i want to explain your uh, study material cma and ca both are having superb questions huh? yeah subhashmita akila what doubts you are asking i want to clear it look all of you here hmm I'll ex instead of explaining, I hope you remember hundred three hundred limit. Instead of explaining here, I'll take it in the notebook. One minute, I'll open the notebook. okay listen to my example now example 1 i'll give you time to write pehle pura samajh lo 80 per month for the first child 90 per month for the second child 120 per month for the third child very interesting case so this is what you are getting now look at this 80 plus 90 plus 120 into 12 this is per month what you are receiving from employer for children education allowance 80 plus 90 plus 120 pay attention and then you can ask me doubts also 290 Uh, into sorry ah two ninety into twelve got it or not for three children they are giving me is my calculation correct are you all doing in calculator for three children eighty ninety one twenty I am getting from the company now less exempt partly under section ten 
14. Third child is receiving 120. How much I can take exemption? 100. Right or not? Second child is receiving 90. How much I can take exemption? 90. And for third child, no exemption. So my exemption will be 190 into 12. How 190 into 12. 2280. So taxable is 1200. Taxable. First you ask your doubts and then I'm giving you time to write also. Ma'am? Yeah. Uh, can I complete once, dear? Listen. First is 120 and up. So 100 tak hai exempt hai. Now you can't say smartly. Ma'am, overall can we not take 100 into 2 into 12? If you are trying to take 100 into 2 into 12, then for first 120 is received. 100 exempt. 90 is received, 100 is exempt. How is it possible? Exemption cannot exceed the income. Long term capital gain this. Now we are in deductions chapter, running class. Deductions can't exceed. You have received 90. How can you take 100? So this concept is wrong. Achha, let me complete. Then I'll give you time to copy also. I'll also get a break. Or up lick lena. Do minutes. Okay, if employer doesn't have children, employee, sorry, doesn't have children, company is giving three children education allowance, Our employee is not having children only, can he avail exemption at least for two children? Answer is no, no, no exemption. As children, he need to kya karoge exemption karke. Now, third case. Super one, these uh, doubts Subhashmita has asked. Or bhi do teen motor car ke doubts bhi akhila and many of them are asking very nice. So, I thought I'll bring it to all of you in the class. Karenge wo motor car ka bhi doubt clear karenge. Chalo. Now, example three. If employees, children, are not studying. Employer to gave allowance per child and all, but employees children are not studying. Now, the thing is, allowances and exemptions have got nothing to do with your actual status. You are getting allowances, you are taking a part of it exempt. Now, if children are not there, no exemption. But if employee children are not studying, Still exemption, 100 per month milega. Because allowances are fixed in nature. Children to hai na, allowance diya na, take exemption. If they are not studying, that's not a problem. But yeah, if they are, now this is very exceptional case. These, see, these cases are exam ke liye theek hai. They may twist and ask. Practically, who is fool to do like that? If the children are not studying, why would I give them allowance? If there is no medical issue for my family members, I don't uh, have my children and spouse with me, why would the company give medical allowance for them? Hmm? So, this is the way you have to remember. Now, ask your doubts. Pucho. Doubt, pucho, ab pucho. Ask your doubt. Anyone in the class is still feeling? Year 120 and year 90, so together can we take 200? Because put together it is 210. I can you know still twist it. A core twist is like uh, the one which we have already done. If education allowances. 500 per month for two children. Now don't do 500 into 2 into 12. Receive this 500 per month for two children already. So maybe 250, 250. So 500 into 12. 12 fives are 
66,000. Less exempt. Under section 10, 40. 100 into 2 into 12. 500 is like 250 into 2. So how much is exempt? 100 into 2 into 12. If you are confused here, take this. Five times and aram se karo google pura. Jo doubt hai sab kuch ho. 100 into 2 into 12. So what will be taxable? 3600. Yeah. Subhashita, Akhila, dear Abhi, kya doubt se pucho? Or nahi to I really want all of you to write these examples. Whole class should write. I don't want you to lose marks for MCQs. Pucho here. Ma'am, in above case, we can take first child exemption and second child exemption, 80 plus 90 into 12. Yeah, but then you are a tax planner, future tax planner. You all are qualified, going to be qualified chartered accountant CMS. Why would you do loss? So whichever is higher, we can take first. Whichever is higher, we should take. Government ne to bola ne. So we will take always exemption where I get most benefit, no dear. So I am getting benefit here. Here I can deduct 100. Here I can deduct. If I take these two, I will be able to deduct only 80 and 90. 170. Right now I am deducting 190. Clear? So we yes. should go for where you can take maximum. Or put your doubts. Is it related? 5 minutes time given to take down. And still if you get more options, more doubt, please keep asking. Put your this is like hot favorite for MCQs. Finish writing all of you and scroll little up. Example one is over. You can write two, three and four. Man, 
Yeah, please ask. Pucho. Ma'am, if it is none of the children is sent to hostel. What? No what? exemption. Hmm? None of the children is sent to hostel. Hmm. Then also they are getting hostel allowance. Then what to do, ma'am? Yeah, allowances are fixed and you will get the exemption. If the children are uh, not sent to the hostel or if they are not taking the education and all. But in that, huh, other if the children are not sent to the hostel and you are getting the hostel allowance, then it will be fully taxable. Okay, ma'am. Fully, fully taxable. Because you are like uh, not spending the money only, no, for that purpose. Clear? Huh. Fourth one, uh, everyone is finished, I think. Yes, ma'am. Chalo. Let us revise the purpose. It's now last part. Allowances are all clear. We have done. Achha, the, this is a big list of allowances which are fully exempt. In that meals and all, I said 50 per meal and maximum 300 meals they can issue. Up to this, it is exempt. Hmm? Then children getting education in the school of the employer. It is exempt up to 1,000 per month. Beyond that, fully taxable. Gift, beyond 5,000, fully taxable. Right? Leave travel assistant is four calendar years. You can travel with your family in India in the four calendar years, two visits. Anywhere can be sponsored by your employer. And economy class tickets you should take. Airfare, train and all. So right now the calendar is 18, 19, 20 and 21. So we are in the year 2021. So 18, 19, 2021. Maximum exemption is two leaves with your family to hometown or kahin ghumne, kahin bhi. If you take three, four, remaining will be taxable. If you take only one leave, one will be carried forward. So in the next calendar, 21, 22, 23, 24. How many leaves are uh, allowed? Twice in a block of four years, the two plus one. If you don't avail anything, one will lapse, one you can carry forward. So next four years, you can avail three. Three says are at the tax rate. And now that googly which they are talking, uh, that children born out of multiple births after the first child will be treated as one child. So first a single child and then twins. All the three tickets will be exempt. First only twins. Done. Two children are over. Then again the third child's ticket will become taxed. This we have worked out the example also. Medical facility quickly I want to revise. Can employer play group insurance, health insurance on? Yes. Any treatment in the hospital of the employer or hospital maintained by government, it's exempt. Abroad treatment as per the RBI guidelines. Other than this, private treatments are all taxable. But uh, the uh, treatment should be given for the employee and his family. Family includes spouse, children, children, major, minor, any, parent, brothers and sisters which are dependent. So you know, senior parents, brothers, sisters, who are not earning. Dependent means they are dependent on you for their income. They are not earning anything. Then for all of them, you can take the medical treatment. One concept, one problem we have done. Okay. Never an exam you will get without RFA. Ma'am, you have paper hi bata diya. Kal ke paper mein RFA aega. Haan, bilkul aega. Then free accommodation. And if they give you in the first line, what hint did I give you? Many things are taught because with the experience we know where you make mistakes. Definition of salary is very wide for RFA. Basic, BA in terms of employment bonus, commission any, fixed also percentage. Fees and taxable part of the allowance. Right, children, education, less exempt, taxable is that. That's it. 
don't include perquisites and pf and all so what you do is rfa you always take it last because you need to add the allowances and all for that purpose is this clear to all of you right now rent free accommodation government employees it is exempt non government employees if the population is up to 10 lakhs 7.5 percent of salary is taxable 10 to 25 lakhs 10 percent these two practical implication is zero nothing given in the exam definition of salary ka 15 percent is taxable see rent free accommodation means company is giving you free house to stay right or not if company is giving you free house to stay then whatever rent company is paying or 15% of salary whichever is lower is taxable see 15% of salary or rent paid whichever is lower is taxable sometimes actually rent paid by the company is more but still up to 15% it is exempt and for furniture if the company takes the furniture on rent that rent will be taxable in your hands and if the furniture is purchased by the company then 10% of furniture and one more thing is uh, it is also given that sometimes a concessional concessional rate means you are getting house of the company but not complete free part you are paying so you calculate as if it is free rfa plus you add furniture ke liye you will get total minus amount received from employee you are not giving rent free accommodation you are saying employee you can stay in the house of employer but you have to pay 500 per month whatever amount you are recovering from employee that is not a perquisite right or not one second okay clear we have solved good number of problems also for rfa now loan employer giving loan up to 20000 exempt employer giving loan 2 lakh 5 lakh limitless but for specified diseases cancer hiv and which are there in the list exempt otherwise employer giving loan to employee free or at concessional rate difference will be taxable and you have to consider for that the first day rate of the rbi like employer has given loan to employee at 3% sbi not rbi sorry state bank of india sbi rate is 8% 5% is taxable then now can company give their office assets for the private use of the employee yes laptop motor car computers no problem laptop and computer car are exempt and motor car ke liye we have a separate table so can the company give to the employee um, what do you say the um, any asset to use yes then original cost 10% is taxable but please put it in block if you are absent again you do it now 10% per annum so company has given you uh, say company's video camera worth 50000 to use from 1st of august 1st of august you can also scribble the example if you want you having the material so 1st august so august september october november december january february march 8 months only 8 months taxable hoga clear or not 10% for 8 months will be taxable if you are using theek hai movable asset or non movable ke liye to rfa hai now if you transfer outrightly asset to your employees then you have to calculate what is wdb and for that employee should take their original cost minus the depreciation to get the wdb on the date of transfer 
that is the value taxable for this concept also we have worked out problem actual cost to employ less 10% depreciation for other uh, slm motor car and computer 20% wdv computer 50% wdv you have to charge for each completed year kahan gaya ye ra that means if company has used the asset for 2 years and 2 months 2 years they will depreciate and after depreciating take today's wdv of the bullet vehicle is say 90000 So ninety thousand is taxable purposes by employer to employee, but in ninety thousand, if you have given bullet to your employee, but not for you are saying employee for a dozen thousand rupees, you give one ten thousand, then how much will be taxable? Eighty thousand. So whatever amount you recover from employee in purposes, RFA or all this, that part will not be taxable. Okay. and the next one is employer may provide to employee other benefits you know at home gas electricity bills credit card bills servant cook watchman garden sweeper everything is taxable yeah right esop esop we have worked out the problem 300 ka share you are getting 200 so 100 per share is taxable But now, employee when they sell the share, cost allowed is three hundred, even though they have gotten two hundred, because on difference hundred they have paid the tax, right? Something added here is tax on perquisite. This I'll teach. I've already revised it that time, but for say it back. See, sweat equity shares or ESOP that is an option given to employee. You are our main employee. If you want, we can give you three hundred shares at two hundred concession, so that you will get an ownership feeling with us. Yes or no? You are now the shareholder of the company, owner. So when will you recognize this as income? So tax on perquisite and sweat equity shares is required to be paid tax on perquisite means when it will be taxable. How um, in the year of excise of the option when you choose to excise for option, however, where such shares and securities are allotted by current employer, being an eligible startup, you know, startup is a new company, then immediately it will not be taxable. After the expiry of forty-eight months from the end of the relevant year, that is two years ke baad forty-eight months. In the in which sale of such security takes place by SSE, जब employee sell करेगा तब or in which SSE ceases to be the employee of the company, he is no longer an employee. So whichever is earlier, once again, after forty eight months, in which the sale of security takes place or in which SSE ceases to be the employee, ठीक है? Right, rest on is taxable. We have seen specified employees definition. I have told you not important. Yeah, this one is good. If employer is paying tax of employee, it will be taxable in the hands of the employer only. खुद का income tax तो allowed नहीं है employer and employer is paying works to employ and on that tax he is paying. So in whose hands this is disallowed? Employer. So employer is paying. Rupees one thousand tax for employee not allowed in the hands of employer means employer is paying tax no will it again be taxable for employee answer is no so any tax paid by employer is <coughs> excuse me <coughs> exempt in the hands of employee under section ten ten c c okay. So here we complete with perquisites. See this problem I want to talk now. If you read this, ma'am, premium RMLIC, or ATC का deduction मिलता है, Mediclaim आएगा भी, ATD, donations, हाँ, huh? this is all what we are doing now. Deductions के बाद we'll come back. All these problems we have done. Yeah, motor car I want to go, but before that you ask doubts if you have any. 
anyone is having any doubt in purpose it or any problem you want to share you are not able to do pucho no doubts all clear so everyone is going to get full out of full tomorrow see these small baby steps are very helpful class test likhna hai sincerely and when you get the key no for it immediately these are online classes Sir will to give you feedback and all, but at least you make sure that you check it with the key so that you realize your mistake and you should not do that mistake in the final exam. Hmm? Right? Chalo, motor car. See, motor car is a perquisite and taxable for employee if he is using personally. If office motor car is used for official purpose, it's not a perquisite. Look at this column. Look at this column. It's not a perquisite. But if car is owned by employer and car related petrol repairs and uh, insurance and all is also paid by employer and car is wholly used by employer, पूरा घर के लिए use कर रहे हैं. For children's going to school, for wife going to shopping, and all, nothing official. Then whatever employer is giving, everything should be taxable, no? Running and maintenance expense, wear and tear, depreciation, higher charges, driver's salary, all is dumped as purpose. Logic se answer karna. Less amount charged from employer. See any purpose, it any fifty, sixty purpose, it's we have learned. Free and exempt and taxable. Any purpose of amount is recovered from employee. Utna you have to reduce. Now partly personal, partly official. Car employer expense employer. If CC is above up to one point six eighteen hundred. Above one point six two thousand one hundred. If chauffeur is also provided extra nine hundred. Clear to all of you or not? Right. Now I want to do the third part first. Car employer ki hai expenses employee himself is doing, and suppose he is using personally, so he is only doing repair and all. But car is employer no, so wear and tear and driver's salary is paid by company. That is perquisite. If only used for personal purpose, only official, then it's not a perquisite. Now car employer. But expenses are paid by employee. Then six hundred and nine hundred per month. Here it is eighteen hundred and two thousand. And driver or chauffeur के लिए nine hundred per month extra. Second one is interesting. Car employee की है. Employer is doing only expense. So all the expense incurred by employer will be taxable. For this. Very nice examples are given in the CMA material exclusive from illustration number twenty twenty one. You note down, practice, and if you have any doubt, ask. Hmm? Car and for, this is from the CMA material. What we have done, Harish ka problem, and we have worked. Here also I have worked out all the three options. I remember. Chal. Employee ki car, employer is doing expense and pure personal. So whatever expense done by employee tax it. Partly and partly, then amount of expenditure incurred by employer minus this much per month, because it's used partly for official purpose also, no? Or car the employee ki hai, difference will be taxable. Any doubt in the motor car? Hmm? And this one is super. Twenty thousand, one thousand, thirty thousand, and he joined in January. So January twenty one the salary will be twenty one thousand then twenty two thousand so salary is changing January to December so nine months your salary will be twenty thousand and January February March it will be twenty one I have given you many examples for this that's all for one hour and fifteen minutes revision for salary. Pucho, कुछ doubt है? Anyone is having any doubt? Man, yeah, please ask. If employer has two car, man, then what to do, man? 
मतलब एम्प्लॉयर इज गिविंग बोथ द कार्स फॉर दिस ओनली ऑफिस एज वेल एज पर्सनल हां हां ऑफिस एज वेल एज पर्सनल व्हाट एवर मे बी द नंबर ऑफ कार दिस इज पर मंथ फॉर पर कार and it will all be taxable am i making it very clear this is like 1800 per month okay so suppose you are here car bhi employer ki hai expense bhi employer kar raha so 1800 per month into 12 into two cars if two cars of employer you are using partly official partly personal multiply by 2 is your doubt clear और पूछो एनी वन एल्स इज हैविंग एनी डाउट ब्रेक इट इन टू पार्ट वेन यू आर लर्निंग एट होम ऑल्सो लाइक हाउ डू वी से पूरे रिटायरमेंट बेनिफिट एक एक करो कॉन्सेप्ट एंड रिवाइज द प्रॉब्लम कॉन्सेप्ट एंड देन वेन वी डू कम्बाइन इट शुड बी वेरी क्लियर रिटायरमेंट बेनिफिट अलाउंस इज पर्पज इट लास्ट टू क्लासेस वी हैव डन कम्बाइन प्रॉब्लम Shall shall I ask relief also with this? Relief is the very simple. Now what you are paying additional tax? That time what you are paying additional tax? So you are ready to pay additional tax. Those rate two thousand. Now what you are paying is five thousand. Three thousand you want relief. Relief we have done it all very properly. Okay. so that's all for this part please wait we will do the rest for the deductions one small problem but for revision of the salary i hope this much is enough all clear or not huh and keep revising and we are together for a whatsapp and all to keep sending me all the doubts click the photo and send a clear photo of the problem wherever you are stuck up okay you can send it today afternoon evening कल एग्जाम है एग्जाम के बाद भी भेजो आई विल नॉट स्कोल यू कि पढ़ाई नहीं की आप पूछ रहे आप डाउट नो प्रॉब्लम राइट ऑल द बेस्ट ऑल ऑफ यू शुड राइट इट वेरी नाइसली ओके वी आर क्लोजिंग फॉर दिस नो मोर डाउट्स इन सैलरी विल बी डूइंग लाइक दिस रिविजन फॉर बिजनेस साइड एंड ऑल्सो कीप सेंडिंग यूर डाउट्स लाइक यू सेंड फॉर अलाउंसेज ऑन अर्लियर तो आई मे यू राइट अ नोट चलो Thank you thank you so much all clear you are nothing Hello all of you here we begin with the complete revision of income from house property the most important head and hair hot favorite for your mcqs and separate question is also asked for combination problems for partition of the house or two three houses that is for 5 to 7 months and one of the easiest hai there is no amendment in this much little one or two here and there i will discuss as we discuss the concept the theory the booster notes and the notes what i am using here my own handwritten booster notes they are all available in the pdf form in the concept classes app the link is given below and even i am posting it in our telegram group in our whatsapp group so if you are not connected with us do connect in the whatsapp and telegram group so that when you are watching the video you can have a print out of the pdf all the notes what i am discussing one day before exam if you read these booster notes it will have all the gist and you can complete the revision within 45 minutes so here we begin quickly with revision of income from house property it is the second head of income there are five heads of income the first one is income from salary second head of income starts with income from house property now every head has got a chargeability section so knock knock chargeability section section says section 22 for house property says is there an owner and tenant relationship owner and tenant relationship yes is the tenant paying rent to the owner yes is there a property then enter this head income is taxable under income from house property 
So what is the condition and the important factors, chargeability section, owner-tenant relationship? Like if there is employer and employee relationship, where do you go? Income from salary. Like that, if it is owner and tenant relationship, where do you go? You go to income from house property. Now, though the name of this head is house property, this is not that income only from the house property residential is taxable here. Property means any property. Residential property, commercial property, shops, godowns, depots, anything. Even land appurtenant to my building. Next to my building is an open outhouse and which I have given it out on rent to a garage or a parlor or to someone who is putting a flea market on Sundays. So if I'm getting rent for the land which is attached to my building, land appurtenant to my building, I may have two parkings, so one parking I have given it out on rent to my neighbor and he is paying me rent every month. This all will be taxable under income from house property. So in a broader way, is the definition clear to you? Hmm? Right. Any doubts you have, chat box is open while speaking. I am taking overview uh, in my mind last exam papers are also there, the way they are asking and more emphasis because this is a revision video. You are not learning the concepts. Learning the concepts we all have done together in regular classes. More than six classes I took for house property where I have done practice kar hai every day. We have done. This is for revision, so main emphasis will be on the pitfalls which you should be careful. Suppose you are getting the rental income from an open plot. Where it will be taxable? Yes. Quick. Great. Nice answer. Income from other sources. Why? Because when you are talking about open plot, there is no property. I may give my open plot for a circle for Patanjali's yoga camp and all for 2-3 months. And I may get rental income from the open plot. Open plot, there is no property. So that rental income is not taxable. Okay? Now you all know we are taking concept classes in the rented premises. And we are paying rent to the owner. Now suppose that in our three rooms which are there, the last room we open up a small canteen for you all. Okay? And he is going to serve you hot snacks in the break and some stationery and all over there. Some, you know, chip food packets. So like this, that stationery wala or canteen wala is paying rent to us. We are paying rent to the owner. Now stationery wala paying rent to me will not be taxable under income from house property. Why? Because I am not the owner of the house. I myself, I am tenant. And the canteen wala is a subtenant. So subtenant paying rent to the tenant will be taxable under income from business, other source, wherever we are taking. Generally other source. Okay, got it or not? Because I am myself paying rent. This is a very common example. You can say for hospitals. Hospitals are on rented premises. Part one room of the hospital, they have given it out on uh, rent to lab or they have given it out on rent to <coughs> canteen and so on. So is this all clear to all of you? Income from house property basic. Now, when I say, okay, compute income from house property, then there has to be a format, no? So for this, first let us understand the types of properties, okay? So types of properties, I already have diagram and I have the notes. I'm sharing the screen and let us discuss it from there. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Check the watches in 45 minutes. We will complete the concept and you will be able to revise everything in that 45 minutes. What's wrong? I'm not able to share the screen.
So hope you are able to see word file I was not open. If it is word file, I can write on top of it. Now this is PDF, but if you can see my cursor going on, it will be fine. Hmm? So now we are starting with income from house property. I have explained all of you what is the property, what is the building, land appurtenant there too. Can you see? Now, Three kind of properties are there. What is the first kind of property? Let out property. Let out property is the property which is actually given on rent. Self-occupied property is property which you use it for your own residence. Self-occupied, you are staying. Or sometimes it is unoccupied. Now nice term they have used here, if you can see my cursor, unoccupied. What is unoccupied? Please watch these videos on full screen and with headphones, preferably in a laptop, so that the screen is very clear to all of you. Yes? Okay? So, what is self-occupied property? Self-occupied property is the property that either you are staying or it is unoccupied. It may be unoccupied because you are somewhere else. For example, I am having own house in Hyderabad. But for my son's education, I am staying with him in Canada. Now, my house in Hyderabad, I have not given it out on rent. And I am not staying there. It's not self-occupied. But kya wo khali hai? Is it unoccupied? Answer is yes. Then unoccupied house is also treated as self-occupied house. Yes, self-occupied, the rental income will always be nil. They are saying annual value. Annual rental value will be nil for two self-occupied properties. See, normally we say one house is enough, a ghar enough hai rene ke liye. So, okay, luxury is two houses. But film stars, cricketers, celebrities, they have two, three houses. One in Lonawala, one in Mumbai, one in Darjeeling. Then any two of the houses, they can treat it as self-occupied. Remaining house will be treated as DLOP. What is DLOP? Deemed let out property. Check it from the screen. Where the SSE owns where the SSE owns more than two property for the self-occupation purpose, the annual value of the two houses shall be taken as nil. All other properties will be deemed let out and taxed notionally. Are you getting huh? clear? Let out is actual let out. Self-occupied is either you stayed or let it be unoccupied. Now any two houses will be treated as uh, unoccupied or self-occupied. Your choice and every year. If you have three self-occupied, very favorite question in the exam. I'll show you the share with you the solution also. You have to work out the combination. If you have three houses as self-occupied, then any two you can take it as self-occupied. One will be treated as deemed let out. Deemed means assumed to be let out, and on notional income, you have to pay the tax. Clear to all of you. Now, what is the format? the screen is giving some trouble. <laughs> One second. Sure. So let us continue with this.
so all the three kind of the properties are clear to you the let out the self occupied and the being let out now let us check the format how we are going to check this okay right hmm self occupied and i have taken it separately first and then let out and all so whenever they say compute income from house property how you are going to compute first you write is gross annual value that is gav let municipal taxes net annual value let standard deduction that is 30% and then interest on loan okay and including the pre construction this this is the format each and every item we are going to discuss first how to derive the gav okay how to derive the gav is by way of these steps okay look at the steps on the screen here hmm? for deriving gav first you should know what is fair rent fair rent is arms length rental income ma'am why we are considering all this why don't we just take actual rent actual rent may be low some of uh, the tenant may be paying 20000 rent but by check they are paying 10000 and remaining cash so government is saying always compare the rent with the fair rent fair rent is arms length okay your office is on second floor the rent is 25000 what is the rent of third and fourth floor in this area for similar area in the similar uh, matlab depending on the different areas of the city the rental scheme so fair rent you can get that is the arms length then municipal value from the local authority you can get the rental value of different areas then there is rent control act according to which you can get the standard rent what should be the idle rent for this okay and then we have that is called as actual rent now for deriving the gav what we do is fair rent or municipal value whichever is higher that or standard rent whichever is lower that or actual rent whichever is higher are you all clear fair rent or municipal value whichever is higher that is your step a then step a or standard rent whichever is lower step b step b or actual rent whichever is higher high low high the third step answer is your gav and you should take it only if it is a self occupied property okay only can you see this bullet points please if it is a self occupied property then the gav is nil if it is partly self occupied partly let out to to le lo jo lena hai if the property is vacant for some period and let out for some period then take actual rent irrespective of the other value theek okay? hai so if the property is let out or being let out throughout the year then follow the above step so just follow the above step now what is is it clear to all of you how to get the gav fair rent or municipal value whichever is high that or standard rent whichever is low that or actual rent whichever is high Okay, right. Okay, so now we know. Yeah, sometimes what happens that actual rent is low only due to vacancy. Listen carefully. Exception to rule, ma'am. Just now you said. Yeah, listen, all of you. I have closed the screen two minutes and listen. What did I say? Fair rent and municipal value, whichever is high, that value, or standard rent, whichever is low. This step to answer, or actual rent, whichever is high. So you follow the step method and you get the GAV. Sometimes in the third step, actual rent is low. So step two or actual rent, whichever is high, we take. But if actual rent is low only due to vacancy. then even though actual rent is low you will take actual rent as gav is this clear regular class please see the notes we have worked out only for gav we have worked out more than 12 to 15 examples individual so just check it always you take high low high but 
actual rent is low and step two answer is high. So, ma'am, step two or actual rent, whichever is high, na, so step two le lenge. But then actual rent is low only due to vacancy. Then even though actual rent is low, low take GAV as actual rent. Till here is it clear? Now, municipal taxes are allowed from GAV only if you pay it. If tenant is paying, don't take it. If owner and tenant are paying 50-50%, take accordingly. So municipal taxes are allowed only on actual payment made by the owner. If it is due for say 21-22 and not paid, don't allow it. So municipal taxes always allowed on payment date. From GAV, deduct municipal taxes, you get MAV. I am discussing for let out and deem let out. The format is same. In NAV, 30% of NAV is allowed as standard deduction for all your expense. Government is saying if you are receiving 100 rent, you will definitely spend 30% no ground rent, watchman, liftman, repairing, this, that, so many kind of other expenses. So, what it is is that if you are getting, say, your NAV is 100, 30 is allowed as standard deduction and remaining is taxable. From remaining interest on loan is allowed. Now, how interest on loan? Acha, please, once again, I want to say, make it very clear. Write it if you want. Pause the video, write it. Municipal taxes are allowed on payment basis. Interest on loan for making house property. Do you take loan? Huh? Bade loan le 10 years, 15 years. Interest on loan is allowed on due basis. So March 22 interest, if you have not paid, it will be allowed on due basis. Are you all with me? Clear as a March 21, 22 is your financial year. And if you have not paid the interest, you have paid it in April. Still on due basis, interest will be allowed. In short, narrow-minded attitude and very clearly it should be house property and what all expenses are allowed. Municipal tax from the GD. Standard deduction from the NAV and interest on loan destination. Separately, they will give in the exam repair and ground rent and all 30% standard deduction. Whether your actual expenses are more or less, everything is covered. And one more expense many times asked in MCQs is annual charge. You know, sometimes my father has transferred by way of will the house to me, subject to condition that every month, whatever rental comes from the property, I will keep. My father has given the house to me. But out of that, 5,000 rupees I should pay to my mother. That is annual charge in house property. Annual charge in house property is not allowed as expense. Ma'am, but the rent is not pay kar rahe hain. So whatever you are earning, you are doing your personal expense. They are drawing, they are not your business expense. So annual charge is given in the exam, 5,000, 6,000, it is not allowed. Clear to all of you? Hmm? So this is how we work this concept of unrealized and arrears also I'll discuss. Right now, I want to share the screen for, check this. Municipal taxes. I'm reading point number two. Yes, on the top of the screen. Yeah. Municipal taxes are allowed only if actually they are paid by the owner. Standard deduction is allowed irrespective of the actual expenditure, 30%. Interest on loan is allowed. I've given all these points. But rather than just let us check up interest on loan, I have already prepared separate video and it is there in the tax concepts playlist. I hope you all are using playlists. Playlists are made very perfectly well covering all the concepts videos. Just 5-5 five, five minutes concepts I have covered up in the videos. Some in-depth concept also which takes 20-30 minutes. So if you take uh, check text playlist, account playlist, you will get the concept and all the amendment videos are separately covered up in the tax amendment videos. Okay? Right. One second. I will share the screen for all of you and let us go to the booster notes and revise everything. Hmm. Municipal tax I have covered, so I am scrolling up. 
Interest on loan is allowed on due basis. Standard deduction is allowed. This I have taught you now. Fair and municipal value, whichever is higher. Ek bar dekh lo. GAV is on May 50. Give me one second. I'm plugging in. Thank you so much for waiting. Chal. Exception to the rule if DAV actual rent is low only due to vacancy, irrespective of the step three, actual rent will be taken. Okay? Municipal tax is allowed only if actually paid here. They go interest on loan ka flow chart. We will do it nicely. See. Have you taken loan for let out and deemed let out? No upper limit. Pura interest on loan allowed. It. Clear hai ya ne? Huh? Let out or deemed let out mein koi upper limit nahi hai. Full interest on loan is allowed. Clear? Now, self-occupied. Self-occupied may a the loan is taken for construction or purchase. And what are the other conditions? Hmm. Loan is taken after 1499. Construction is over in five years, and loan is taken for construction or purchase. Then in case of self-occupied property, maximum interest is allowed 2 lakh for two self-occupied property in Vindake. Are you all getting? And if you take loan for repairs, renovation, or if you take loan before 1499, or if the construction is not done, so in any other condition, how much is the loan allowed? Loan ka interest kitna allowed hai? 30,000. One second. For let out and deem let out, how much interest on loan is allowed? Yes, no upper limit. No upper limit is, is there. Full interest on loan is allowed. So for the let out and deem let out, if my interest on loan is 5 lakh, 8 lakh, jitna bhi is tab allowed hai. Haan. But if it is self-occupied property, then how much interest on loan is allowed? Bolo. Allowed hai. 2 lakh. When? When the loan is taken for purchase or construction? Interest, I mean say the loan is taken after 1499 and the construction is completed in 5 years. If the loan is taken for repairs and all, then it is 30 months. Clear? Some additional points. Check this flowchart, check the notes. One more separate video also I have prepared that also you can refer. Now, interest on loan, if it is paid outside India and if you miss deducting TDS, that interest on loan will not be allowed. Okay? Now, interest on interest is not allowed. Note 2. Milrayam Po. Housing loan, 1 lakh you have taken from A. You have to pay interest 10,000 to A. To pay the interest, you have borrowed 10,000 from B. B pay me 10,000. I have to pay interest on housing loan to A. Now, whatever interest you pay to B, B, why did I take loan from you? For house property? No. For paying interest to A. A, your loan is allowed because it's interest on housing loan. B, your interest is to pay the interest is not allowed. Interest on interest is not allowed. That looks a complicated dialogue, but if you can understand the logic behind it, interest on loan is allowed on due basis, but interest on second loan taken, that interest on loan taken to pay the interest is not allowed. Sometimes second loan is taken to repay the first loan. Listen all of you. I took my first loan from HDFC Bank. 30 lakh rupees for 15 years. But because of some reason, I broke up with HDFC and now I took housing loan from ICICI Bank, 30 lakh. I repaid HDFC and now I'm paying interest to ICICI Bank. So if you have taken second loan to repay the first loan, second loan is taking the place of housing loan, no? 
Now ICICI Bank loan is my housing loan. Will interest on loan be allowed for ICICI Bank? Answer is yes. Interest on second loan taken to repay the first loan is allowed because now second loan is said as interest on housing loan. Clear? Right? Self-occupied property will always show loss as GAV is nil. Hmm? Now, what is arrears of rent? Arrears of rent kya hai? Arrears of rent is increase in rent with retrospective effect. Whenever you receive, it is separately taxable with 30% deduction. Unrealized rent. Unrealized rent is some rent of the past years not received. That time. Okay? So whenever rent is unrealized, Okay, it is like a bed debt. It is allowed as deduction from GAV subject to other four conditions. You know, you are, you are not paying me the rent and vacancy dono alag hai. You are not paying me the rent and I declare it as unrealized. It's like bed debt. Mujhe rent aai nahi raha. Four conditions are if tenancy is bona fide. You have vacated my premises. You are not occupying any other premises. And I have taken enough effort to recover the rent from you. Clear to all of you? I want to repeat. I have taken enough effort to recover the rent from you. Then it is said as unrealized rent. So whenever unrealized rent happens, it is deductible from the GA. Because that rent is not Now after 2-3 years, my tenant was honest. He met me somewhere. He said, ma'am, that time I was not doing good because of COVID, now I'm doing good. Ye le lo, wapis. Aapka rent. I said, Daddy, forget it. I have sold that house now. I'm not the owner of that house. But he's saying, no, no, ma'am, garmic account goes. I want to pay back the rent. I recovered unrealized rent after three years when I was not even the owner of the property. Now this unrealized rent, whenever I recover, it will be taxable as income from house property irrespective whether I am the owner of the house or not. Clear or not? Read the seventh point. Here it is. Arrears of rent and unrealized rent, whenever they are recovered subject to 30% standard deduction, they are taxable. Irrespective of your owner or not, tax it separately. Don't add it to GAV anyway. Haan, ye when your computer computing column form income, no? Compute it separately. Hmm? Irrespective of the GAV municipal taxes, agar as a percentage diya hai, municipal taxes are 12%. Always take it on municipal value. Irrespective GAV is your fair rent or municipal value or not. Okay? Right. And annual charge I have already explained. Hmm. Now this is for pre-construction interest. Yahan tak check karo, sab kuch clear hai ani. Almost the major part is over then how to solve the problems. I'll share the combination problems also. Hmm? Yes, all these booster notes in PDF, we have already started posting for residential status and also the Jukan visa being added in the concept classes app in the free content. You can download and take a printout and keep it with you. Or you can download from our Telegram and WhatsApp group also. Yes, very good. Your booster notes. Aap add on karo na. Parte parte kuch point yaad aara hai. See, all these are made while explaining. You can see the new color is changing every day. We use different things. So, ye routine mein roz hum jo jo parte hai. Hum uske handwritten notes bana ke rakte hai. Right or not? All students are also maintaining booster notes already. Those who are taking regular coaching, right? Chill. Now, there is one concept called as pre-construction interest. Now, what is this pre-construction interest? See, you take housing loan in 2018 when you started the construction. Construction was over in March 21. So, 21-22 routine interest on housing loan is allowed. Rental income is interest pay. Rental income is interest pay. 
But what about the interest of 18, 19, 19, 20 when construction was going on, but there was no rental income? Are you getting what? Actually, the meter is going on or not? Answer is yes. Then that interest is called as pre-construction interest. I want to repeat. Interest prior to the period for which construction is over, that is pre-construction interest. There's a method to calculate, five-step method I'm sharing now. It is allowed one-fifth every year for five years. Current year ka interest to allow ho gai hoga. Pre-construction will also be allowed. First you all check the steps. One second, I'll share so that you can check the steps. These are all own made examples we solve in regular class. Yeah, seven cases we have solved and then I made you write this theory. Hare Krishna. Really the screen is giving trouble to the screen. Yeah, look at the screen. Pre-construction period starts from the date of loan or date of the construction, whichever is later. Jab se aapne construction start kiya or you have taken loan, whichever is later, pre-construction period starts. Pre-construction period ends on the date of repayment of the loan. Date of repayment of the loan or date of completion of construction, whichever is earlier. Huh? Either you have repaid the loan and sometimes the construction is over in 2013. Right now it is 23. Still the loan is going on. We have not repaid in current year. Okay. So, is the construction over, then date of repayment or 31st March prior to completion. I have missed it, I don't know. 31st March prior to date of completion of construction, whichever is earlier. Construction ka haan June 21. Before that, what is the 31st March 21? That will be your pre-construction period. And whatever is the pre-construction period, it is allowed in five years. See, look at the screen. Yes, a case we have. Pre-construction period started on 1st April 23. Pre-construction, suppose the construction is over on 30 June 40. So what is the 31st March prior to this pre-construction period? One year. So on 1 lakh 10%, 10,000 is the pre-construction interest. This interest is allowed one-fifth every year for five continuous years. Kab se shuru karenge five years from the year when construction is over. March 14 is the construction over, yes. Then 14, 15, 15, 16, five years. Hmm? Here, current year's interest is one lakh into ten percent. Why pre-construction is nil? Because my current financial year is 20 to 23. So, so the pre-construction interest will not come and the current year's interest will come. Why? Because the loan is not repaid. Hmm? And if the loan is repaid earlier, like in the fifth case, current year's interest is nil, because loan is repaid. But pre-construction interest, so five years it will go on, no? 1500, 1500, 1500. Like these, these are the different cases. Hmm? So is the pre-construction concept clear to all of you? Yeah. There's one very nice concept here for the vacant uh, building and all. You know when the buildings are vacant, like the construction is over and you get the occupancy certificate from the corporation and you have put a two-leg board. But property of it is occupied. And none of your property is sold. You are dealing into real estate. Ghar con you are constructing the house and selling is what you do. You have constructed the house. This point is there in theory also. But because it's written here, I am explaining. So suppose the building is ready to occupy 10th March 20. Now next financial year, 2021, 21, 22, even two years, if it is unoccupied, two let board laga ke rakha hai, okay. After 22, if it is unoccupied, it will be treated as deemed let out property. And you will have to pay the notional income pay tax. 
the last point what i have explained i'll definitely share it once again ah uh, two minutes took a break because it's like you know if this is a regular class and i say take down from the screen read ask doubts i get a bored and in these classes pure concepts batana hai kuch bhi miss nahi hona chahiye and it is like non stop speaking <coughs> so sometimes very tiring okay chal did you want follow the concept of uh, this pre construction interest is clear yeah so from the gad less municipal taxes nav less standard deduction and less the interest on loan current year and pre construction put together that limit is there of 30000 or 2 lakh and for two houses i'll tell you in last exam they have asked combination question so if two houses put together one house is deemed let out two houses any two of our choice we can take it as self occupied so one house the interest was 65 another it was 180 so 180 and 65 was crossing 2 lakh so maximum interest will be allowed how much 2 lakh clear or not interest on loan deriving the gav and all these are like basic important ingredients which makes house property shall we we'll continue the revision yes theory questions are also there i'll take it at the end interest on loan see <clears throat> if the loan is um, allowed 2 lakh if the loan is taken for construction or acquisition after 1499 construction is completed in 5 years it is 30000 if any of the a condition is not assessed by or if the loan is taken for repair and 2 lakh and 30000 is the limit for two self occupied property dlop last line i am reading dlop and lop there is no upper i mean limit pura interest on loan is allowed Okay, right. Next, one very important concept here we are discussing in the sixth point is composite rent. Composite rent is rental of the house along with all the amenities. Huh? Nowadays in the corporate, lot of like nearby to corporate offices, apartments are there which are given on rent with all the amenities, electronics, furnitures, OTG, washing machine, AC, and refrigerator and all. Now. the rent of the house is going to be taxed under house property other amenities may be business income or other source but sometimes it's all put together and you are not able to segregate i am collecting some amenities mila ke 50000 rent and i am not able to segregate tab kya kare everything will if the composite third bullet point if the composite rent cannot be split then the whole rent will be taxable in business income or other source clear income from subletting is taxable under income from other source ye clear hai sabko okay unrealized rent conditions i have told you arrears of rent conditions i have told you what we have discussed whenever it will be <clears throat> yes advance rent is not taxable hmm? 13 point is good sometimes the property is in dispute you know two brothers are fighting then whoever is in possession of the house or whoever is enjoying the income right now will be deemed as owner and he has to pay the tax a and b they are brothers they are fighting for the property but right now the rental income is coming to a so who has to pay every year tax on rental income a irrespective of finally whoever is the owner a or b ठीक है वेकेंट प्रॉपर्टी तो क्लियर है स्टॉक इन ट्रेड का मीनिंग क्लियर है आपको वॉट इज स्टॉक इन ट्रेड हम्म यू आर डीलिंग इन टू द स्टॉक इन ट्रेड हम्म प्रॉपर्टी Trade is you are dealing into real estate and buying and selling property is your business. But for some times, you know that because of the second wave, के बाद COVID में ना भी rent बहुत कम property sale हो रहे हैं. So you have put it out on rent. Now if you have put it out on rent, 
whatever rental income you are getting it will be treated as income from house property and read this see as specified head of charge is provided for income from house property annual value of house property cannot be brought to tax under any other head of the income it will remain so property is held by sse as stock in trade or however annual value of the property being held as stock in trade would be treated as nil for a period of 2 years from the end of the financial year in which certificate of completion is obtained from the competent authority if the property is not let out during that period are you getting till 2 years after you get the certificate of occupancy october 21 mein agar certificate of occupancy you got so till march 22 to theek hai after that also 22 23 23 24 no problem after that if the stock in trade is vacant your house is vacant it will be treated as deemed let out and you have to pay tax on rental income ठीक है एंड दीज आर लास्ट टू थ्योरी क्वेश्चंस व्हेन द प्रॉपर्टी इनकम इज नॉट चार्जेबल टू टैक्स यू नो कभी-कभी एग्जाम में पूछते हैं लिस्ट एनी फाइव ऑफ सिक्स एक्सेप्शन टू रूल देन प्रॉपर्टी इनकम इज नॉट टैक्सेबल इफ द इट इज प्रॉपर्टी इनकम बाय लोकल अथॉरिटी साइंटिफिक रिसर्च स्कूल्स हॉस्पिटल्स ट्रेड यूनियंस एनी वन एनुअल वैल्यू ऑफ द एक्स रूलर हम कोई भी एनुअल वैल्यू from farm building agricultural income political party and so on so these are exceptions to rule when property income is not taxable hmm? and some of the cases deemed ownership lag jata hai and the property gets taxable yes when the property is transferred to spouse without adequate consideration out of love and affection even if i have transferred the property to my husband i am the deemed owner and rental income will be taxable in my hands only many time you know we transfer the property just like that to divert the income tab ye tax hoga fir theek hai right so just read it these questions are there i'm not going in detail only two theory questions are there who is deemed owner and then combination problems i wanted to share MCQs also we have already practiced in a separate class. You can watch those videos are there in the playlist. I was just seeing if I can show you the combination problem. Yeah, this problem is also very nice. Where you have one property rental income from outside India, that too in dollars. So convert and take it. And in India, property if you have that partition, fifty percent is self-occupied, fifty percent is let out. Hmm. So then be careful how you are taking fair rent, municipal value. If they give for the whole property, then fifty percent you have to do for fair rent, municipal value. One of the exams they give fair rent, municipal value for fifty percent part unit only. then take it accordingly theek okay? hai right so this is the way you have to solve problems and i was just willing to show you ye dekho maine bataya na agar 25% self occupied hai make a column 50% let out hai make a column if you are using it for own business don't make column for that for house property you can't collect rent from yourself Let out twenty five percent, make one column. Self occupied fifty percent, make one column, and twenty five percent which is used for business, all twenty five percent related expense, repairs, ground rent, lift man will be taken as business expense. And these are all combination problems, pre construction interest. Just one second, yeah. See, these are the combination problems. H1, H2 और फिर H3 DLOP किया फिर H1 को DLOP किया H2 एन एच थ्री सेल्फ ऑक्यूपाइड एवरीथिंग इज नील ओनली इंटरेस्ट ऑन लोन इज अलाउड सी कैन यू सी ऑन स्क्रीन हियर इट इज थर्टी हियर इट इज वन सेवेंटी फाइव बट आई एम अलाउिंग ओनली वन सेवेंटी वाई बिकॉज अपर लिमिट इज टू लैक फिर इसको DLOP वेर एवर द इनकम इज लेस यू कैन गो फॉर द कॉम्बिनेशन सो लाइक दिस कॉम्बिनेशन प्रॉब्लम आर ऑल्सो देर Make sure whatever coaching you material you follow mine or anyone's it's all good. 
but introduce problem just go through it and whether you have taken coaching from us or not if you have any doubt just connect with us through our whatsapp telegram group click the photo send a voice note give us 48 hours i'll surely clear your doubt whatever are your doubts in accounts costing income tax these are my core areas i'm teaching since last 21 years many of them say aajkal expert ka zamana to be very frank dear students I'm not boosting myself, but they say no. You can teach only one subject. Best you cannot teach, but just watch the marathon lectures and the concept lectures of accounts and costing, and then give a feedback. Last 21 years, thoroughly daily, regular face-to-face -face classes. I've taught these subjects. I know the trend from the PCC to IPCC to CA inter, and again now it is like the portion is changing. So I've seen these trends and how they make the papers. See my mock test paper discussion also of last. You will get to know the communication, the English, the concept, everything clearly. Oh, I've tried my best to justify house property. It is little tiring. So I skipped explaining in detail the last two theory questions. You read it. If you have any doubt, it is teacher's first duty to clear the doubt of student. Koi bhi doubt chota ya bada nahi. Okay, right. And do subscribe this channel because all the next business head, capital gain, all the chapters, revisions are going to happen in YouTube live. So make sure you connect with us and for other short videos, I'm putting it on Insta Live so that most of the students are responding and asking more doubts over there. So this is how we are there. Stay connected with us. All the description may link are given. And if you feel this one hour non-stop speaking is worth it, bar bar suno your lecture. House property ka concepts bar bar revise hote rehega. Keep listening to this lecture again and again. And if you feel it is worth it, do share it with five of your friends. Do hit the like button for all the knowledge teacher is sharing. Do comment below the video. We also need motivation. And few comments, few of you who like it and comment below. The YouTube is going to boost it and share it with more number of students. So wishing the best for me, for you, for all. Thank you so much. Bye-bye all of you. All the very best to all of you. Prepare super well. No substitute is there for hard work. Smart work, you all know it. All, your, all teachers are guiding as and how the time goes. Ye dhyan rakhna, ye karna. We are also guiding. Huh? I told you today. Unrealized rent, arrears of rent, don't tag it in GADH. Unlock the tax, 30% deduction. Daily. I told you now. So these are footfalls. We will take care for the smart work. You just work hard, committed, keep your why clear. Bye bye, all of you. Yes, yes. For the next video, I'll be giving you one poster live in YouTube when I'm going to come live. Thank you. Bye bye. Hello all of you, here we begin with one of the most interesting but vast chapter in the income tax that is called as business head. Business head is the pumping heart not only in inter and in final also. Your question number one only wherein you don't have a choice attempt karna hai ane, but you can attempt it in three hours anywhere. But question number one is compulsory wherein you have to, they'll give you a PNL account and you have to compute his income from business and profession. Same as case in final exam. In final exam, the question number one is compute the business income of a company with the help of the concepts what I'm teaching now and the concepts of math. Right? Okay. So now we are beginning with business head. Every head, there are five heads of income. Every head has chargeability section. Okay. Yeah, one thing as I start, dear students, what I'm going to do is I'll refer the running notes, what we have, the material, and our booster notes, which I have written. Booster notes, my writing is not so good. You can check it now. I'll share it with all of you in the screen. So I'm getting it typed over the period and sharing it with all of you already. I've shared booster notes of residential status, salary, house property. That is done. 
and all these booster notes which i am referring on screen they are very much nice gist of the whole chapter comparative tables is going to be very clear you can download concept classes app from the description below and in the pre study material all these pdfs are uploaded so you can refer from there rather than revising the whole chapter if you just keep on revising the booster notes that's what you all have given me the feedback for salary and house property any time 15 20 minutes the whole gist will be clear and one day before exam and these are my booster notes i have prepared it in my way of understanding which i'm sharing with all of you in the coming one hour if you have any add ons please let me know use the chat box unmute and speak up no problem now there are five heads of income the third head is income from business and profession now when we are saying income from business or profession every head has chargeability section knock knock enter like you have a property there's a owner and tenant relationship enter income from house property are you doing a business or a profession if you are having income or losses maybe but you are doing business or profession come into this head called as income from business profession chargeability section 28 when you are doing business you all know what it is retail wholesale manufacturing company form llc anything when you are doing a profession like you are having a professional income is either you are having an extraordinary skill or a professional degree like doctors lawyers chartered accountants cost accountants they will be filing their return under this head when they earn income from business so now how to compute this business income you know let us say some theory is there in the beginning so we'll just crawl it and then we can move ahead see chargeability section says all this is taxable under that business and profession if you receive compensation license if you are selling sometimes you go to a doctor he does the your treatment and he is not accepting cash so instead of paying him fees in cash you give him a mobile phone from your store worth 32000 so is that a perquisite or benefit received by doctor in kind yes so fees received in cash on kind is income and very well taxable here now when you are doing it for partnership form this i'll take in a separate video also but if it is a partnership form and if you are taking interest salary bonus remuneration you are getting from the firm as a partner first of all dear students partner getting share of income from the partnership firm is exempt why because partnership firm is already paying tax on that right now partner getting salary interest on capital remuneration is it taxable in the hands of the partner yes under which head business head don't take it as income from salary because between the partnership firm and partner there is no owner tenant relationship clear right uh, there is a part over here which i will explain in the next concept uh, we alag se karenge when i explain the assessment of a partnership firm speculative business where you don't take the delivery of the goods that you have to calculate keep separate and your normal business separate why because speculative loss can be carried forward for four years normal loss eight years and some other rules but ultimately it's a business no speculative business is where delivery of the item is not there huh? you book something and you just enjoy the differences so that all is given in our material what is speculative business i hope we are doing it as a revision you all have watched regular lectures and it will be very helpful to you non competent fees i am paying you fees that within 5 kilometers of the radius of concept classes don't open your academy it's not bribe it's legally i am paying you fees non competent fees means i am stopping you from doing a business activity is it your business income answer is yes very well taxable here and 35d will check so in short income from business and profession is taxable here what is business what is profession speculative transaction that we have seen now very important is in all the five heads section 145 says business head and income from other sources either you compute on the cash basis or on mercantile system 
you cannot follow hybrid system i want all of you to write on this page mcqs superb mcqs are asked from this for business head i want to repeat and for income from other sources you can either follow mercantile system of accounting or accrual system of accounting okay you cannot follow hybrid who is saying this section 145 now as we have accounting standards in income tax we have icds in uh, taxation at inter level you just have introduction and in final you have these icds in detail accounting standards are applicable for standards which you use for your books of accounts icds are applicable what is the full form of icds yes income computation disclosure standards there are 10 icds which government says use it while you compute your business income and your other source if following conditions are satisfied now on conditions mcqs are made and they are like super scoring this icds are required to be followed by all the ssc individual and huf who's not required to get his accounts audited other than means individual and huf if your turnover exceeds 1 crore if you are getting your books of accounts audited do follow this theek hai right just one second and two three miss calls are there i'm not used to taking class at this time dear students you can read two seconds done all right thank you for waiting chal so what did i tell you who should follow icds all the ssc companies llc partnership firm all individual and huf only if their books of accounts are audited who follows the mercantile system if you are following mercantile system you have to follow icds ma'am if i follow cash system icds are not applicable okay to compute which income business income and other sources so they will frame the question like this icds is applicable to llp partnership firm company or all which option is correct all individual and huf it is applicable only if books of accounts are audited hmm? and one thing is very important dear students icds are standards which are applicable for computing the income they have got nothing to do with your books of accounts books of accounts ke liye kya hai accounting standards audit ke liye kya hai essays standards on auditing just to compute your income you have to use the income from business and profession and other source just to compute income use icds but ma'am sometimes icds is chasing different treatment income tax act is different treatment who will prevail huh you are smart enough 18 plus dear student but you will take a decision on your father father so icds ke upar kya hai act in case of conflict income tax act will prevail and not icds how is the speed of the class all of you are attending live then if you can respond in the chat box is my speed fine you all are following because this is a marathon revision class wherein i'm not going to read word to word not a regular class you all have finished that so just in a gist i'm revising and if i start reading वैसे भी इट्स अ वेरी बोरिंग वे ऑफ टीचिंग रीडिंग रीडिंग आई एम जस्ट अंडरलाइनिंग द क्लू वर्ड्स एंड आई एम गिविंग द जिस्ट सो कैन यू रिस्पोंड इन चैट इफ दिस आईसीडीएस कांसेप्ट इज क्लियर और नॉट डन once i finish the explanation and if you feel i have gone little fast then please pause me say ma'am 2 minutes so we icds padha liya so 2 minutes either you can underline the clue words or you can just revise on your own no problem itna bhi fast nahi jana hai humko all right clear okay once again i am giving you the gist of the icds listen to the screen icds are standards which are applicable to compute your income they are applicable to all the ssc individuals and hfs only if books of accounts are audited icds is applicable if you follow mercantile system 
only for two heads of income that is the business and profession and your other thing and icds and income tax act if there is a conflict what will prevail income tax act will prevail so this is all a gist you have to remember final students they have applicability of icds which will be done separately theek hai all right going to the next part now how to compute the business income dear students literally i appreciate all of you when i say compute house property you know everyone in the class huh? live batch right now all the 44 students jaise pen utha ke likh dete hain gav less municipal taxes nav so you it's not but if i you have followed why gav why municipal tax we are deducting so there's a format on how to compute the income no how do you compute uh, the salary income gross salary then standard deduction net salary how do you compute capital gain start with sale consideration expenses like that every head is having a format format of business head is start with the net profit as per books of accounts add few things and say what is that few things deduct few things and what you get answer that is the income from business and profession and you have to pay tax on that is that clear to all of you now i am going to i acha one more thing i want to say uh, this is the playlist of revision and marathon videos there is a separate playlist in youtube for taxation concept just on add and less when i should do add man when i should do less and when i should do nothing i have made 10 12 minutes separate video only for bed debts i have made a separate video so like this picking up the concepts with students are confused taxation concept playlist if you check more than 38 videos are there right now and you can check in whatever video you want to do right now i am using my booster notes and i am referring for all of you yeah how to check this add and less i hope the screen is clear yeah look at the screen ye dekho ye just ek example hai look at the screen my gp is 50 rupees my net profit is 20 and my expenses is 30 this is a pdf so not able to work with the marker but i hope it's clear 50 is gp 20 is my net profit and 30 is my expenses now i say dear students in 30 expenses 5 rupees fees school fees paid for son debited personal expense 8 rupees car purchased for house wife debited so can i debit my personal expenses or capital expense in 30 rupees answer is no who said that business entity concept in accounts ma'am in this 30 rupees if expenses include 5 rupees personal scratch it so if i reduce the expense no now my business expense is not 30 look at the example 5 rupees is personal expense so it is 25 right so this 5 rupees if i disallow the expense disallow means expenses which is debited but not allowed what is the impact on profit profit is increasing so we should do add this format is printed in your material also net profit as per books okay this is so problem solved one second no? yeah here net profit start with the pnl account add all the expenses which are debited but disallowed personal expense not allowed capital expense not allowed donations not allowed penalty under income tax ek to galti karo penalty pay karo and you want to debit penalty in pnl account should it be allowed answer is no so expenses debited to the pnl account not allowed clear now add income not credited to pnl account but related to business like discount receipts here it is i have a data credit card theek hai i had to pay you 10 rupees dear students 15 more i purchased i have to pay you 25 i paid you 24 1 rupee khada hai am i going to pay you 1 rupee no creditors account debit to discount receipt karke khatam karo 
is this discount received my business income yes did i take it in this net profit no now if i take it what will happen to my uh, this thing now if i take it what will happen to my uh, profit the profit will increase yeah so add it there are you all with me and very clear i am in the second bit now this is all problem solved quite in detail but up the va format yaad rakho it will be clear to you and this is there in a 10 minute separate video also expenses debited to pnl account and disallowed add because the profit is increasing now if income is related to business like discount receipt but you didn't take it ma'am now now i want to take if you take discount received on the credit side what is the impact on the profit add to kya karoge aap add followed it all of you coming to the third example suppose in the pnl account credit side you have written rent received 2 rupees dividend received rent received you have written in the pnl account but where is it taxable second head dividend received you have written but where is it taxable income from other sources right so can i remove this in my net profit 20 2 and 7 rupees is also there but scratch it can we scratch it dear students agar scratching allowed rehta na so you would have not studied in rectification chapter in accounts so can i say rent received and dividend received is income of other heads remove it that's what i have written in the third format expenses related to business sorry ah income credited to pnl not related to business nikal do less in your net profit rent received is there lottery is there dividend received is there they are all taxable elsewhere so just remove it less 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 now expenses related to business not debited now charge it like we all know depreciation as per books is different ek ek din ka depreciation aap charge karte hai ma'am i sold the asset on 1st july april may june i will charge in income tax you charge the depreciation block wise right so in that case can i add back the depreciation as per books as disallowed yes and can i deduct the depreciation as per income tax yes so if you remember these four items you can pause the video you can take a screenshot or you can write it down those have attended regular classes they all have this in booster hmm booster notes mein ye sab aapko mil jayega net profit as per book se start karna hai add all the expenses which are debited but they are not allowed disallowed 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 nikal do add income not credited but away it is business income discount received add it deduct expenses related to business you didn't debit it scientific research or depreciation as per income tax or vrs you paid vrs but you didn't debit it so now debit it one fifth less income credited to pnl account but not related to it i've taken my best because i can't say how much energy it is needed dear students to take these revision lectures regular class i can aram se thoda main hawa kha sakti hu dhoop kha sakti hu aap log screen se likh lo but here continuously i have to see so any doubts you have chat box is open those who all are attending live and too much of doubt you cannot put in chat irrespective that recording is going on unmute and speak up absolutely no problem this is like super important and we all are hyderabadis we eat biryani in biryani we put elaichi cloves bay bay leaves why do we put it for the flavor but do we eat it no we put it aside in the plate so please remember when they give you pnl accounts and adjustments there would be some adjustments neither you have to do add nor you have to do less nothing you have to do followed or not i'm saying in a joking way but i hope it is clear because you know what a student point is ma'am this adjustment what should i do i'll tell you one thing on ongoing uh, dashera 
we are distributing thousand diaries to all our customers huh? we have huge customers and thousand diaries we are distributing with all our brand uh, name logo and features and all and we are distributing to all our customers so thousand diaries multiplied by 10 rupees so small diaries 10000 rupees is advertisement expense all the story is given in problem ke niche adjustment mein and advertisement is debited in the pnl account 10000 now what should i do i am seeing in the chat box add or less advertisement expense includes 10000 rupees diaries distributed to our customers on dashera is it allowed or not allowed allowed yes yes can i give and is it debited already in the pnl account then in exam if they give you these kind of adjustment ma'am it's allowed it's already debited in the pnl account what do you need to do nothing neither add nor less is this clear to all of you right okay so uh, this is one important aspect of why you should do add and less coming back to our material now from the booster notes let us read the gist which i have given and you can add on more to this in net profit add capital expense because they are capitalized acha by mistake capital expense like buildings extension if you have put in pnl and when you capitalize can i then deduct depreciation you have made 80000 building by mistake you have put in pnl account so you added back the building building ko na aapne add back kar diya in the pnl account expenses disallowed 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 so add back so when you add back a uh, building shall you allow depreciation answer is yes personal expense not allowed donations not allowed income tax is not allowed as expense gst custom duty is allowed as expense and gst and custom duty refund is a business income but income tax is not allowed as expense now expenses disallowed under section 40 tds relate ye sab detail also we are going to do but just when i have this table i want to take it what is inadmissible under section 40 dear student any payment if i make outside india interest salary fees for technical then i have to deduct tds no non resident has to pay tax if income is generated from you are paying interest to nri salary to nri royalty to nri are you generating income for nri answer is yes If if you pay ten thousand, should you deduct TDS and pay to government? Yes. Sorry, I missed and I paid full amount. That full expense is disallowed now. When you deduct TDS and pay to government, that time it will be allowed. Now we so disallowed. In India, if you make payment of interest and all to uh, your uh, pays wherever applicable TDS, and you miss deducting TDS, then how much is disallowed? Thirty percent. in india 30% out of india 100% expenses disallowed unreasonable payment can you pay salary commission to your relative if it is a father's firm can he pay salary to his son yes commission to his brother yes remuneration to wife yes provided they are working but it should be reasonable ma'am what is the definition of reasonable nothing ao will decide If you have paid salary ten thousand per month, AO will say no, no. Eight thousand is only allowed. Two thousand salary is not allowed. Disallowed means add back. You have debited PNL account me salary ten thousand paid to your brother, but government is saying reasonable is eight thousand. Why did you pay two thousand extra? Add back. payment of expenses in cash you cannot make expenses in a single day to a single person above 10000 for transport of you can pay 35000 ab yahan na ye batate the ma'am by mistake i purchased stationery of 12000 in uh, cash so ma'am will up to 10000 to allow karo na galti ho gayi nothing is allowed I'm literally saying these are jokes and stories so that you remember 
that if you make payment of expenses above ten thousand in cash, whole expenses disallowed. No emotional deduction of ten thousand. First thing. Second, ma'am, I took came in the morning and I took five thousand. Then I came in the evening and I took seven thousand. Five and seven are below limit, but in a single day, how much you have taken the payment, dear student? Twelve thousand. Is this allowed? Sub DC ma'am, नहीं पढ़ाते ना थोड़ा chat box activate करो. All of you are attending live can answer. What did I say? Five thousand I paid you in the morning. Seven thousand I paid you. Okay, in the evening. Both are below the limit. Is it allowed? Not allowed. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the amazing response. Hope my speed is fine and you all are following. Your response is good. So in a day also single payment or two three payments put together to single person should not exceed ten thousand. Ma'am, can I pay eight eight thousand to ten of my uh, creditor? आज मैं बस मन कर गया कि सबको पेमेंट कर दो. So I paid all my different different creditors A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Everyone I have paid eight eight thousand. But these are different creditors. Can I pay? Yes. Is it allowed? Yes. Why? Because to each person, how much I am paying? Eight thousand. The total in a day I am paying more than ten thousand. these examples we have worked out in regular class two three problems next is amount transfer to reserve and even provisions are not allowed what is transfer to reserve you know look look here it's like taking the money from this pocket acha acha profit is 50 transfer 5 rupees to this reserve 8 rupees to that reserve taking out money from one pocket and putting it in other pocket is it your expense actually dear student Answer is no, so it is not allowed. Transfer to reserve, investment allowance, dividend equalization, special blah blah, not allowed. Provisions are not allowed because provisions are not actual expense; they are just bookish entries. So provision for taxation, provision for doubtful debt, not allowed. When I say not allowed, and if that expense is at debit, what do you need to do? Add back. No. depreciation as per books add back because we are going to charge it in a different way other expenses to be allowed is uh, clear or hai kuch other expenses disallowed like csr and all i will tell you expenses of income which is taxable under other head super municipal tax is allowed as expense yes where house property but by mistake i paid check from my business check book और मेरे अकाउंटेंट ने लिख दिया म्यूनिसपल टैक्स डेबिट टू बैंक एंड म्यूनिसपल टैक्स इज पुट इन माय पीएनएल अकाउंट मैम दिस म्यूनिसपल टैक्स इज डिडक्टेड इन सेकंड हेड कैन आई डिडक्ट इट हियर आल्सो आंसर इज नो सो एनी एक्सपेंसेस रिलेटेड टू इनकम व्हिच इज रिलेटेड टू अदर हेड्स ऑफ इनकम ऐड बैक ऐड बैक क्लियर पेटेंट एंड कॉपीराइट In excess of patent and copyrights are intangible, so you can't put it in PNL account. Capitalize in the books and charge twenty five percent depreciation. Patent, copyrights, lump sum for technical know how. Preliminary expense in excess of limit section thirty five D. Preliminary expense how much are allowed? Five percent of the cost of the project or five percent of capital employed, whichever is higher. And allowed is also allowed one fifth every year. So remaining four fifth is disallowed. Add back. Income tax is not allowed. Employer's contribution in excess of ten percent. यहाँ पे लिख दो ना pension fund. Pension fund. Ten percent of salary. What is the definition of salary? Salary plus D A. Salary plus D A का Twenty five percent you have put in the pension plan. You are really happy with this employee, na? Isna acha kam karta hai. So he said your salary is hundred. I'll put twenty five rupees in your pension plan. How much is allowed? Only ten rupees. ठीक है? Right. Fines and penalties are never allowed as expense, dear student. Next amount. To be treated as income, do not credit it. You can write the example of discount receipt and take it. Now, amount credited in PNL account, 
but included in other heads. So, nikal do. Dividend income, rental income. Sab remove it. Bed debt recover. I will explain this when I come to bed debt. Income tax refund is not a business income because income tax is not allowed as expense. Income tax refund is not a business income. So, galti se if income tax refund is credited in the PNL account credit side, two rupees kya karo nikal do. Capital gain remove gifts remove GST custom duty refund earlier not allowed GST and custom duty you have debited in books earlier only they have not allowed means disallowed so in the year 2018 when GST you have debited and disallowed that time only it is taxable now when you receive the refund is it taxable again so take back. GST custom duty when debited in the PNL account government said no not allowed that time only disallowed so that time only you have paid the tax now if it is recovered is it your business income no so remove it interest on IT refund is taxable under income from other sources depreciation as per income tax and other expenses you have not debited but which are allowable up deduct kar lo up debit kar lo so now if you debit it will be less oh i think i'm taking very long time half an hour is over and we have just completed the add less concept distribution kaise karna chahiye batana ask doubt no if you have any doubt anyone is having any doubt All right. So now we know the gist of this chapter. Add and less. Now what we are doing is admissible expenses. Okay. Please uh, revise this lecture two, three times. Bar bar so you will get a grip on and your pen will flow. You will get a super uh, speed before the exam. Now I am starting with section 30 to section 37. It is the list of all the expenses which are allowed. And section 40 and subsections is all the expenses which are disallowed. So if they are allowed, debit it in the PNL account. Like if you have a building, then building related expenses like repair, property tax, insurance. If you are using building related to business and if you are the owner, Repair property tax insurance are allowed. In. If you are a tenant, then rent of the building is allowed. Hmm? Plant and machinery se related. All expenses are allowed. Yes. Now, depreciation. Very important. In income tax, we charge depreciation with certain rules and regulations. As for block of asset method, what is the condition? SSE must be owner of the asset. If you are owner of the asset, charge the depreciation as per the rates given in Income Tax Act. SSE must use the asset for business. You purchase three ACs for your home and bill you have put in the form and you are charging depreciation on that AC. Is it right? No. The AC put up at home is a personal effect and it's not taxable. So very important is you should use the asset for business. Put to use is important, not the day when you acquire. You purchased the asset on 30th June and kept it. But then after the Dashira, you have decided to officially launch it and use it. So when you will start charging the depreciation the day it is put to use. Okay. Now put to use me. This seven point is important. It has got a link here. There are certain equipments, no, like fire extinguishers. You go to the mall, and in mall, fire extinguishers are there. Hana? Fire extinguishers are there, no? use nahi hote hai. Kabhi bhi nahi hone bhi So can we say why we should charge man depreciation when it is not used? But it was ready to put, no? So standby equipment, fire extinguisher, spare parts, which may not be used. But if they are ready to put to use, you have to charge depreciation. Okay. Now, next point is 
if the asset is used for less than 180 days 50% of the depreciation matlab till 4th of october your financial year is say 21 and 22 so 1st april se say 4th of october 21 tak if you purchase the asset you are using it for more than 180 days charge full your depreciation ma'am if i purchase the asset on december 21 Then you are using it only for three months, approximate ninety days. Fifty percent of the rate of depreciation you have to charge. So income tax me block of asset method is actually very easy, dear students. It's not saying cut to cut charge depreciation as if studied in accounts machine one, machine two, and all. ठीक है. Only method of depreciation that is recognized under income tax is WDV method. Okay, so in income tax, which method you will charge the depreciation? WD. Straight line is only for the power sector. That too, they have to decide and say initially only. Now, right from the beginning, I said, dear students, you should be the owner of the asset. In higher purchase, if I tell you the goods on higher purchase, I am the legal owner till you pay the last installment. Still, from day one, you can charge depreciation. Who is the owner in higher purchase? Seller. But substance over form. Legally, you are owner. The day you purchase machinery, you started using it in factory, and you are paying the higher purchase EMI over the period. So day one, you should start charging the depreciation. If asset is owned for part of the year, amalgamation, B merger, proportionate depreciation will be charged. I had company A N Co. on 30th of June. AN को मर्ज इनटू BN को, तो AN को विल चार्ज डेप्रीशन ऑन ऑल द असेट्स फॉर हाउ मेनी मंथ्स थ्री मंथ्स अप्रैल मई जून जुलाई ऑनवर्स BN को, नो डेप्रीशन अलाउड ऑन लैंड बट डेप्रीशन इज अलाउड ऑन द बिल्डिंग, चेक दिस पॉइंट्स एंड इफ यू हैव अ डाउट आस्क मी प्लीज, या many of the booster notes I have added to the regular material so I am not sharing booster notes here. You all have attended regular classes, so have you written or not booster notes? And are they helpful? Hmm. Sure. So, any doubt? Rules for charging depreciation? No. Depreciation is not charged asset wise. Asset wise, you will not charge depreciation. You will charge the depreciation block wise. In a block, there will be all the assets. You know, like. Uh, चार पांच पेपर को लेके रंबल करके एक बॉल बना दो सब असेट्स मिले हुए हैं नो प्लांटेड मशीनरी वन टू थ्री फोर दे आर नॉट हैविंग इंडिविजुअल आइडेंटिटी फोर ब्लॉक ऑफ असेट्स आर देयर वन इज बिल्डिंग प्लांट एंड मशीनरी फर्नीचर एंड इंटेंजिबल ओनली फोर टाइप्स ऑफ द असेट ब्लॉक आर देयर एंड डेप्रीशिएशन मैन व्हेन असेट इज सोल्ड फॉर उसका इंडिविजुअल कॉस्ट कैसे पता चलेगा सो इंडिविजुअल कॉस्ट वी डोंट नो Part of the block sold. One of the set three machinery are there. One machinery sold. You are not calculating the profit or loss. Clear? Right. So tangible assets, building, plant and machinery. How many blocks are there? Sorry, building. Shall I write land? Answer is no. On land, never depreciation is charged. So building, plant and machinery number two, building number one, furniture number three, and intangible assets number four. Now, how do you get the actual cost of purchase in the first year? So cost price in the cost price, deduct government grant or subsidy if you have got any. Suppose I have put twenty crore plant and machinery in the backward area. Government gave me fifteen crore, so deduct crore. How much is your out of pocket cost? Five crore. So you will be getting depreciation on five crore. Trial run se agar kuch income ho rahi hai, deduct it. Add interest on loan borrowed for acquiring the asset till the date of commencement of the production. You know while the asset is getting ready, it may take one or two years. It's called capital work in progress. तो असेट को बनने में बहुत टाइम लग गया 
so by the time asset is getting ready if you have taken loan someone to make a plant and machinery and making that plant and machinery will take two and a half years so two and a half years interest you can add it this is what we do in as accounting standard 16 borrowing cost till the asset is ready to put to use once it is put commercial use ke liye asset then still if you are paying interest on loan borrowed for plant and machinery you can debit in your rupee pnl account expenses incurred for acquiring the asset like freight loading technical fees all that gst you have to add to actual cost of asset only if input tax credit not availed if you have taken itc you cannot add that gst part to the cost of the plant and machinery 1 lakh is the cost of machinery gst is say 5000 1 lakh 5000 if you have taken input tax credit of the gst don't add it to the cost and don't depreciate double benefit you cannot take so i hope this is clear samajh mein aaya actual cost kaise lena hai Just some theory. See the format now. You all have solved this as a workbook. Opening WDB at purchase. Dear students, I am giving you many pitfalls because we are not allowed to correct final papers, but I have corrected so many mock test papers. So I am always saying when you write purchases in the exam, no, dear students, write date over here. यहाँ पे ना date लिखो purchase के पास. इससे क्या होगा? You will remember. That if the purchase is in December, how much uh, depreciation you have to take? Fifty percent. Otherwise, full. So opening WDB purchase total sale value and depreciation on the balance. No depreciation in the year of sale, ma'am. But I have sold it on twenty fifth of March twenty two. Pura saal maine aise use kiya. No. In the year of sale, there is no depreciation. And whatever is the value after the sale, on that charge the depreciation, and you get the closing WD. No depreciation in the year. Huh? No depreciation is charged in the year when asset is sold. Don't say, man, charge depreciation till the date of sale and all. In case if WD of the block is nil, but asset is existing, then no depreciation is charged. The block will continue with nil value. This is proved. इन एग्जाम्पल भी लो हाँ तो कभी कभी क्या हो जाता है ए, 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 है नीचे ही मैं बताती एंड इफ द होल ब्लॉक ऑफ असेट इज सोल्ड एंड इफ द प्रॉफिट इट इज कॉल्ड शॉर्ट टर्म कैपिटल गेन लॉस इट इज कॉल्ड मैम व्हाई नॉट लॉन्ग टर्म बिकॉज ऑल द असेट्स आर क्रम्पल्ड एंड टुगेदर वी डोंट नो व्हाट इज द कॉस्ट आई मीन द एज ऑफ ईच असेट नो इन द ब्लॉक टू थ्री मशीनरीज आर देयर फोर लैपटॉप आर देयर Five books are there. This way, of depreciation is there. So you are always going to calculate capital gain and short term capital gain. Hmm? Right. This we have done. Check in. Tell me if it is already solved in your notebook. I would skip then because it is taking time. If I have the solution, I can share. You can check it on the print. What is this? I am telling you. A machinery is there. B added. A and B are one twenty. A B both sold. What is balance nil? Depreciation nil. Closing the blue division. A B both sold for sixty. So sixty is short term capital gain. A B both were one twenty, but they were sold for sixty. Sorry, loss. Yeah, clear to all of you. So, like this, all these examples we have already solved. Suppose we in the regular class, we have to write it very easily. If we have to do it quickly, then we will do it in two minutes. A B asset is there, hundred. C added twenty. A B C is one twenty. A alone is sold. Part of the block is sold. Still, B and C are there for sixty. Charge depreciation ten percent. Six and fifty four. मैम पार्ट ऑफ द असेट इज सोल्ड उसका प्रॉफिट लॉस नहीं कैलकुलेट करें 
if they give you original cost of a just to confuse you ignore don't calculate profit or loss when just part of the asset is sold still we see are there no so go then to the next one a b r 100 c is 20 a b c 120 a alone is sold for 160 if a alone is sold for 160 is there a profit of uh, 40 क्या शॉर्ट टर्म कैपिटल गेन है फोर्टी का सोल्ड फॉर वन सिक्सटी या वॉट इज द ब्लॉक वैल्यू नील नील पे डेप्रीशन नील बट विल द ब्लॉक कंटिन्यू आंसर इज ये ब्लॉक विल कंटिन्यू विद नील वैल्यू क्योंकि बीसी है ना ये आ गया पॉज एंड देन चेक इट आराम से बीसी स्टिल दे नील D added. I hope you are getting. Why am I continuing the block in the second year? Phase three, second year. Why? Because B C block is still there. B and C assets are still there, but the value is nil. Then D added. B C D nil. Up now. What is the balance? Fifty. What is five? Forty five. Again, take this forty five. And now in forty five, they have added E ninety one thirty five. Everything is sold for one fifty, so there is short term capital. Check this, and we will take a quick break of just five minutes, and then we will continue the next. Okay, so once you understand how to charge the depreciation, then rates of depreciation you all know we have the rates and all. So I'm not reading out the rates now for building and all five percent, plant and machinery fifteen percent. Highest rate of depreciation on computer software books and all is forty percent. Here most important changes on goodwill depreciation is not charged from first April twenty twenty. So if you have a block of intangible assets. And if you purchase more intangible asset, okay, balance it. If you have sold intangible asset, निकाल दो. On thirty first March twenty till twenty, so you are allowed from twenty twenty one. Goodwill is not depreciated now. Huh? Goodwill is brand value. So <clears throat> I'm just teaching you the concepts and the gist. If I start discussing why they brought this provision, this will become a regular class or बहुत lengthy जाएगा. So I hope you have seen all the videos. Goodwill, thirty first March. So if you purchase the goodwill, you know, like suppose if you have purchased the goodwill on one four eighty, so eighteen nineteen nineteen twenty. Calculate the depreciation separately, and whatever is the WDV of the goodwill as on thirty first March, remove it, and on remaining block charge twenty five percent depreciation. This is the amendment for goodwill. Clear to all of you, right? Okay, ma'am. But वो block का क्या करें? Suppose you have purchased the goodwill and one four twenty twenty को goodwill which you have removed from the main block, उसकी value है twenty seven. Keep it as it is. When you sell it in thirty, it's like capital gain, short term capital gain or loss you can take. Okay, an absorbed depreciation can be carried forward for eight, uh, not eight, sorry, an indefinite period. And if there is no commission and things and all, then you have to tax depreciation. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah, please. Ah, uh, with regard to the depreciation, do we need to remember the percentages, or uh, the examiner will uh, give in the question paper, no, ma'am? No, you have to remember at least. This is like in the regular class taught also how to remember that. Okay. Yeah. Personal building is five and related to commercial ten. Important ones. I can circle and show you. Yeah. Building normally it is ten percent, furniture ten percent, plant and machinery everywhere it is fifteen, except if plant and machinery is used for transport or and all. I mean say hiring and leasing then it is double. Because our car is less used, so the cab is more. The rest all on energy and pollution and all 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 forty percent. That's it. So like this gives an intangible this twenty five percent. Okay. If you solve these all, almost more than ten problems are there. It will be clear. Going to the next concept in depreciation is additional depreciation. Already normal depreciation is allowed, 
but if yours is a manufacturing concern anything proprietorship partnership anything if it is a manufacturing concern then in the first year when you purchase a new plant and machinery enhanced or additional depreciation is allowed at the rate of 20% only for plant and machinery which is used in factory now dear students you should know plant and machinery ye jo list hai na isme clearly diya hai plant and machinery includes your vehicles your electronics all but they should be used in the factory suppose you are buying a refrigerator and using in uh, using it in the factory for research can you claim additional depreciation yes and now if you buy a refrigerator and you keep it in the guest house which directors come and stay will you allow additional depreciation answer is no one second sorry i'll keep the screen open so that it is clear so additional depreciation is allowed only to manufacturing concern extra over and above the normal depreciation ships and aircrafts ko allowed nahi hai any manufacturing unit and if this asset is used for less than 180 days then additional depreciation ko bhi half kar dena instead of 20% take it as 10% okay right and it should be a new plant and machinery it should not be second hand otherwise it's not allowed suppose i have purchased the asset on 31st december 21 for 100 rupees how much additional depreciation is allowed only 10% why because asset is used for less than 180 days can i allow remaining 10% in the next year answer is yes so balance 50% of the additional depreciation is allowed in the next year if it is used for less than 180 days clear right this is all about additional depreciation power sectors are allowed to go for slm in a limited case but they have to decide टी कॉफी रबर डेवलपमेंट यू कैन जस्ट पुट द मनी दिस इज सी एम एस ए तो निकाल दिया बट एनी सी एम एस स्टूडेंट लिस्टिंग टू दिस रिविशन वीडियो टी कॉफी रबर डेवलपमेंट इफ यू आर डूइंग द बिजनेस इफ यू नो दीज काइंड ऑफ बिजनेस इज आर पार्टली एग्रीकल्चर पार्टली नॉन वी हैव सीन दैट इन द बेसिक चैप्टर सो अप टू फोर्टी परसेंट ऑफ प्रॉफिट यू कैन कीप विद नबार्ड एंड क्लेम द डिडक्शन put the money in nabard bank ek bar profit 100 hai 40 alag rakho i will use it to buy tractors or any activity related to tea coffee rubber development if you remove the money from nabard and you invest in share market in that year it will be taxable as business income site restoration fund this is mining related activity you can keep 20% of your profit 20% of your profit separate with any of the branches of sbi this is all in agreement with government very simple so you can read scientific research i want to explain in my way orally listen scientific research is like super important for um, mcq three mark separate problem already we have worked out more than four problems in our one concept one problem scientific research preliminary concept problem license concept problem depreciation concept problem additional ye jab complete ho jayega na then you are ready to go for the total problem now listen all of you dear students scientific research and development is ongoing activity for any business it's not ma'am scientist se hamara kya lena dena every company every uh, firm is having an r&d department they keep on doing research new product new strategies new brand uh, new service is something innovative yes or no so now any expenses related to scientific research revenue expense fully allowed capital expenditure related to scientific research fully allowed but don't claim depreciation again you have purchased two laptop for 1 lakh rupees for scientific research put 1 lakh rupees in pnl account capital expenditure for scientific research fully allowed don't again claim depreciation on that revenue expense allowed capital expense allowed ma'am building kharide to allowed only land is not allowed and you can't invest in shares and goodwill and securities got it in the name of scientific research now ma'am but we launched our product in 2022 but we have started the research in 2019 so 
is the backdated research expense allowed before you start? See, research goes on for years, and then you become successful and you launch your brand. So, when you start your business before that three years, if you have incurred research expense, it's allowed. Material cost is allowed, labor, revenue, capital is allowed related to research in the last three years. Now, I'm not doing any research expense related to my business, but I am interested in donating to DRDO. Hyderabad may not DRDO. Hai. It's like they do scientific research. So I want to encourage them. I want to donate to a company who is doing scientific research allowed. National laboratories. I want to donate to a college who is doing scientific research and affiliated to any of the national level universities and all allowed. Can I give donations to national laboratory, IITs and all, not for scientific research, but for statistical research allowed. So this is all this. Sir, kya allowed nahi hai? Land cost. Kaise yaad rehega? Notes mein sab likha hai. Ye dekho. All the expenses, revenue are allowed, capital are allowed. In the past three years, all the expenses are allowed other than land. Material, salary, other than perquisites are allowed. So past three years, all the expenditure is allowed. 100% if you give to specified business companies outside national laboratory or allowed. Maximum kitna allowed at your students? 100%. Anyone has studied earlier? Ma'am, pehle to 125, 150, 200% weighted milta tha, nahi milta na? See, these are the problems we have solved and they are repeatedly coming. Maximum problems which are very technical, you feel from ICI study material also have picked up, added some more adjustments to that also and made it. So make sure you all do these problems thoroughly. Okay. This is 35 AC or this is directly to preliminary expense. You know what is preliminary expense? When the company is born before that SIN number, DIN number, memorandum, article, or articles of association, prospectus, so if you incur these expense, they are allowed up to 5% of the project or 5% of the capital employed, whichever is beneficial means whichever is higher. Ma'am, you figure they will exam me, yes, they will give. 5% of the cost of the project for which you are incurring preliminary expense. Or 5% of the capital employees. So what is preliminary expense? Yeah, explain here. So this is allowed, dear students. This is allowed one fifth every year. Hmm? Qualifying amount is allowed over five years, means whatever is allowed. Suppose your capital employed is 50 lakhs. 50 lakhs ka 5%. Kitna aega? 250. So how much preliminary expenses are ma'am, but actual expense is 11 lakh. No. How much will be allowed maximum? 50 lakhs capital employed ka 5%, 250. 250 is also allowed one fifth every year, 50, 50,000 for continuous five years. Done? Okay. Audit and all is necessary and I think if you solve this John Limited problem revise karo ge to ajay. 35 ADR specified businesses, two star and above hotel, warehouses, and multi specialty hospitals, and a big list. What is specialization of 35 ADR? These are the businesses, warehousing, sugar, and um, production of fertilizers in India, and all. Government wants to encourage. So, all the capital expense, all the revenue expense are fully allowed. Capital expense, revenue expense are fully allowed under Section 35D. Ma'am, if we allow capital expense, definitely it's going to show up loss. Initial years, where business income come in. And if you allow capital and revenue, it's going to show loss. Can we carry forward this loss? Yes. For how many years? Indefinite period. But to be set off only in specified business. All this is given in your material. 100% capital revenue expense all are allowed, but you can't allow the cost of land, goodwill and all. Should be a new plant and machinery and 8 years you should use the asset. 
if you sell it within eight years, it will be treated as business income. Okay. And due to third, this point is important. Due to 35D, if there is any loss, it can be carried forth for indefinite period to be set off only in specified business. Are the last two, three sections clear? Hmm? Just I'm giving you, rest you can read. Agricultural extension project, you know, Ansel Kitna Sara growing or dragon fruit, kiwis, and corn are grown like anything around us. So, for all this, government is helping farmers with various projects. If your company is doing that project, 100% providing skill development, you know, you give training to people and then you give them job. So, if you are working for skill development project approved by government, 100% you will get the benefit. VRS full form is voluntary retirement service. If you are retiring before the age of 60, say at 58, you will get lump sum amount 5 lakhs from the company. Company said 5 lakhs, but in 2021, company paid you 4 lakhs. So whatever they pay you, one fifth is allowed every year. 1 lakh paid next year, next year say one fifth allowed. Rega. Are you all with me? Huh? VRS is allowed when it is paid. I have very bold. Whenever VRS is paid, it is allowed. And it is allowed one-fifth every year. Okay? Other deductions. Now, 35 ago. Other deductions, 36 is general deductions related to business which are normally allowed. You know how they frame up these MCQs, the VRS ke le bhi? If you write, ma'am, 5 lakh ka 1 fifth, 1 lakh, that will be an option in MCQ, but it's wrong. Why? 5 lakh is due, but how much is paid? 4 lakh. So how much is allowed? 1 fifth. That is 80,000. Now, other deductions may, can you pay insurance premium, health group insurance for all your employees? Yes. Is that premium allowed as expense for the company? Yes. But other than cash, if you pay in cash, that is not allowed. Bonus and commission, is it allowed as expense? Yes. Interest paid on capital borrowed. For business, if you take loan from banks, unsecured loan from friends, other business companies, sister concern, interest is allowed as expense. Even if you have not paid and it's due, it's allowed. But it should be reasonable. It's just you have taken loan from your sister concern and you are paying 36% interest, then they will disallow. AO will assisting officer will disallow. So interest paid related to business is allowed. Can you contribute? You know, employee related funds with them, provident fund, ESIC, and uh, other funds are there, no superannuation fund, gratuity. So can the employer put it as his expense and contribute? Like dear students, I am paying you 100 salary and I am putting in your PF 12 rupees. Is 12 rupees my expense, dear students? Yes. Is it allowed? Yes. But boldly I have written here approved, approved, approved. Recognize. I am not putting money in approved gratuity fund. I have made my own gratuity fund and I am putting it. It's unapproved, not allowed. Highlighted way I am repeating, whatever you contribute to approved funds, it is allowed. Okay? Right. Now related to bed debt, I want to say bed debt is related to data. So bed debt ke lena mene bada aksa gist boots and not banana or so kuch exercise ki hai. What is bed debt? It's the money from data I am not going to realize. Can I put it in my p &L account? Yes. So bed debt is allowed earlier. Now recovered, is it my business income? Yes, but ma'am, now I'm not doing my that business. Three years back, I was doing chemical business. That time I had bed debt. Now I'm doing leather business. And uh, I recovered bed debt of the chemical business. Is it allowed? Yes, business income to rehega. Bed debt is allowed. I said to department, Ki dekho, mere itne paise rahe. they allowed 10 rupees. After three years, I met someone, somewhere that person, Rahul. Rahul is saying, ma'am, sab mere paas paise nahi se, 10 rupees rakh lo. I said, Rahul, forget it, I have closed that business. 
Rahul is saying, no, no, ma'am, karmic account is going on. Please accept money. So I accept it. Is that 10 rupees my income? Yes. Is it fully taxable? Yes. First one. Bed debt debited? 1000. Allowed? 1000. Recovered? 1000. Taxable? 1000. Bed debt earlier? Disallowed. When I debited in books, department is saying it's fake. Under the table, you have received payment from data. This is not allowed. Nahi chalega. So 1000 is not allowed. Now it is recovered. Okay. 1000 is not allowed. Now it is recovered. Bed debt. When 1000 you have debited, it was not allowed. So that time earlier only it was taxable. No. Now recovered. Is it a business income? No. Not taxable. Aram se karo. I have made a separate video also for this. Fir se dekho. Bed debt disallowed earlier. I told to government, 1000 rupees were at the debt. Government said, no, disallowed. Disallowed means scratch. They increased my income and I had to pay tax in 2018 when bed debt was disallowed. Now it is 22. I recovered that 1000. Should I pay tax again? Answer is no, not taxable. I know I'm taking too many things at a time, dear students. But within 24 hours, if you start preparing for this topic after listening to this lecture, teachers, explanation, logic, jokes will give you a push and you will prepare at a very faster pace. Hmm? Right. If part bed debt allowed earlier, part recovered, then whatever recovered out of that unallowed is already taxable that time, no? Remaining will be taxable. What is unallowed? Bed debt claim minus allowed. Now, for example, ke I debited 1000 in my books. Department said 800 ye allow karenge. Nahi, nahi, 1000 to bahut zyada hai. Who said? Department. So 200 was disallowed that time. You can write here. Sabhi disallow ho gaya, to sabhi taxable ho gaya na. That time disallowed, so that time only it is taxable, no? Now, if 800 is recovered, out of 800, 200 is disallowed. That time only taxable. How much is taxable now? 600. 1000 I debited. 800 they allowed. I received 500. Out of 500, 500 is from the unallowed. So, pehle hi unallowed to already taxable ho gaya hai na? 200. Which is not allowed. The remaining 300 will be taxable. 1000. 800 allowed. Recovered 900. But already 200 was disallowed. I have paid tax. How much will be taxable? 7. Gist of all this is bed debt earlier allowed. Now business income. Earlier only disallowed. Sabhi taxable. Now not. I want response from all of you. Is this clear to all of you or not? These small logics are asked in I problems. How to read the problem is also not. I have already always been saying in my regular videos. Ki business at problem pande mein bahut students ka time chale jata hai. To start from the credit side, then on the debit. Credit side mein jo directly remove karna hai, nikal do. Go to the debit side directly. What is disallowed? Just remove it. And then go to the assessment. Read the problem in such a way that you don't have to read it again. That will save your time. Not clear or clear? You can put the message please in the chat box. Hmm. Keep revising. If you have any doubt, any time you can comment below the video. You can get in touch. Description, my telegram group and mail and all the links are given. So you can always stay in touch with us and clear your doubts. Okay? Now, Family planning expense is allowed only for companies and I don't know why it's favorite is to MCQ bana ke dal de te. So only for companies, family planning related expense if you have done it's allowed. If it is a capital expenditure, one fifth is allowed. If it is a revenue expenditure, fully. Thousand rupees revenue, one fifth, nahi, pura allowed. Hai. 2500 capital, one fifth. 500, 500 allowed for five years. Interest, see, GST is allowed, 
interest on gst is allowed but penalties are not allowed so in the pnl account debit side dear students if you see penalties penalties are never allowed as expense gst and custom duty allowed as expense when refunded it's a business income got it all of you so uh, listen dear students aapko na pnl credit side denge custom duty they'll give custom duty refund 3000 GST refund eight thousand. Is it your business income? Yes. Is it credited in the PNL account? Yes. Do you need to do add or less? No. GST is allowed as expense when you receive refund. Income tax is not allowed as expense. Income tax refund is not it. I'm trying to give you best of the links and gist. And with all the booster notes which I have shared, I'll just make the PDF and circulate so that you can do the revision. Security transaction taxes you paid when you buy shares. So FTT is allowed as business expenses, provided these shares you show it as your stock in trade. You know, share खरीदना बेचना आपका business है. You are doing intraday. It's your business income. Same for commodity transaction tax. It's allowed if commodities are treated as your stock in trade. Hmm. Banks and all they issue ICICI deep discount bonds. Hundred rupees bonds they issue at eighty two, and they say after three years on maturity you will get hundred. So is eighteen rupees discount or expenditure for the bank? Yes. For how many years? Three. So can they amortize it on uh, every year and allow? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Six rupees. Did you get it? You know my examples are always ten rupees, two rupees. I want you to. Focus on the concept. You are allowed to use calculator. Use the same calculator for practice which you use for final exam. This is a very important tip so that you have that practice on the calculator. And I hope every student listening now using M plus M minus. Awesome. So what I am saying is, hundred rupees bond. Uh, the ICICI bank has issued a deep discount bond, eighty two. Eighty rupees is the income divided by three allowed. One uh, six rupees every year. ठीक है? Right. These are all welfare और ये points पूरे repeat हो रहे हैं. उससे related problem है now. Company related some expense are allowed like debentures, bonus issue, discount. They are allowed. But some expenses are not allowed. Like you know companies nowadays are incurring CSR expense, corporate social responsibility expense. So it is not allowed as expense. Why? It's like you have earned fifty crore. Oh, your company is doing huge. For a social service, करलो one percent of your profit according to net worth and all. Uh, corporate social do some training for the youth or hold some painting competition in the school like that. So if you spend for CSR, it is not allowed as expense. And when you pay fees to registrars and all for enhancement of the capital. Whenever your capital is changing, that's related to that ROC fees and all, not allowed as expense. I think this list is very simple. You can read it. If you want me to read it, ठीक है पढ़ लेंगे फिर. Yeah, this is asked so many times. Taxpayer would not be entitled to deduction in respect of expenses incurred by him on advertisement in any souvenir, tract, pamphlet published by political. party so political party bjp blah 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 on one side and next side your company's ad can you allow this advertisement expense no if you genuinely want to support a political party donate them and claim deduction in atg right any tax of employee paid by employer is inadmissible not allowed your own income tax is not allowed you are paying income tax of your employee not allowed Transfer to provisions and reserves not allowed. See the beautiful one-one liner problems allowed, disallowed, juggling. Hmm? TDS I told you, if any payment is made outside India without TDS, hundred percent is disallowed. If any payment made in India without TDS, thirty percent is disallowed. But now after six months, I deducted TDS paid to government. Can I claim that thirty percent in the next year? Yes. 
income tax is not allowed payment to relatives unreasonable hai to not allowed ab relatives ki definition aap pad sakte hain payment of expense of you know these all i am going little fast because in the ad less only i covered dear students for all of you so payment exceeding 10000 above 10000 hai na payment exceeding 10000 से ज्यादा इन कैश यू कैन पे आईदर क्रॉस चेक और निफ्ट और आर टी जी एस और गूगल पे और पेटीएम ऑल दैट इज अलाउड बट नॉट इन कैश ओके राइट या लाइसेंस इज द स्मॉल जिस यू नो वेन यू टेक टेलीकम्युनिकेशन एंड ऑल लाइसेंस दे गिव यू लाइसेंस फॉर फिक्स इयर्स की ओके रिलायंस इंडस्ट्रीज फाइव जी सिक्स जी नेटवर्क दस साल के लिए आपको परमिशन है आप पोल वोल लगाओ और करो so i'm just explaining through these examples if they ask you in mcq this is not removed in the ca syllabus but i'm taking a combined revision for ca and cma so license is there for cma exam for ca exam p copy rubber development site restoration and license is not there license nahi hai uske liye par bahut simple hai do second over jo sikko dekhna hai to we can check and then we'll go for presumptive taxation 10 minutes more and we'll finish with this okay if you feel lot of energy i have put in these videos and i want to reach these conceptual way of learning shortcut shortcut nahi ye bhi shortcut nahi hai just bataya but you know these concept these problems in detail unless you don't learn You will not get through your inter exam, and who can prove you get, dear student? Final mark will get. So concepts, the rules, se padho, or logic, se keep that why open. So it will be clear to all of you. I agree. In the revision video, I am not teaching you ki why this provision and why this this allow. But agar aap aise conceptually padhoge, to aapko bahut help ho jayega. Okay. When you get the license, say for hundred rupees for ten years. Every year you can amortize ten ten rupees. After third year the license is sold for twenty. So hundred hundred rupees for three years. So hundred and thirty. So how much it is? Seventy. License ka value seventy. You sold it for twenty. Fifty rupees is business loss. After three years it is sold for eighty. Hmm. Seventy ka license is sold for eighty. Three years ke baad value is seventy. Sold for eighty. How much is ten rupees? Is what business income? After three years, license is sold for one twenty. Original cost was hundred. Above the original cost, profit is capital gain. And hundred and thirty total profit is one twenty. My license is sold, which was of seventy rupees. So fifty. But in fifty twenty rupees is capital gain above hundred, and thirty rupees is your business. And now, if license is seventy rupees, but suppose I have license for Punjab and Maharashtra, Punjab ka I am selling part license I am selling for twenty five. Still I have forty five rupees license, and over how many years now? Seven six point four three. Clear. So this is all about license. Yeah, forty three B comes in every exam, every ad less main problem. There are few expenses which you keep outstanding in the month of March, saying, "Ma'am, we are following mercantile system." You only started the class saying section one forty five mercantile system. So these expenses are allowed on due basis in the March. But you know you can't. Pull the department expenses to outstanding expenses to outstanding. Kar kar ke reduce the profit now. Baad mein dekhi jayegi. We will pay the outstanding. Government is saying if these expenses are outstanding in March, make sure you pay it by due date of filing the return. Say your due date is thirtieth September of filing the return. Paid by due date, and then it will be allowed. Ma'am, March I made it due, but I paid it in December. Will that expense be allowed? No. But I paid it in December, ma'am. 
Will it be allowed next year? Yes. Now this is emotional side of the local picture. Let me show you. समझ में आया? If we any expense is due in March, make sure you pay it before due date of filing the return. Otherwise, it will be disallowed under Section forty three B. Again, then it will be allowed. When it will be allowed? It will be allowed in year revenue claimant. Okay, right. So deductions in respect of following sum is allowed only on payment basis. Any sum tax duty set and all to government. Any sum payable by way of contribution, you know, PF, EF, etc. PF, so no time limit is there. I come PF. There's an important amendment, but all welfare measures, bonus and commission. March me, but it smartly likes a bonus to outstanding bonus. Are you but pay the outstanding bonus in April, May, June? So it's not allowed. Interest payable to the bank. Employee ko jo leave salary hoti hai na credit. Which you have to pay if they have not worked on the day of holiday, they get paid leave salary. So that salary pay them actually. Some payable to Indian Railway. Important amendment for PF is PF payments are due by fifteenth of the next month. So if you don't pay by fifteenth of the next month, it will be disallowed. Section forty three B is not applicable to PF. So. फेब्रुवरी का पी एफ फिफ्टींथ मार्च की जगह एटीन मार्च को पे किया बट मैम आई हैव पेड बिफोर ड्यू डेट ऑफ फाइलिंग रिटर्न विल इट बी अलाउ नो ओके राइट स्टैम ड्यूटी रिलेटेड सम प्रोविजन आर देर दिस वी विल रिवाइज विद कैपिटल गेन्स चैप्टर कमिंग नाउ टू द ब्रेड एंड बटर ऑफ वी चार्टेड अकाउंटेंट दैट इज सेक्शन फोर्टी फोर ए ए दिस विल बी वेरी क्लियर विद द जिस्ट बूस्टर नोट विच आई हैव पुट हियर You know, you can pause the screen and take this in your notes. That important. Shall we? Here, see. What am I teaching you, dear students? Forty-four A says, "Ma'am, when do I maintain books of accounts? There. Are you an individual and HUS? If your income exceeds two lakh fifty thousand, turnover exceeds twenty-five lakh in any of the three preceding previous year." This financial year को छोड़ के last three years, then you have to maintain books of account. Is the gist clear? The notes में detail दिया है, but I have given you the gist. You are other SSEs, other than individual SSEs, LLP, firm, company. Is your income exceeding one twenty, or is your turnover or gross receipts? If you are a professional, is exceeding ten lakh? In any of the three preceding previous year, maintain books of account. Ma'am, this year my uh, turnover is only eight lakh, but last year it was twelve lakh. Do I need to maintain? Yes. Any of the three years, if it is exceeding ten, and these conditions are also or turnover exceed or income exceed, no, so we have to maintain the books of account. Suppose you are a professional, if your income exceeds one fifty. Turnover, there is no limit. In all the three years, in all the three preceding years, if your income exceeds rupees one lakh fifty thousand, maintain books of accounts. Clear to all of you, right? All right. And once I say, yeah, ma'am, now I am falling in this condition. Look at this example. Check. 1819 में 16 लाख का टर्न हुआ 1920 26 2021 40 एंड से ही द प्रोफेशनल नहीं अदर्स आएगा प्रोफेशनल्स के लिए तो टर्न ओवर का लिमिट ही नहीं है मैंने गलत सुन के अदर्स आएगा यहां पे और इन केस ऑफ इंडिविजुअल इन अदर्स और इंडिविजुअल सो इन केस ऑफ अदर्स इन द लास्ट 3 इयर्स Is your turnover exceeding ten lakh? Yes. Do they have to maintain the books? Yes. Now, in the last three years, if you are individual and HUS, is your turnover <clears throat> exceeding twenty five lakh? Huh? Any one of the year? Any one of the year? Yes. You too have to maintain the books. Now, 
इफ यू आर अ प्रोफेशनल ओके प्रोफेशनल के लिए इनकम का लिमिट तो है टर्न तो ओवर लिमिट इज नॉट गिवन फॉर द प्रोफेशनल If the income exceeds one lakh fifty thousand in all the three years, then this example is not applicable to the profession. So if I say maintain the books, then all these books you have to maintain that you can see the list and you have to maintain the books seven years from the current year or six years from the assessment year. Now, forty-four A B. When do you have to get your books audited by a CA and submit the audit report by thirtieth of September? And then file your return by thirty first of October when your turnover exceeds one crore in your business. If you are a professional, your turnover exceeds fifty lakhs. Or if you are doing non-resident koi business, ya presumptive taxation, and you are arguing with the government, no, no, mere business me to itna profit margin nahi hai. Like if you opt for forty for eighty, government is saying on hundred rupees turnover, show eight percent net profit. Don't maintain the books. Don't get it audited. You think, ma'am, my business me eight percent margin ini hai, three percent hai. Okay, maintain the books, get it audited. If you want to show lower income, where SSC is carrying on these businesses and he wants to show lower income, hmm? then given. So what are the three cases when you have to get your books of accounts audited? Business turnover exceeds one crore. Professional gross receipts exceed fifty lakhs, and clear, right? There's an amendment in this that people who are doing only online business and who get all their turnover in bank, they make all their payments from bank. Government is saying, "Apna don't take burden of tax audit for you till ten crore turnover, no tax audit." No tax audit till ten crore turnover. If your total receipts may say cash receipts are only up to five percent less than or five percent. Total payment less than five percent in cash. Huh? Like for example, Amazon and all hundred percent billing is done online. Payment comes online. So for them, what is the tax audit limit? Ten crore. This is the recent amendment of this year. They can frame and ask question here till 30th September. You have to get the books audited with C and submit the report. And next month, all the working partners and everyone should find the return. If not, up to one lakh fifty thousand then. ये कोई terms में doubt है तो पूछो. Ask. Section 44A maintain the books. 44A B is like bread and butter for us. Get the books audited from C A. All clear? अभी मैंने तो बहुत टेबल बनाया पर आपको बनाना है तो भी बना सकते हैं Government is saying eighty-two rupees is all your trading PNL expense. Eight rupees you show net profit. What is sixty lakhs? Ka eight percent. Sixty lakhs eight percent comes to how much? Six is the four lakh eighty thousand. Show net profit. Pay the tax. Don't maintain books. Don't get it audited. Turnover details you can have from your GST return. Above twenty lakhs GST return. So any how is there no? So from there you can get clear, clear, clear. So what is presumptive taxation? If you are a retailer, you don't want to go in hassles in maintaining the books. If your turnover is up to two crore, you can go for presumptive taxation. Whatever is your turnover matching with your GST turnover, show eight percent net profit. Ma'am, can I show fourteen percent net profit? Yes, you can show higher amount. Ma'am, but in eight percent net profit is depreciation allowed? Is scientific research allowed? Nothing is allowed. All is assumed to be allowed in ninety two. If it is a partnership firm, salary and remuneration to partners is also not allowed. Clear to all of you or not? Okay, right. So that's all. Yeah, here also one change is done from this year. If you are doing business, 
वटेवर इज योर टर्न ओवर थ्रू कार्ड कार्ड फाइटिंग से भी बिजनेस होते हैं ना तो दैट्स योर ऑनलाइन बिजनेस कार्ड फाइटिंग होता है तो मनी कम्स इन योर बैंक अकाउंट ऑन नेक्स्ट डे ऑन दैट जस्ट शो 6% नेट प्रॉफिट एंड ऑन योर कैश बिजनेस 8% सिंपल 44 एडी वन लाइन आंसर 44 एडी टर्न ओवर लिमिट इज 2 करोड़ टैक्स ऑडिट द टर्न ओवर लिमिट इज 1 करोड़ and you know because people are going for 44 ad presumptive taxation they can pay their advance tax in single installment instead of four installment by 15th of march salary interest remuneration paid to partners is not allowed not allowed and once you come out non offering of income for five continuous years you should opt for 44 ad If you come out from 44 AD, you are not allowed to again go for 44 AD till the next five years. ये year खत्म होने के बाद, till the next five years you are not allowed hmm? to go for 44 AD. Clear? These are all examples. 44 AD A presumptive taxation for professionals. Professionals, if your income is up to 50 lakh. You can go fifty lakhs hai agar income, so you can go for presumptive taxation. Chartered accountant ki form hai, and they have their uh, gross receipts thirty lakhs. Thirty lakhs ka fifty percent kitna aata hai? Pandra lakh rupee net profit batao, tax pay karo, no books nothing. So fifty percent of the gross, ma'am. Why fifty percent? Because professionals have higher margin. Income is low, margin is high. Businesses have high turnover and margins are low. Last in the series. Do you all are you all remembering the section? These are more valuable, dear students. These are very good. Huh? What is 44 A A maintain books of account? 44 A B audit. 44 A D presumptive taxation for business. 44 A D A presumptive taxation for professionals. And now here, 44 A E transporter ka business hai. Having up to ten vehicles, not more than ten vehicles. And if you are business of flying, hiring, leasing, then for light goods vehicle, huh? light goods vehicle, you show seven thousand five hundred per month or part of the month income per vehicle. So I have six light goods vehicle, seven thousand five hundred, and I purchase the six six vehicle in July, first July. So per month, how many months? Nine months. Ma'am, I purchased on thirty first January. So two months or three months? Three months. Part of the month. Thirty first Jan ko bhi kharide to January ke liye seven thousand five hundred, February ke liye seven thousand, and March ke liye bhi seven thousand five hundred. Clear? Light goods vehicle. Coming to heavy goods vehicle. Thousand per ton. Per vehicle per month, thousand rupees income you have to show per ton. Suppose you have a vehicle with seventeen tons capacity, thousand per ton, seventeen tons, and you have such two vehicles, and you purchased it on first February. I'm literally solving MCQ के problem. सत्रह ton के दो vehicle हैं मेरे पास. So per ton कितना income बताना है? Heavy goods vehicle thousand. How many vehicles? Two. When did you buy it? First February. So February and March. But if you have up to ten vehicles, more than ten vehicles, you are doing huge. Yeah, and from forty four A, salary and interest is allowed. I made a separate twenty minutes video with the table in case if you wish to revise, you can. Salary and interest paid to the partner is allowed in forty four A. Not allowed in 44 AD and 44 AD A. Is it clear to all of you? Right. What is definitions and all you can read. And non-resident shipping companies, if they come to India, we say just show 7.5 percent profit and buy buy. Huh? So they don't have to wait. They will get tax clearance certificate, and then only ship is allowed to leave the show. एयरक्राफ्ट का बिजनेस है तो फाइव परसेंट बता दो सो दीज आर रेट्स आई थिंक यू रीड इट या समटाइम्स इंस्टेड ऑफ नेट प्रॉफिट डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट 
if they give you receipt and payment can you solve the problem huh i know you've gone little longer but thank you so much for all the patience no problem huh pick up directly the professional income from the receipt side and professional expenses and score marks in exam ma'am apne to net profit pe ad less dikhaye exam mein to na kuch naya hi aa gaya don't do that please followed all of you pick up the income pick up the expense calculate and finish so we have finished with the marathon of this uh, business head i know it is really vast almost 2 hours me 20 minutes less and the next 20 minutes are like assessment of partnership form which is actually very important we'll take a quick break and continue thank you so much for joining watching this video till here and if you really feel i have taken great efforts in making these booster notes and these videos conceptually clear itne sare exam ke papers i correct mock test paper so i remember sir we here allowed here like in depth comparative teaching if i am doing linking up if you are getting help me to reach out through india share this video comment below the video no dear students hamesha bolti hu aap log comment karte nahi hai ek like kar do ek comment kar do aur na isko share kar do char panch friends se help me to reach this conceptual knowledge and having that mission across india and in the other countries also wherever students are writing cacm on these exams right thank you so much hmm? and uh, we'll continue this with assessment of partnership form in the next part right all right so now we are starting with the last topic in the business head separately also very very important and that is assessment of partnership form how you are calculating the tax on partnership form how much maximum interest salary and remuneration you can pay that's what we will discuss here so first important thing is when we are talking about partnership form whatever interest salary remuneration they pay to partners that is taxable in the hands of the partners as business income because there is no employer employee relationship right so interest coming to interest first <clears throat> interest is allowed maximum up to 12% on the capital that to according to the deed if it is not mentioned in deed and if you pay 6% also it is not allowed and interest on capital will be allowed from the date on which it is mentioned in the deed that day onwards for example partnership started from 1st of april 21 but in july the deed is prepared and interest on capital clause you have put so when the interest on capital will be allowed from from 1st of july how much is it allowed maximum 12% irrespective of the rates mention in the deed now some small exercise which we did in our regular class i'll share it in the booster notes here <clears throat> this booster notes i hope clear ye to humne kiya na abhi theek hai agar zarurat bhi hai to end mein we will revise right now partnership assessment of partnership form se related one second these are the problems how much you can pay the remuneration and 44 46 problem on second yeah here i go hmm interest on capital and loan is allowed these are the handwritten booster notes in the regular class and i'm typing all and putting it as a pdf in our concept classes app in the free content you can download all these pdf booster notes interest on capital and loan is allowed if included in the partnership deed paid from the date when it is included in the partnership deed maximum allowed is 12% now look at this example if you have given 10% interest but in deed it is mentioned 10% how much is it allowed 10 ma'am you said 12 12 is the upper limit 
So if you have paid 12 and in the deed it is mentioned, sorry, if you have paid 10%, in deed it is mentioned 10%, how much will be allowed? 10. You have paid 15%, in deed it is mentioned 12%, how much will be allowed? 12%. <clears throat> You have given 15%, but deed is silent. There is no mention of the interest on capital. How much is allowed? Nothing is allowed. Given in, you have 20% given. Deed may it is mentioned, 18%. How much is allowed? Hmm? Though deed may it is mentioned, 18% and you have given 20, some of you may be saying, ah ma'am, 18% to allow karo deed ke sab se. But what is the income tax limit? 12%. You've given 15, but in the partnership deed mentioned is 10%. So 10% will only be allowed, not even 12. I hope these examples are clear. You can pause the video, take it down. 30% you have given and 30% you have mentioned in the deed also. Still, how much will be allowed? 12%. Nothing you have given, this just I've added and nothing mentioned in the deed, then how much is allowed? Nothing, right? So interest in capital is like 36,000. Nice example, this is pay attention. 18% ke se you have given 36,000. How much is allowed? 12%. How much is disallowed? 6%. Now what I'm saying, 12,000 is the excess interest. 12,000 is the excess interest which is disallowed in the hands of the firm. Firm had to pay 12%, that is 24,000. 18% case after 36,000. So 12% is allowed. 6% is disallowed. This is a very important point I am discussing. Pay attention once again. 6% is disallowed in the hands of the firm. Firm is already paying tax. Then, what is the taxable interest in the hands of the partner? Only what is allowed that is 12%. Ma'am, but partner has received 36,000 interest. But already 12,000 interest is disallowed in the hands of the partnership firm. And partnership firm is already paying tax on that. Then how much will it be allowed in the hands of the partner? Yes, how much will it be allowed? It will be allowed or taxable. Kitna hoga partner ke hath mein? 12%. Because 6% excess interest paid is disallowed in the hands of the firm itself. Is this part clear to all of you? Right? Okay. Partnership firm is paying 30% tax plus ESET surcharge all. Any salary remuneration interest on capital which is allowed to partnership firm, it is taxable in the hands of the partners as business income. Right? So excess salary or interest paid above the limit is disallowed in the hands of the firm. Salary you can pay as per that 2 lakh. You pay 3 lakh. So 1 lakh is disallowed in the hands of the firm. Firm is paying tax. So in the hands of partner, how much it will be taxable? Only 2 lakh. And share of profit received by partner is exempt in the hands of the partner. Clear or not? Hmm? No. Remuneration. Remuneration includes salary, bonus, commission, all under section 40B. How much you can pay on book profit? What is book profit, dear students? Net profit and all the add and less which we have discussed in the last two hours. Huh? Net profit and all the add and less which we have discussed in the last two hours. That is disallowed expense, add back, income related to other heads, Nikal do. Now what you get your business income is your book profit. On this book profit up to 3 lakh or on the first 3 lakh, 90% or 1 lakh 50,000 whichever is higher. Suppose your remuneration is 3 lakh, 90% kitna right? 270. How much remuneration you can pay? 2 lakh 70,000. But suppose your profit is just 30,000 or there is a loss. Can you say, sorry, yeah, you are a working partner, you have put so many efforts, but this time we are into loss. We cannot pay you <coughs> salary. Is it correct? No. Loss has to increase the loss, but pay minimum salary. So in case of loss, how much salary you can pay? 1,50,000. Is this clear to all of you? Right? And 
on balance beyond 3 lakh it is 60% so suppose your book profit is 4 lakh on the first 3 lakh 90% on the balance 1 lakh 60% okay right now you have paid remuneration 120 allowed is 2 lakh maximum allowed as per this limit is 2 lakh but you have paid what 20 so finally how much you will deduct in your return 120 you have paid 5 lakh salary but allowed is only 2 lakh so finally you will deduct how much 2 lakh what is allowed usse zyada to nahi kar sakte but allowed se if you have paid less deduct less and when you take book profit add back the remuneration they have already paid so that you get book profit before the remuneration and then calculate the remuneration is this clear to all of you so these are all my running notes see i'm just scrolling up and showing you related to nabard also we have written 33 ad ada tea coffee may keep 40% profit separate huh? this is all for goodwill did i say goodwill is not taxable so suppose in 2018 goodwill was 20 rupees what is after depreciated value 11.25 So from first April twenty onwards, no depreciation on the goodwill. So keep this goodwill ko alag se nikal ke rakh do. Suppose in twenty four twenty five you sell this goodwill eleven point two five, calculate capital gain, and immediately you sell it. So short term capital gain. Hmm? Right. So I'm just going reverse and sharing on my. See, this is the format of intangible assets. These are all the booster notes related to assets which I have discussed. Hmm? Additional depreciation. Nice points. These are all. Okay, let me go to the main book, and if you have any doubts, you can ask here. Yeah, just two minutes. Huh? Please wait, dear students. We will go to the assessment of the part. See, how much interest on capital is allowed if it is authorized by the deed? Period falling after the deed, twelve percent maximum. Salary bonus, how much is allowed? As per the deed, working partner for allowed is up to three lakh, or in case of loss, one lakh fifty thousand. Mark it super important for MCQ. They'll frame MCQ that if there is a loss, or if the partnership firm is having <clears throat> only two thousand profit, how much salary you can give to the partner? One fifty. And this is not per partner. This is total. On the balance, how much? Sixty percent. Okay, right. So this is all. Yeah, I want to say sometimes you know in exam they ask you a question of loss. Instead of net profit, if there is net loss, put it in bracket. But add and less concept will be same. Just don't reverse it. Okay. So here we complete with a super duper two hours revision marathon revision of business head. Anywhere you have any doubt, click the photo, send it to us in the Telegram group. Not personal chat, please, and wait for forty-eight hours. If with your voice not surely and clear, I do it within twenty-four hours. But just say thank you so much. All my blessings and wishes are with you. Always there to support you all, and prepare super well. Make most use of these marathon videos. I have already uploaded marathon videos for accounts and costing. These three subjects are core subjects which I have been teaching since last twenty-one years. When I teach ad less in business end, I remember integrated and non-integrated ad and less, right? So, wishing the best for you and me. Help me reach more students. Thank you so much. Bye bye. God bless you. Hello, all of you. We are doing your capital gain revision class for the financial year 2021, right? That is your year ending uh, 21 March 21 and assessment year 21 22. Capital gain. There are few amendments. We will take care as and how. But let me tell you the first stress. We are going to revise all the concepts, all the exemptions. But the first thing. With lot of weightage, we all should be clear is the definition of the capital asset. 
the age of the capital asset and i will do it at last with the help of the flow chart but tax implications because taxation of capital gain is not easy easy in the sense you should know unutilized basic exemption normal rate special rate surcharge rebate many things right so when you study capital gain make sure at the end of the revision you should be able to answer how to categorize the capital asset age of the capital asset and tax implications okay so here we begin i'm sharing the screen also in between i'll share the flow chart screen also and i will revise all the concept if you have any doubt you can comment uh, here okay right now when i say capital gain had chapter listen all of you please one thing very important is question number 1 is only 15 marks for the ca students 15 marks question number 1 is computation of income there only they are asking inside capital gain if not separate problem for capital gain but if there won't be any exam ki ha is bar to capital gain aaya hi nahi house property sometimes they are skipping set of clubbing sometimes they are skipping but one is your deduction salary business head capital gain these are the four pillars of income tax now coming to cma students eight marks exclusive question for the capital gain and mcq super age section so many things are asked in the mcqs so it is very scoring and capital gain of other asset is on one side capital gain on shares regular only we have taken four classes only for the shares original shares bonus shares right shares when you buy when you sell how you pay the capital gain okay so this is just a base that your mark uh, concept should be clear if you want you can note down few things what we are talking now and uh, let us start now chargeability section is section 45 all the five heads of uh, income they have the chargeability section what is chargeability section not now do you enter capital gain head in your every return usually not you enter capital gain only when you have a capital asset second is you transfer that capital asset holding a capital asset is not problem but if you transfer your jewelry your asset <clears throat> your shares then you enter this clear so in the coming 15 minutes i may go a little slow but this is most important what are capital assets what is transfer and what is the age of the capital asset because age will decide the format in which you have to compute the capital gain if it is the transfer of a short term capital asset short term capital gain without indexation and tax rates are different if asset transferred is long term capital asset then the way i compute with the indexation is different and the capital gain is different right so what are the three things we are going to cover so that even if i miss out remind me another 15 minutes what is a capital asset second is what do you mean by transfer it's not outright transfer there are many things included in transfer and third one is the age of the capital asset right so here i am sharing the screen and we are beginning with the revision check with me one second i'm on this screen okay so definition of a capital asset when you transfer a capital asset you enter this head so what is the definition of capital asset capital asset means any kind of property movable immovable tangible intangible circulating related to business or personal i am having some jewelry as my personal asset if i sell that i have to pay the capital gain so it includes everything except these six item first is stock in trade your stock in trade your opening stock purchase sale closing stock that comes in business head you buy the goods if you are having a jewelry showroom then jewelry is not your capital asset it's your stock in trade right then second is exclude personal effects your furniture at your home and your or uh, see you have refrigerator and oven and electronics at home they are not capital asset right or not but same refrigerator and oven and all if you have it in a hotel in a restaurant 
that's a capital asset they depreciate and when they transfer they charge it as short term capital gain okay so personal effect is excluded from capital asset but in personal effect again jewelry is excluded that means jewelry is included see this is my you know tricky language of law i say this is capital asset excluding personal effect personal effects exclude jewelry that means jewelry is a capital asset gold silver bronze precious diamonds whatever you have right or not hmm? now agricultural land agricultural land that is within the uh, city limits ke bahar you leave 8 kilometers radius and then it is agricultural land on which farming and all so definition is given in agricultural chapter so rural agricultural land if you transfer it's not a capital asset what about urban agricultural land next to my bungalow i am having a land where i do organic farming it's an agricultural land in the heart of the city and if you transfer that capital gain is going to be there it's an open plot so what is excluded personal effects but in that what is excluded ornaments made of silver gold platinum other precious stones okay and not only as it is but even seven into a wearing apparel i don't have gold and diamonds outrightly but i have a jacket in which five crores nahi hai mere paas koi jacket nahi hai but i have a jacket in which suppose five crore diamonds are put up can i say jacket is my wearing apparel it's my clothing huh so in that case personal effects me clothing are excluded but jewelry in whatever form we have so many people they have gods and deities at home made of gold and silver and gods dresses are also made in lakhs of rupees with the gold and all then definitely all that is taxable asset and uh, including that even archaeological collection drawings paintings sculptures work of art these are no, not a personal effect means if you transfer drawing paintings all on this this is very well a capital asset hmm? any antique sculpture whatever agricultural land uh, not being a land situated within the municipal land distance of way all of you know and additional may we have gold bonds issued by central government special bearer bond and gold deposit bonds these are the three bonds issued by the government so when you transfer these bonds okay when you transfer these uh, bonds in that case there won't be any capital gain otherwise bonds is a high five name of debentures and shares and debentures are very well your capital asset okay but excluding the these three bonds so i hope the definition is clear for the capital asset stock in trade ko chhod do personal effects other than jewelry and paintings and on leave it agricultural land in india what about agricultural land outside india taxable and these three kind of the bonds okay now holding period of the asset i call this in routine class also ye sab humne aaram se padha hai age of asset age of asset will decide what is the nature of the capital gain when you transfer so when we are talking about listed securities units of uti zero coupon bonds listed shares units of uti or zero coupon bonds when you hold this for less than 12 months and transfer it's short term capital gain hold for more than 12 months and transfer long term See normally when we do share trading, we see if we have listed securities, shares and all, and almost eleven months and twenty days are over, let us wait for ten more days and then transfer, because taxation of long term capital gain is less than short term capital gain. It will come in. Now for unlisted shares which are not listed on stock exchange and land and building, holding period is less than equal to twenty four months short term. more than 24 months long term third is debt oriented funds unlisted securities other than shares unlisted shares to 2 years mein aa gaya and other capital asset 
holding period less than 36 months short term otherwise long term whenever i use less than greater than accounts income tax costing anywhere ma'am sir equal to kaha aega? if a teacher misses it's your right to ask here equal to is less than exactly you hold the land and building for two years it's short term two years and one day it is long term here land and building is age clear to all of you so when you hold the asset as short term capital asset and transfer short term capital gain indexation will not be there there tax rates and all i will discuss long term capital gain indexation is applicable right okay tax part i don't want to discuss now i will discuss it in the end huh? and that is very very important now let us take out the concept what is a transfer did i skip that because when you transfer holding the capital asset is not a problem when you transfer the capital asset then you have to pay the capital gain tax so transfer includes sale exchange exchange is barter system i am purchasing jewelry from your store and i am giving you my company shares so am I transferring the shares from hmm? some other companies, not my companies, tell what of your issue of shares or jaga. So exchanges, I am purchasing plant and machinery from you and I am giving you my jewelry or my some other capital assets. So barter system. Relinquishment means giving away. I am giving away that after my, um, uh, according to my will, I, after I am not there, my property should go to an orphanage which is next to my house and they can use this property for school and all on. So relinquishment is giving away the asset. Ma'am, but there is no capital gain. Listen all of you, I am just talking what do you mean by a transfer? Huh? If a transfer will be taxable or not, that's the next topic. But when I relinquish the asset and give it outrightly to a temple trust, is it a transfer? Answer is yes. Extinguishment of right therein, superb level of problems are asked. Extinguishment of right means in any property, my right gets extinguished, closed. How does it happen? Natural calamity. For example, there's a flood and all my plant and machinery and my factory is destroyed. Have I transferred my plant and machinery to anyone? Answer is no. But is it extinguished means my right and plant and machinery is over? Yes. But I had taken insurance. Now insurance company gave me 5 lakh rupees as consideration for plant and machinery destroyed. Can I take this as sale consideration? Answer is yes. And the day it got destroyed, the WDB was say 4.5 lakhs. So can I take short term capital gain 0. I hope all of you remember punchline depreciable assets whenever they are sold. Profit is short term capital gain. Loss is short term capital loss. Achha hai, clear hai. So extinguishment of right is I didn't sell my plant and machinery but it got destroyed. So whatever consideration is received by insurance company that is as good as the sale consideration and capital gain may tax hoga. Third one is super duper compulsory acquisition. Can my property be compulsory taken by government for metro work or for road expansion program? Yes. Will they give me consideration? Yes. How do you tax it? We will do with the help of a flowchart. Next is conversion of capital asset into stock in trade. I am opening a jewelry showroom. I am converting my personal jewelry also and putting it in the showroom. Yet it is not sold. But is it transfer of the capital asset into stock in trade? Yes. So for me, as good as I have sold my jewelry to my business. In business, it is purchased and when it is sold in the business, we will pay capital gain also business income. Ye dono ke le, I'll say detailed with the help of a flowchart. But these are all transfer. Maturity or redemption of zero coupon bonds. So many times bonds and all, secondary market mein much demand is not there. But you know, they are like uh, company only either the company will convert your bonds into shares. 
so conversion of the bonds into shares is a transfer but it is exempt but can they redeem your bonds on the due date 6 years are over thank you so much debenture holders take your money and we take the debentures back and cancel that will be taxable in the hands of debenture holder redemption value or maturity received by the debenture holders from the company is taxable possession of immovable property in the part performance of the contract i have transferred the property to you on 15th of march you have also made me part payment i handed over to you the keys also so almost everything is done on 15th march except that property was registered in your name on 10th of april paper work will take time no so we went to registrar's office on 10th of april and then the property was transferred can we tax this transfer before 31st march because 15th march 2021 i transferred the property i handed over the possession you started your store also over there and you paid me the consideration it's just on paper i am the holder of the property till 10th of april so in the part performance also if the property is transferred and at least some consideration is received by check account pay and all we can tax it now only and the last one is beneficial owner of immovable property this many people are not aware this is not a capital gains knowledge this is a practical gk you should ask your family members if you are staying in an apartment and there are four floors each of the flat is owned by you all four brothers then the flats are built up on the land no so one fourth of the land undivided share of the land that is also owned by each flat owner are they enjoying that land also answer is yes clear to all of you right okay just go through this definition of the transfer or any other thing what i have discussed in the last 15 minutes and ask me if you have a doubt anyway hmm? just 2 minutes i'll be back keep keep your doubts ready and go to the transfer also okay is the age of the capital asset clear to all of you what is the definition of the transfer i'll give you all the format everything how you should solve the problems hmm? presentation is also very important okay thank you so much that all clear till now now listen all of you if you read this definition of transfer you will feel so many things are taxable but man we to didn't pay capital gain my father transferred the property to my mother he to didn't pay capital gain because he transferred out of love and affection without any sale consideration agreed that it's a transfer property is transferred by father to mother but there is no sale consideration it's like a gift out of love and affection so it's a transfer but it's an exempt transfer so now can we open up the topic and this is like super duper important for true and false 
यहां से निकल के दे आर आस्किंग स्मॉल ऑब्जेक्टिव ट्रू एंड फॉल्स एंड इन एग्जाम ट्रू एंड फॉल्स राइट ट्रू फॉल्स इफ दे आस्क इफ दे से इन केस इफ दे से राइट विद रीजनिंग डू राइट वन लाइन रीजनिंग आल्सो इफ दे आस्क सो नाउ आई एम डिस्कसिंग द टॉपिक व्हिच इज अ ट्रांसफर बट इट इज एन एग्जाम ट्रांसफर distribution of the capital asset by company to shareholders at the time of liquidation we have worked out problems also for this company is closing and on liquidation they are giving the assets and cash to shareholders or another option is cash assets and all will be sold by them and then they will give the cash to the shareholders hmm? so whatever asset is transferred by the company to the shareholder this transfer is exempt in the hands of company transfer of capital asset at the time of partition of the hcf partial partition is just a word but it is not recognized in law ha huh. full partition of hcf may all the co-partners will get the assets from the hcf that is an exempt transfer distribution of capital asset under a gift not taxable transfer by holding to subsidiary subsidiary to holding not transfer uh, taxable this you will study in detail in final super duper topic abhi sirf knowledge ke liye amalgamating company amalgamated you know many of there are absorptions amalgamations merger and demerger these are the super duper topic of advanced accounting in accounts you may be having a doubt then ma'am what we are talking listen my own company is absorbed in your company all my shareholders have got the share of students company all my assets and liabilities you have taken as it is what about my losses can you carry forward my losses answer is yes so in that case first thing is when i have transferred my assets to you in a scheme of merger of the companies amalgamation or demerger is splitting i have two units one in hyderabad one is chennai chennai unit is taken care by my student and i am saying dear student this chennai unit i am separating from my company you keep all the assets and liabilities of chennai company chennai ke unit ka you take care and uh, for some consideration or just like that whatever it may be i may give it to you and ask you to give shares against that and you form a new company so how this accounting and all is done that's not there but in our syllabus right now am i transferring the asset to other company yes is this transfer taxable answer is no clear then transfer of rupee denominated bonds outside india by one non resident to another to encourage them to invest in india transfer of government securities outside india by one non resident to another redemption of sovereign gold bonds on that no tax is there transfer of urban capital before now today urban agricultural land if you transfer it's taxable transfer of capital asset to government universities and all non taxable conversion of bonds into shares is exempt i told you when the shares are sold you have to pay the capital gain conversion of preference shares into equity shares huh? not taxable transfer of units by unit holders you know mutual fund so many times the unit holders they change the scheme from this scheme they are transferring to that scheme and all not taxable huh? conversion of partnership form a sole proprietorship in a company partnership form is converted into company all the partners have become directors they have decided to run the business for 5 years this 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 that 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 so if they satisfy then this partnership form doesn't have to pay any tax private companies converted into llp whatever assets are transferred exempt and last one so many times asked in exam transfer of paintings artworks sculptures etc to national museum are you getting your painting your antique artwork is your asset 
But if you want to put up now in, in the Sanajan Museum and let the whole world see it, you have transferred it. So as good as you have gifted to the museum. Huh? So transfer, you know, transfer for consideration without consideration, all this is exempt. Transfer of capital asset by a banking company in a scheme of amalgamation or a cooperative society who does banking work in a scheme of amalgamation is all exempt. TK? So these are all the transfers which are exempt from tax. Now, how is capital gain taxable? When I say students, this is house property problem. I remember how you all were eager. Before I start GAD, less municipal taxes and any issue. I, if I say do business income problem, how will you do? Net profit and less. You know the format. Like that, what is the format of the capital gain? I have printed a solve problem also. I will take that up so that the presentation skills are clear. But look at the format. If it is a long term capital asset, indexation will be there. What is indexation? I am telling you. So, sale consideration minus expenses related to transfer, net sale consideration less. Index cost of acquisition less index cost of improvement long term capital gain. Are you getting the format? Now, what is cost of acquisition? What you buy? What is cost of improvement? After purchasing the asset, have you done any addition to that capital expenditure? For example, you purchased a building G plus 1. One more floor you have constructed and when you sold, it was G plus 2. You had a gold chain of 6 cm length. In between, you added some diamond pendant and you made it 9 cm long. So, value addition, cost of improvement. And when you sold the gold chain, it is 9 cm now. So, cost of acquisition, cost of improvement, dono minus over index ke saath, you get long term capital gain. Short term capital gain, expenses, cost of acquisition, no indexation. Here indexation is there, here it is not there. What is indexation? I'll tell you. And when you get capital gain, if you invest in some conditions and some subject to some uh, specifications, you get exemption and your capital gain is reduced. Frankly, at this level, this is your capital gain and you should pay tax, STCG, LTCG. But suppose if I sold one house, I've got huge capital gain. I've sold the house in Hyderabad and I've purchased another house in Bangalore. Can I get an exemption? Answer is yes. All clear to all of you? Right. Chal. Now, before I go to presentation, let us first talk about indexation. Index rates are the first inflation index. In Hindi, we call it Mangai. Huh? In our house, if senior parents are there, they keep on telling us, no, Ray, you people don't value dear students. 100 rupees is nothing for you. 100 rupees, my views to get this much of vegetables, this much of this. I have told you, I think, so many times that when I did my CA journey in 95, 100 rupees, I used to fill up 4 liters of petrol one week. Again, Monday, 100 rupees, 4 liters petrol. Abhi, 8 liter petrol. So, the thing is, whatever capital asset you have purchased, that time, what was the cost? That is not the cost today. So, these CIIs are given by the uh, Act and in exam they will be given. But suggestible for all of you, for financial year 2021, 301 CII, you all should remember. Those who have studied earlier till last year, you may have 280, please scratch it. Don't write in exam 280 because I have studied 280. It is 301 only you have to follow for 2021. Right? Now, 2001 and 2 indexations are starting. 2001 and 2. So, item which was available in 100 in 2001, now it is available in 301. What was available in 100, now it is available in 301. So, if I have purchased a house for 50,000, say, in 2001, what is the cost today? 100 has become 301. 
50,000 is question mark. 50,000 into 301 by 100. Are you getting the logic? Now please don't write like this in exam. Yeah, logic and all you can write. But in between, write the formula which you understand. No need to butify the formula. Can I say COA, cost of asset, multiplied by CII of transfer, 301, cost inflation index of the year of transfer, divided by CII of the period of acquisition. When did I buy the asset? 1 and 2. Tab kitna hai? 100. Clear to all of you, right? Now look at this. Index cost of acquisition is cost of acquisition into CII of the year of transfer divided by CII of the year when asset was first held. Clear? Now, cost of improvement, same. Suppose after purchasing the house, I spent 30,000 more in 2007. Now, if they give 2007, we should take 2007 and 2008. Yeah. Tab index kitna hai? 129. So, 129. One second. Huh? What happened? The pen is not working. Huh? 129 has become... 301. Are you getting? So, 30,000 will be question mark. Kitna. So, that is the formula for cost of improvement. Is this clear to all of you? Cost of acquisition and improvement. Now, very important is some, some concepts. Very carefully you listen. What I am asking, uh, explaining now is asked in exam. Ma'am, if I have purchased in 2001 and 2, I will take CII as given in exam. If I have purchased the house in 1995, then what do I do? 1995, I purchased the house in 10,000. Now, there is no CII for 1995. So, can we bring the cost, stretch it and bring it till 2001 and 2? What is the fair market value of the asset in 2001 and 2? Say 25,000. So, agreed you have purchased it in 95. And that too at 10,000. Now, what is the fair market value of the asset in 2001 and 2? 25,000. So, cost or fair market value, whichever is higher you take. And then start the indexation from 100. Are you getting you have purchased the asset in 1970s or 1980s. You bring it to the fair market value in 2001 and 2 and FMVs are available. There are websites. In uh, actual May, in exam, they will give you FMV ready. So you take cost or FMV, whichever is higher, and start the indexation. Hmm. Are you all following? Is my speed fine with the example? My um, main crux today, my weightage today is on the concepts. Okay, when they twist the problem, you know, capital gain chapter is very easy, but then it's a big basket. At a time, you have to remember many things. Stamp duty and all. So, please do let me know if my speed is fine or am I going fast? You all are following? Yes. You have to take the fair market value as on 1 and 2. And not the 1995 part. No, no. Now, what Listen to the googly. I purchased the asset in 1995. And I did some improvement in 97. So, cost of acquisition, I am taking the fair market value. But they say, any improvement before 2001, ignore. So, if there is any improvement in 97, I will not consider. You know why I will not consider? Many, many times the students, the teachers, they butterfly this. Fair market value you should take. Okay? And cost of improvement before this is ignored. This is like butterfly knowledge. Are 97 may improvement, no? Chod. Ignore, don't take it in the problem. But why? The reason is 
when you are taking the fair market value of the property in 2001 are you taking care of the cost and the improvement both 95 you purchase g plus 1 house for 10000 97 you did improvement for um say 8000 in 2001 the g plus 1 plus one more floor mila ke the fair market value is 25000 so when we are taking fair market value in 2001 we are already thinking care of the cost of acquisition and improvement both that's why we say ignore the improvement clear to all of you so you take cost of acquisition acha one more thing if this is an immovable property then fair market value as on 14 2001 should not exceed the stamp duty value you all know if they give stamp duty value you have to take the stamp duty value and i'll explain detail in section 50 c it will come in this revision class aage theek hai right ma'am what is stamp duty is also given for asset acquired before to i told you no tarun i hope your doubt is clear now if they give acha i i'll explain with one more example no problem on 14 2001 fair market value of the asset is 30000 cost Purchase to you have purchased in nineteen seventy ten thousand and stamp duty value as a for fair market value is the arms length price stamp duty value is what is the value of the thousand registrar twenty five thousand so cost or fair market value whichever is higher so this but fair market value should not exceed stamp duty value. So what will you take the cost? Thirty thousand or twenty five thousand? Twenty five thousand. Shall we take a two minutes pause? The example, acha hai. Liklo please. Fair market value is thirty. Cost in nineteen seventy is ten. So cost or FMV whichever is higher and start the indexation from two thousand one. But if FMV is thirty and SDV is twenty five stamp duty value, then you have you can't take. the fair market value exceeding the stamp duty value i hope your doubt is clear you can answer me in the chat or you note bana ke likh de likh lo sab log okay and waiting with lo okay chal nice now indexation concept is clear to all of you chalo let us apply this in one problem so that with example this is clear d purchased a building okay in 18 for 80000 and he sold the same on 1790 this you will get it for 20 but this is the problem of 19 so i'm not changing it right now to mr d for 120 expenses related to transfer are 10000 net sale consideration is 110 and this holding period is less than 2 years so just reduce the cost of acquisition that is 80000 and one more floor constructed on 1st april then you transfer in 1st july so cost of improvement 20 and you got short term capital if this is long term everything is same except instead of cost you will do index cost and it is super interesting You write the year, then you write कि hundred का two eighty one हो गया है, तो इसका कितना like this you apply. Hmm? Now suppose if the date of the purchase is one seven two thousand twelve date of improvement, मतलब I've tried to make it long term. So sale consideration is same, expenses same, net sale consideration same. Okay, now. Cost of acquisition is eighty thousand in twelve and thirteen. 
12 and 13 index is 200. It is transferred in 1920. Index is 289. So 200 has become 289. 80,000 question mark. 200 by what was available now the value is 289. So 80,000 is question mark. So 80,000 into 289 divided by 200. Okay? Right. Now indexed cost of improvement. Same. 20,000 more. See here you deducted 80 and 20 direct because it was short term. Here for improvement you did in 14, 15. Top 240 tha. Now 289. 240 indexation has become 289. 20,000 kitna. Cross multiply you get this. And now there is long term capital loss. Clear? Hmm? So like this is very important. And all these points are also important. Long term capital gain, taxability and all. Ye to aapko STT ke liye koi deduction nahi milta. This I have many times sending you the flashcards and also preserve those flashcards what I am putting in the WhatsApp group and Telegram room from for update. Usko samal ke rakho. Before the exam when you revise all flashcards important things are clear. This is like a googly in the exam. You have transferred the shares which you are holding as investment and STT is charged, security transaction. Is it deductible? Answer is no. But if you are holding the shares as your stock in trade, purchase of shares, sale of shares, business sale, is STT deductible? Answer is yes under section 36, clause 15 and all STT is deductible, security transaction tax. So this is asked in true and false also. STT is not allowed as a deduction if you hold the shares as investment. STT is allowed as a deduction if you hold the shares as, so ye points be important. Okay. No indexation on bonds, debenture, sale of the shares to non-resident, depreciable asset. Block value, no. Because the whole block may, so many assets are there. We don't know the age of individual assets. So whenever depreciable assets are sold, profit, short-term capital gain loss, short-term capital loss. Clear? Cost of improvement be held, theek hai? Means all the expenditure incurred uh, and all. And you should take the fair market. This is that same example given. Hmm? Yeah. Some of the assets, the cost is nil, like self-generated goodwill. But if I purchase running restaurant from you and if I pay you by check goodwill, this is a purchased goodwill. I'll record in my books. But if it is a self-generated goodwill, the cost is nil. Tenancy rights, lumas, you know, people, they make plant and machinery and then they allow everyone to use the machinery according to the hours, lumas. Bonus shares, the cost is nil. In accounts, you all must have studied. Bonus shares are given as way of capitalization of reserves. So no money is coming in, cost is nil, but the average share per share goes down. Hmm? So like these are the examples. Yeah. Now related to shares. Goodwill and all the TK. Right shares. Hmm? Right shares are existing shareholders, they get a right to purchase. So, outrightly original shares, if you purchase, okay, then um, on that right shares, what you purchase by way of cash, I mean, check only you purchase the right shares. So, when you share, sell original shares and right shares, you have a cost. Sometimes, you are not buying the right shares, you are renouncing it. Renouncing the right means not selling the right shares. Renouncing your right. The company has given you the right that for one share you can take two shares. So for your 500 existing shares, company is offering you 1000 shares. You don't want to buy 1000 shares. 1000 into 2. With help of example, this will be very clear. 1000 into 2, right shares, I am giving it to you. Hai na? So 1000 into 2, 2000 is my income taxable under capital gain as short term capital gain and cost is nil. Is this very clear or not? When you do share trading in capital gain, no? 
you should link it up with investment chapter in accounts fir se ek baar i have got a right to purchase 1000 shares i don't want to buy so i have renounced it to my student you buy 1000 shares so you pay to company also 1000 into 20 per share 2 rupees you pay to me because through me you got confirm allotment of shares so 2 rupees per share what i have received is my income short term capital gain cost is nil is this clear hmm? actually this is the running material no so we have here uh, the cost the concept and the examples and on here see if bonus shares are issued after 14 2001 cost is nil if bonus shares are issued before 14 2001 fair market value you have to take as the cost now holding period hmm 1000 shares you are purchasing at 10 10000 bonus shares you are getting 1500 cost of bonus shares is nil now same cost 10000 is for 1000 and bonus shares okay 500 so 1500 so per share the cost has come down now cost of the right is actual cost whatever right shares you acquire when rights are renounced for you actual amount what you paid to buy the shares to company plus amount what you paid to me that will be the cost for you and amount received on the right shares is taxable as short term capital gain and in bold i have written the cost is Nil. Okay, right. Now expenses on purchase is this value less? What is the treatment of this? Question is not clear, dear. You send it very clear. Hmm? Expenses related to the purchase. You are asking what you will do. You will add on. Like if you are buying shares, brokerage, and all, you will add. If you are buying property, the stamp duty, the commission. At the time of purchase, you add it. and then only indexation you will do theek hai these expenses which we are deducting from sales they are expenses related to sale but 10 years back when i purchased the house for 1 lakh if i have paid stamp duty 10000 110 if i have paid advertisement 5000 150 all the expenditure incurred till the capital asset is you know comes in your hand all that you have to add on i hope i have answered Okay, take a pause and tell me: Are you clear related to shares, original shares, holding period less than equal to one year, short term, otherwise long term? This is fine. Right shares, if you buy and sell, it's like rupee. If you renounce the right share, it's a capital gain and the cost is nil. Bonus shares, the cost is nil anyways. Hmm? See, these are nice problems. If you can recollect, मतलब when you revise the concept, you can should revise this also. okay conversion of debentures into shares is not a transfer yeah cost of debentures will be the cost of the shares okay debentures are converted into shares so what is the cost of shares cost of debentures period of holding and indexation will start from the purchase of debentures debentures you purchased on 1st april 2008 Converted on first April ten, sold on thirty first March twenty one. So your holding period of shares and your cost and everything will be from two thousand eight because shares have come against the debentures. When debentures are converted into shares, no capital gain. When shares are sold, capital gain is there. Holding period, indexation, everything will start from the original share. okay right chalo now we will take up some special cases where capital gain is uh, three aspects are left here it's a huge topic ha huh? it's like uh, frankly bahut energy chahiye ye padhane ke liye but isko ek sath hi karna hai to so, 2 minutes we know and what we will continue after this is um special cases mein capital gain kaise charge hoga then on the exemptions we will do and then the capital gain ka tax rates even advance money if you receive and forfeit it and tell you yes
you can comment below the video also if you have any doubt any time while you're watching it right or not clear yeah chalo let us shares related concept we have finished and we are following fifo method yeah i'm showing you some very nice uh, interesting flow chart check whether you are following or not and you can ask me your doubts Okay, can you see some nice colorful flow charts? These are some special incomes, how they are checked, uh, I want to explain. Look at the flow chart. I'm very sorry. Two minutes here, I'll come. Okay, did you like this colorful uh, flow chart? This is a very super concept for compensation under the compulsory position. Now listen all of you. Indexation starts from the time when you hold the capital asset, right? And I, I want to repeat, indexation starts from the time you hold the capital asset. And indexation ends when you transfer the capital asset. Follow or not? But exception to the rule is, I transferred in compulsory acquisition, but government has not paid me the money. So can we postpone the taxation? Yes. Superb. Exceptional. Building is purchased. Okay. Building is purchased on 1-7-2012 for 5 lakh. On 1416, compulsory acquire. That means indexation will be allowed only till 16. Compulsory acquired. It will be allowed till 16. Now, I can't pay the tax on capital gain in 16 because yet government has acquired my property. They have started making flyover over there, but they have not paid me the money. Price was decided in January 18. Can I pay the capital gain now? No, please. Paise to aane do. 
let the same consideration come to me then i will do okay now on 39 2020 i received compensation 8 lakhs now shall i pay capital gain tax yes so i am paying capital gain tax in 2020 but indexation will be only till 16 17 year of transfer agreed or not indexation is for the holding period so you hold it the asset only till 16 17 then why you not paying the tax in 16 and 17 i will get money sale consideration comes so i will pay the capital gain no so i will pay the capital gain but indexation only till 16 17 now they gave me 8 lakhs i was not satisfied i fought with the government and i got enhanced compensation next year 21 22 Will it be taxable in the next year? Yes. What will be the cost now? Nil. Why nil? Because everything when you have taxed it here, you have taken cost of uh, acquisition, cost of improvement. So here, where is the cost is nil? Got it? In enhanced compensation, cost is nil. And listen, I got this one lakh rupees late, dear government. I want interest on that. so interest on enhanced compensation i received is it taxable income from other sources how much deduction is allowed 50% all clear to all of you right so this is how we charge the the tax in case of compulsory acquisition acha listen one question for all of you it's not mentioned suppose it so happens that when i fight 3421 no The eight lakh compensation is reduced to six lakh. Government said no, no. By mistake, we paid you extra. You refund two lakh, and compensation was reduced. Now, do I have to refund two lakh? Answer is yes. But I have paid tax on eight lakhs. Can I revise my return? Answer is yes. And suppose this by this time enhanced compensation comes, the owner of the property, the taxpayer is deceased. this will be taxable in the hands of the legal heirs this detail is a final topic successor and legal heirs and all but you should know that taxation to lagega because in 16 i didn't pay the capital gain i said i will pay it in when i get the compensation so i have to pay in 2021 but indexation will be for 16 17 any doubt now conversion of capital asset into stock in trade okay so i purchased the land in 2002 in 2016 i started real estate business buying and selling of land so this land also i have put so frankly transfer of the asset into stock in trade is it a capital transfer yes capital gain lagega yes when 2016. Okay. 2016 में कैपिटल गेन लगेगा आपको राइट नाउ इन टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन वेन आई कन्वर्टेड कैपिटल असेट आई शुड पे टैक्स आई शुड लिटरली पे टैक्स बट हाउ डू आई पे टैक्स अभी तक दैट लैंड इज नॉट सोल्ड Now that land was sold in 2020. So in 2020, shall I pay long-term capital gain? Yes. But here indexation will only be till 2019 and 16. है ना लिखा है? Long-term capital gain you tax at 1920 में, but indexation only till 2016 year of transfer. But why I'm paying capital gain in 20, 1920? Because I got the money there. Okay. and now listen fair market as on the date of transfer of this capital asset to my business is 8 lakhs so this is the sale consideration of the capital asset the day i transferred capital asset to my business that is the date us din jo fair market value hai that's the sale consideration so 8 and 5 and index and all But eight is the purchase value for capital asset. Eight is the sale consideration for business. 
Eight is the purchase. As you buy the land from others and sell, you have purchased from yourself at the fair market value eight, and you sold it in nine. One lakh rupees is your business income. I want to repeat: business has purchased the land in eight from the person and sold it in nine. Your business income and eight lakhs fair market value is the same consideration. Clear or not? Right? Ask your doubts for this table. What am I trying to teach? You all are very smart. You have done more than forty problems of the capital games. I am trying to teach you the googlies. If you by mistake take indexation of twenty twenty because that asset is transferred in twenty gone. That's what is the beauty of the revision. Otherwise, thirteen classes of capital gain we are not doing. So I can't go in depth to make you understand all things, but revise in that way. Ki all the googlies are covered. All clear? Shall I close this file? Okay. And over to our next part now. One second, huh? Anyone is having any doubt or clear? Hmm? Let me read the steps for it. See, one concept, one problem like that we have done. If you have any doubt, you can check these problem. Conversion of capital asset in stock in trade. It's a transfer. Sale consideration is the fair market value as on the date of conversion. When you convert the capital asset into stock in trade, fair market value is the sale consideration. Even though the tax liabilities differ, indexation will be only till the year of transfer. Fair market value and date of conversion less acquisition. This is capital gain, and remaining is business income. Then, yeah, this are asked many times in the objective question. Exception to the rule that you adopt some other value as your sale consideration. Conversion of capital asset into stock in trade. What is the sale consideration? Fair market value as on the date of conversion. Partner is bringing personal asset to the firm. Book value, which is recorded in the firm, that is the sale consideration for the partner. Partner brought his personal car for the business use. So whatever is the book value recorded in the firm, that will be the sale consideration. Okay? Then dissolution of the firm. Transfer of the asset by the firm to partner is this taxable in the hands of the firm? Yes. Fair market value on the date of distribution. ठीक है? Right. Now, conversion of debentures and all we have done. So, ESOP and all. ESOP I want to say just two lines. Super important for income from salary, income from capital gain. Um. 180 rupees share companies are issuing to public because you are their dear employee. They are giving you at 120 ESOP. In that case, 180 share you are getting in 120. In that case, um, 60 rupees is taxable in your hands as profit in lieu of salary. And now because 120 you have already paid on 60 you have already paid. So when you sell the shares, you are allowed to take the cost as 180 and not 120. ठीक है? Right. Okay. Buyback of shares. Buyback of shares of listed and unlisted company shares. Buyback means company is taking back the shares. That's exempt in the hands of shareholders, and company is paying on that 23.296 percent tax. Okay. 20% tax, 12% surcharge, and 4% ESS mila ke. Once again, buyback of shares is actually taxable for shareholder, but for listed, unlisted, domestic company shares, company is paying tax, hence buyback is exempt in the hands of shareholders. Okay. Yeah, this is nice. So many times we transfer the property, you know, individual and HUF for redevelopment. Okay, so individual and HUF are transferring the property, yes, for redevelopment. And uh, 
then the property's construction is over you know tower is built up okay so if yes then capital gain tax liability would arise after the certificate of completion is given by competent authority that okay i have given my property for you to construct flats and now the construction is over so whatever out of 10 flats four you are giving to me against the land i gave six you are keeping because you constructed so the stamp duty value of the four flats plus the cash what you give me this consideration will be taxable follow when i will pay the capital gain when the flat ka construction is over and the other person has given me four flats but if i transfer the property outright to you and you make tower or you do mall or jo banana hai banao then this will be taxable in the hands when i give the property to the developer simply i sold the my old property and land to you hmm? this this is a concept just detail problems are not there for you theek hai chalo let us take up now this concept of uh, section 50c it says if stamp duty value is greater okay actual consideration is greater than stamp duty value take actual consideration a valuation officer ke paas jaate hain and valuation officer's value is more than stamp duty value then take stamp duty if valuation officer's value is less than stamp duty take valuation officer clear kab karenge ye sab when you are transferring the property hmm? so stamp duty value if it is actual consideration is greater take but if actual consideration is less stamp duty value is more you know you are trying to sell the property at undercutting rate so government is saying kuch bhi karo 60 lakhs aap de rahe hai jabki property ki value 80 lakhs hai it will be taxable at 80 lakhs but you go to valuation officer he says 90 lakhs no then take the stamp duty but if valuation officer says 75 lakhs less than the stamp duty then valuation officer valuation officer is greater than stamp duty than this okay we have worked out problems also for this so reference to valuation officer yeah advance money forfeited is a super nice concept they say suppose i have transferred the property to you you have paid token money to me on 14 2014 ke baad then whatever advance money i forfeited because afterward the transaction didn't happen you said vastu is not good and all i said okay whatever advance you have given i'll forfeit because of you i lose other customers also after 14 2014 if you forfeit advance money received income from other source it's taxable before 14 if advance money is received and forfeited whenever i sell the property i will reduce the advance money from the cost then i will do the indexation with both the options we have worked out the problems in the regular class you can check now last two topics are uh, remaining one is exemptions and another is tax implications two minutes i am here only pucho koi doubt abhi tak anywhere related to shares special cases kahin pe koi doubt all clear or not hmm are you writing some running notes then it's good chalo now what are exemption once you get long term and short term capital gain then if you invest into some specific things with specific conditions you get exemptions okay like section 654 individual and huf they have sold residential house against that they are purchasing residential house one year backward two year forward or constructing three years forward from which date from the date of the transfer then that much capital gain is exempt you know if i read all this it will take two hours to explain only this table i'll give you one example your capital gain is 50 
after doing all index and all, but you have invested in the new house 30. How much you will get exemption 30? Suppose you purchase new house for 65. So your capital gain or your investment, whichever is lower is deductible. So exemption will be capital gain or investment, whichever is lower, here 30. Capital gain 50, you have invested 65, whichever is lower 50. In short, exemption cannot exceed the capital gain, like deductions cannot exceed the gross total income. Ma'am, but I have put 150 in PPF, but array your income is 70, so 70 that ke deduction milega, correct or not? Sometimes it's not ghusna nahi overall padna hai, so you will enjoy more. So I hope you are getting, and ma'am, I have sold the house, but I am not able to purchase another house of my choice because of the lockdown. You can put your money in capital gain account scheme, promise you will withdraw only for the purpose of purchase and construction. Then also you get exemption. So what is section 54? Sell house, buy house. What is 54B? Agricultural urban land you have sold, which you have used for two years for agricultural purpose. And against this, what you have purchased? Agricultural land. Urban or rural. Now, 54D. Land and building which is compulsorily acquired for use for industrial purpose. I gave you example like in Hyderabad, we have an area called Katedan, very nearby to Zoo Park. So, they lot of disturbance because of the plastic fumes and all. So, that whole land and building is taken over by government and they have been provided another land and building in the outskirts of the city. So, land and building is transferred. And what is purchased? Again, land and building for factory purpose, exempted. Okay? Now, 54 EC and double E make it your best friend. You sell land, building, and against that you purchase bonds. Here, time limit is only six months. Within six months from the date of the transfer, you have to purchase government bonds, NHAI, REC and railway. Three kind of bonds are there. Six months forward. Maximum bonds you can purchase in this year and next year is only 50 lakhs. Within six months from the day, CGI scheme is not applicable because bonds you don't need two, three years time. 54 double E is you transfer any long term capital asset here, so it is land building here, you transfer anything and you purchase specified mutual fund K units. Same, 6 months. Now, 54F is for individual and HUF. You sell any other long term capital asset other than house and you purchase a house. So, if you purchase a house, you can avail 54 also you can avail 54 efforts. You sell jewelry, you sell open plot, but with that money you purchase a house and promise that you and your family members don't have any house when you are buying that house and against the mortgage of the house you will not take any loan and all for three years and all conditions. Yes? So if you ask me weightage wise, sub parna hai? But most important in exam are these three, which are repeatedly asked. 54, 54EC, 54F. Acha 54G and GA, they go, they go hand in hand. You transfer land, building, plant and machinery, bus, not furniture. And you are shifting from urban to rural area. Means you are selling land, building, machinery here and you are buying it in the urban, uh, rural area. Or you are selling land and building and you are shifting inside SEZ you are going. Now you have decided to export and all. So in that case you get exemption. Okay. So these are the list of exemptions. CGA scheme is applicable for all. Yes, yes, yes. Except for buying bonds and mutual funds. Take care. Right. Yeah. Here in section 54 there is a very important amendment. It says if your capital gain is above 2 crore against one residential house, you can purchase one year backward, two years forward, 
or construct three years forward one residential house. But if the capital gain is less than two crore, you can buy one or two house. छोटे छोटे लोगों के लिए. I hope you are getting. Your capital gain is greater than two crore. So sell one house, buy one house. If your creditor capital gain is less than equal to two crore, then you sell this house. You can buy one house or you can buy two house. Sometimes it's happening. You know, the father is selling one house and he is buying two small houses for two sons. And if the capital gain is less than two crores, he can take this. And this is optional. You can sell one house, buy one house, or you can sell one house, buy two house. If your capital gain is less than two crores, clear to all of you? Yeah. 54F I I will repeat 54F वैसे भी सबसे अलग है क्लास में भी I have told you you are in 54F you are selling any capital asset and you are buying residential house and you or your family members should not hold any residential house when you are buying that and one more condition is you should not take any loan on that residential house which you are buying. And capital gain is also in the form of cross multiplication. Sale consideration में capital gain इतना है, तो what you have invested in the new house, how much capital gain will be exact? That's not a formula. We have worked it out logically in the class, but I'll tell you. One minute. Yeah. See, everywhere capital gain exemption is restricted to lower of new asset or capital gain, whichever is lower. But only in case of 54F, investment in new house divided by sale consideration into capital gain, whichever is lower. I hope I have made it clear. You can check the material. You can keep noting points in detail. ये देखना है. And there are other small conceptual videos also on the age of the asset, on the tax implication. You can check all that also in detail. ठीक है? Exemptions are over. Super problems we have done on huh? level of the problems. ये सब किए हैं. I want to go to the taxation part and I will take up some small topics also. Reverse mortgage and all what I have left. But पहले capital gain करते हैं. This table. This table में से surely something they will ask because this having so many things information. Just check it two minutes. And I hope 54F is clear. What doubts you are putting in chat? I am clearing. Still have more doubts. Write it. 15 minutes more I will take. And then also those who have doubts they can wait. I want you to give best in your Monday's exam. Correct. Literally, I'm not. Frankly speaking, to all of you, I'm never tired in my regular class. But taking revision classes like this, na, it's na, bol na hai, aur itni saari cheeze yaad rakhna hai ek saal, so it is exhausting. But is it worth it or not? You all are following like this. Revision classes are there for salary, business, and all. I think one revision class we all should keep exclusively for deductions. So now weightage and deductions, TDS. TDS eight marks, four questions, two two marks each. Super scoring. Yeah. Any doubts or shall I start the tax part for this? Hmm. Sure. Now, how do you pay tax on the capital gain? 
So we have divided into four parts. First, we will take up short term capital gain on shares, which are listed section 111A. Okay. These are specifically taxable at 15%. Uh, short term capital gain on shares. Uh, so you are holding the shares for less than one year and selling. 15%. Rebate is available. Basic exemption is available. Deductions are not available. ATC to ATU deductions, you don't get in short term capital gain on shares. And I hope you remember surcharge rate are 10%, 15%, 25 and 37. So 25 and 37% surcharge rates are not applicable for these two, short term capital gain and long term. So listen, if you have short term capital gain on shares, 8 crores also, surcharge rate will be 15%. Additional surcharge rates are not applicable. This table I have made on my own in, as a booster note. I hope this is very clear. Any addition, suggestions to it, most welcome. Around se karo, thoda time leke karo. Tax implications are very important for capital gain. Yeah. Long term capital gain on shares under section 112A. Deductions are not allowed. Basic exemption, yes. Rate of tax, long term capital gain. Above up to 1 lakh, long term capital gain is exempt. Above that, it is taxable at 10%. Now, listen, all of you. A confusion, I hope I have cleared many times, but still if you have a uh, confusion, if you have only long-term capital gain on shares, you get basic exemption 250, 3 lakh, 5 lakh according to age, additional 1 lakh deduction, and then on the remaining long-term capital gain, you pay the tax, that is 10%. Clear? These are listed shares, and you have been holding it for more than one year. And additional rate of surcharge are not applicable. Shall Come to this side now. Short term capital gain on others, jewelry, property, building, plot. You know, you hold it for less than two years and you have sold. So deductions are available ATC to ATU. Uh, yes. Why? Because short term capital gain is taxable at slab rate. Other than shares, short term capital gain is taxable at slab rates. So, rebate is available, yes. Additional rate of surcharge are applicable, basic exemption is applicable. I have yet not discussed this, I will come to this, this is an exception. I hope you are getting physic one. Short term capital gain, other than shares, it is taxable at slab rates. That is why ATC to ATU deduction, rebate, basic exemption, all available. Long term capital gain, other than shares, property, building, jewelry, hold it for more than two years and sell. In that case, deductions are not available. Okay? Why? Because flat rate. Slab rate at all available. Taxes 20%. Basic exemption, rebate, additional surcharge. Yes. Don't try to butterfly this. The more you apply and practice, no, you will remember it. Okay? Now, exception to the rule is rebate under section 87A. It's available for any income less than 5 lakh to a resident individual up to 12,500. Subco available hai, except long term capital gain on shares under section 112A for which not available. Rebate under section 87A is not available. TK, clear to all of you. Right. Any more doubts? Achha, abhi isko left to right bhi padte hai. Deductions are not available from capital gain chapter except short term capital gain on uh, other than shares because it's taxable at slab rates. 15%, 10%, 20%. Rebate is available everywhere except long term capital gain on shares. 
additional rate of taxes are not applicable uh, surcharge rates are not i hope you remember on income tax on tax surcharge tax plus surcharge is ess okay right so with this 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 problem was very nice this one is very nice for practicing of the tax rates if you have still confusion of tax implication within 24 hours of listening to this class if you revise this problem it will be clear theek hai na right now reverse mortgage uh, shall i say orally i have missed it reverse mortgage is the senior citizen under a scheme of government have transferred the property and against that consideration they are getting in the form of installment whatever consideration they are getting it is exempt property will be taken over after they are deceased and transfer of capital asset by the senior citizen to bank against the reverse mortgage scheme that is also exempt what you get consideration that is also exempt in the reverse mortgage scheme okay and uh, one more in the exception 1037 because 1037 sir related a question bhi aaye hain exam mein one second na 1037 is when you urban agricultural land is taken over so you will say ma'am it's routine taxable urban agricultural land taxable no yeah here but when individuals are transferring urban agricultural land which is used for agricultural purpose to government for specific purpose and consideration is paid by central government rbi it's exempt like in hyderabad shamshabad airport there were small farmers who have transferred their property farming land and on that airport is built up and the consideration is given by the central government then transfer of urban agricultural land otherwise it's taxable it's exempt in 54b if you sell urban agricultural land you buy another agricultural land but if you transfer to government consideration decided by rbi it is exempt okay anything else if you feel i have missed out related to shares and all ya kahin koi doubt hai poocho original shares you know you categorize and do it yeah section 54 amendment make sure and i'm going to make all the flash cards and put in our whatsapp and telegram group once you start the revision so that it is all clear to all of you okay right capital gain mcqs ke liye slum sale oh we missed out slum sale no we should do it section 50b i have transferred outrightly my furniture my projector my camera my whole assets to you so for me whatever value you give slum mean lump sum you have given 50 lakh so 50 lakh is taxable all together for me instead of taxing it uh, 50 lakh to hoga but then how much in 50 lakhs is the value for land for building for furniture i need to call a certified valuer so can i pay capital gain together answer is yes this scheme is optional slum sale 50 lakhs i have got consideration again so many assets and liabilities which i have given so net worth of the assets and liabilities given to you is the cost and this sale consideration difference is taxable indexation nahi hoga any asset which i have transferred is long term whole slum sale will be taxable as long term and when you calculate the net worth of the asset the depreciable asset you have to take at wdv as per income tax and other assets you will take at book value ignoring revaluation so net worth is nothing but net assets all the assets at the book value less all the liabilities net worth net worth ko sale consideration mein deduct karo and pay the capital gain slum sale slum sale problems have been asked twice hmm so make sure you do it for a table add kiya tha for the shares last november exam study materials problem was asked for shares yeah this hmm equity shares in a company on which stt is paid both at the time of purchase and sale or equity oriented units acquired before 1st february 2018 So if you have purchased listed shares and all before one four eighteen first February eighteen, then cost will be 
first fair market value and full sale consideration the day of transfer on that sale consideration of fair market value whichever is lower this or cost whichever is higher we have to work out problem for this are there in study material and november 20 exam also they have asked this rest on the sets cost and all acha one more thing so many times you get the property by way of gift will and inheritance then cost for me is nil can i take cost of previous owner yes indexation also i can take from the previous owner provided i have got the capital asset in the by way of will gift and inheritance if i have got the capital asset from the previous owner in any other way in that case we will take the cost of the previous owner but indexation will start from the day i hold the property and indexation is always till the date of transfer even if it is compulsory acquisition and you are paying capital gain after 4 years i have tried to give you the best best gist of the capital gain chapter and still you are stuck up in any concept in any problem of the study material anywhere just click the photo and send me i will do the audio clearing you can send it in the group also your doubt may be the doubt for many other students also so make sure you make the best of this revision class put your 100% and you all should write the class test मैम उतना अच्छा प्रिपेयर नहीं हुआ है तो इट्स लाइक सैटरडे यू हैव एग्जाम मंडे इवनिंग और सम टाइम वट एवर टाइम सर हैज सेट फॉर यू बट आप श्योर करो कि एटलीस्ट वट एवर यू विल प्रिपेयर नॉर्मली यू विल प्रिपेयर मोर मोर पुश के साथ थिंकिंग एग्जाम इज देर दैट्स द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ राइटिंग द टेस्ट सीरीज और द क्लास टेस्ट बिकॉज वट एवर विल बी द नॉर्मल प्लेशर यू विल बिकम लिटिल लीनियंट हेयर एंड देर उससे तो यू विल स्टडी नहीं नहीं आई हैव टू राइट द एग्जाम and you'll get a perfect mirror that okay this is my confidence i know capital gain i got it correct okay this is where i missed as soon as sir is sending the suggested answer key make sure you compare it with your answer to check the steps where you went from yes right or not you can give all the reasons to everyone and all your reasons are genuine but you can't fool yourself so work very best 100% and what help you need let me know right all the best to all of you for the exam prepare well thank you so much for patiently listening i think more than one and a half hour is over for this revision this class is little heavy for me for you so now if you are uh, noted down the points tax implications and all which was your doubt make sure you check the last problem it will be clear anyone else is having any doubt pucho no okay thank you so much nan bye bye all of you hello dear students today's class is for the revision of set off and carry forward of losses the concept and uh, clubbing and with that we will practice mcqs and some other objective questions to end the faults and fill in the blanks which are asked okay many of the students think set off carry forward no okay even if i leave please don't it's true that like business head and capital gain these are the topics salary which come in every exam for 8 marks 10 marks but when they are asking set off carry forward problems it is 8 to 10 marks individual problem for set of carry forward and logically if you understand it's like my math is not good but it's like board marks kuch padta hai na plus minus is minus and minus minus the rules are there so like that in set of carry forward we have rules if rules are clear to you you will be able to attend the question for the mcqs the questions which is given in the exam okay like you know this now because almost like uh, we have completed the whole portion shall i tell you one secret 95 video lectures are over of 2 hours each so one i don't know 95 multiply by 2 karo so 100 hours ke upar learning we have done together patiently with you all every chapter one concept one problem 
So like just now, if I talk with you on deductions, next week we are going to do the revision for deductions. When I say deductions, there are hardly chances of getting exclusive question for deduction. Question number 115 marks, compute the income. So heads of income and deductions and MCQ. But this set of carry forward specific question is asked. And the beauty of this chapter is there are many items which we will not give effect. So either you write a note below the solving the problem that this much loss is carry forward. Or if you feel ma'am later on I may miss out, you can write it there itself. The losses to be carried forward. Okay. And for CMA this time the exam is online. So separately we will discuss one day how to approach these uh, online exams. Okay. So there is a different way. Shuru karte hain, set off and carry forward. I am first not going to share the word document and read and do all that. No? Not required, I feel. I will explain the concept. And if you feel my speed is more or anywhere it's not clear, let me know. The name of this topic is set off and carry forward of losses. So we have five heads of income. So income from salary, there is no question of loss. Do you agree? Because in gross salary, maximum deduction, standard deduction allowed is only 50,000, right? And uh, entertainment allowance or whatever you can say. Thoda sa hi wo bhi government employees ko, profession tax, all. So there's no question of loss in the head salary, okay? Now for all the other heads, first section in this chapter is section 70. It says intra head within the same head can you adjust answer is yes if i have house property one two three h1 and h2 have loss h3 have profit can i set off answer is yes i can business loss can we set off yes even if the business is not continued yes no way they gave the condition that loss is related to a business which you have closed in 2017 no problem so first Within the head, what you try to set off is intra-head adjustment. Once you are not able to do, you go out of the house. Right or not? Small problems, we talk with our siblings, brothers, sisters, parents. Nahi hua to bahar jayenge, mentors, teachers, counselors. So hum bhi ghar ke bahar. We are going out of our head to set off the losses with other heads. If that is also not possible, can we carry forward this year's loss to be set off in next year's income as and in how we get income? Yes. So what are the carry forward rules? How many years I should carry forward? Is filing the return mandatory and all? So only these are the three important sections in set off and carry forward. So first I am starting now with revision of intra-head adjustment. You know, within the same head, can you set off? Answer is yes. Salary, there's no question of loss. Income from house property, you can set off. Income from business head may ajo. B1 is profit, business one, B2 is loss. Set off allowed. It's allowed to be set off. Okay. Right. Now, in business head, we have speculative loss. Now, the definition of speculative loss is given actually in business head first page. It says a kind of business where you don't take delivery of the items. Huh? I have purchased 1800 bags of sugar from you at 1000 rupees per bag, 100 kgs or whatever, just. And uh, within two days, I'm selling to you at 1200, 200 profit they do, loss at all. So speculative transactions are where you are not taking the delivery. Exception to the rules are that um, derivatives is a market in share market we have a transactions called as derivative market commodity market where we can do transactions futures and options you know bundle may you can buy dollars and all that is an exception to the rule i have written here and i have written it in the brochure One second, one second. 
या इफ इट इज फेस टू फेस क्लास किसी का भी फोन बजे ना तो वी से फोन बजते रहना चाहिए एंड गो एंड गेट दिसे गो एंड गेट डिक्लेअर्स फॉर ऑल okay okay some queries you are asking dear students if it is related to set of fine otherwise last time will wait and clear all the other queries like you are asking ki online exam pura mcq hoga no no dear this set of 8 marks problem you will have to work on the sheets and the step answers you have to write i'll work out and show and take a separate class for how to attempt the online exam okay so let's not get diverted and uh, i hope the volume and all is clear chalo so speculate uh, in business you have business loss and you have speculative loss speculative loss can be set up only in speculative profit speculative loss cannot be set up in business profit super clear business loss can be set up in business income Business loss can be set off in speculative income, but speculative loss cannot be set off in business income. I hope you are getting. Can I say speculative loss is very introvert, rigid. It's not coming out of his house. Speculative loss, speculative profit set off. Ma'am, if there is no speculative profit, what do we do? Carry forward the speculative loss next year, four years. Chalne do. I hope you are getting what I am saying. Hmm? Business loss कहीं भी set off होगा. House property no thumb rule. Intra head it's allowed to be set off. And salary there is no question of loss. Now come to capital gain. We call it very high fund to head. Really, this is not in a way of joke or whatever you say, but you will remember it very nicely. And this technique is workable for this chapter. Huh? so this long term capital this capital gain chapter is you know we call it luxurious chapter they stay in a bungalow but uh, their duplex bungalow but they don't come out that's why i put it in this block now in this bungalow two brothers are same what is their name short term capital loss and long term capital loss or gain so dekho long term capital loss can be set off only in long term capital gain long term capital loss cannot be set off in short term capital gain hmm? see we have done all this in regular class i have given you time to write these notes also i am doing revision so i hope you are not feeling is buttified you are understanding logically long term capital loss you know it's for like 8 years you can carry forward so they are saying long term capital loss you put it in long term capital gain long term capital loss you cannot set off in short term capital gain long term you can say is a big brother he stays in duplex house also at first floor and he is not ready to come down also that much rigid who long term capital loss short term capital loss fine short term capital loss can be set off in short term capital gain short term capital loss can be set off in long term capital take your time capital gain mein two lot kind of losses are there short term capital loss anyway short term long term dono mein set off hota hai so short term younger brother staying down and he goes up and down no problem elder brother staying upstairs what is his name long term capital loss long term capital gain mein hi set off hoga it's not coming out of the house and both of these are saying in their bungalow they are not ready to come out means if we have loss under capital gain and intra head within the head we are not able to set off can we come outside and set off with other head answer is no capital gain is a luxurious head within the head do limited adjustment if not stay there next year next year pade raho ghar mein acha one nice question they are not ready to come out of the house their bungalow can we go to their bungalow and have tea and coffee and come can we go and say them hi and hello yes that means if i have business income and if i have short term capital loss can i set off 
loss means we put it in bracket. Can I take out? Answer is yes. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Really, really. Ulta draw kiya man. Business mein loss hai. Or short term capital gain hai. So can you set off the business loss in the short term capital gain? Yes. We are going to their house. They, the, that loss will not be set off here. Reverse is not possible. Clear to all of you or not? And the <clears throat> last one is income from other sources. In income from other sources, we have business of horse races. Then horse races loss can be set off in income from horse races. I want to repeat. Horse races ka jo loss hai, it is set off in income from horse races only. That's why I have put it. Whenever I'm putting in the bracket, hmm, right? If you're again watching this as a video, pause this, okay? And make notes if you have missed this class or take it from anyone. Income from owning and maintaining horse races may have a loss. Hai. If there is loss, it will be set off in the horse races only. Okay? Yeah. Now, okay. In income from other sources, we have casual income. You know what is casual income? Lottery, prize, games, winning from KVC. In that, four fundas are there. And the funda says, in casual income, no deduction. APC to ATU, no deduction. No basic exemption. I am a housewife. I have won a lottery of 4 lakh. Can I say to government, give me 2 lakh 50 thousand basic exemption? No. No expense allowed. I have won 1 lakh rupees in the KBC. But I, I uh, traveled from here to Mumbai to and fro, staying in hotel. Lottery ka ticket ka expense is also not allowed. And no set off. So remember this four thumb rules for the casual income, which is taxable and income from other sources. No basic exemption, no deduction, no expense allowed and no set off. Clear? Clear to all of you? Right. So this is all. And one more thing, dividend income is taxable now in income from other sources. And only for companies, deduction is allowed for interest up to 20% of dividend receipt, only for companies. Okay? Right. So dividend, uh, divid, sorry, sorry, oh, dividend ka deduction ATM mein only for companies. Hai. ATM, they have added the deduction. Here, whatever dividend you receive from this year, it is taxable because 115 O corporate dividend tax CDT DDT has gone. So interest is allowed as expense 20% of dividend receipt. To invest in your company shares, I have taken loan from others and I have paid them interest. Whatever may be the actual interest, 20% is allowed. Okay. And loss from gambling and all, it's not allowed to be uh, carried forward. Huh? You have to write a note. Okay, business side, I missed one thing which is actually very much asked in exam in MCQ. So, no, okay. In business, we have studied section 35 AD, specified business of cold chain, two star and above hotel, 100 beds and all, multi speciality hospital, housing, and all that. Now, this is FB means. Uh, this uh, specified business may, if there is a loss, that can be set, uh, set off only in specified income. Specified business loss can be set off only in specified business income. Uh, business income may be in different cities. For example, I have opened a new hotel, two star and above in Tirupati. And there's a loss because in 35 AD, capital and revenue, all the expenses are allowed. But I already have a two-star and above hotel uh, near Taj Mahal. That is like from seven years. So can I set off this loss and this profit? Answer is yes. But 35 AD loss, the speciality is it can be carried forward for indefinite period. You know, routine class is good. I explain a little bit and I give you time to write. 
this revision classes are streaming because continuously i am speaking so i finished intra within the same head adjustment section 70 i have finished ask your doubts or if it is clear put me a message all clear you know sometimes you do thorough revision of the chapter sometimes just spare 15 minutes and brush up you know hi hello bolte rehna hai otherwise income tax uh, you may forget that's one of the things because it's not debit credit and basic funders salary no question of loss house property intra head it's allowed B uh, business head intra head it's allowed but speculative loss speculative income business loss speculative income ya yeah, business income dono mein se koko ka 35d only in 35d long term capital loss only in long term capital gain short term capital loss short term capital gain long term capital gain sahi bhi lag jayega and casual income mein these four fundas are there okay now here we talk about friendship is friendship day no no to bhi yaad rakhna hai aapko फ्रेंडशिप की बात होती है तो वन एंड थ्री आर नॉट फ्रेंड्स दे आर गिविंग सुपर क्वेश्चन यू नो आई टेल यू बिजनेस में दे विल गिव लॉस एंड सैलरी इनकम एंड स्टूडेंट माइनस करते हैं और ग्रॉस टोटल इनकम एंड देन दे कैलकुलेट द टैक्स एवरीथिंग गोज रॉन्ग सैलरी इनकम फाइव लैख बिजनेस लॉस वन लैख सेट ऑफ नहीं होगा व्हाई वन एंड थ्री आर नॉट फ्रेंड्स See, I have written here. One and three are not friends. Business loss can be set off in house property. Business loss can be set off in capital gain. Business loss can be set off in income from other sources, but not salary. Clear to all of you? Chalo. Next thumb rule. Now we are going. Next one we are doing. Inter head. Okay, we try to do the juggling and do the set off within the same head. If not possible, can we go hi and hello? Can we say to our neighboring heads? Answer is yes. House property loss can be set off with other heads up to two lakh. If you have running notes, के लिए you have opened a notebook, pen है हाथ में लिखो. ये fill in the blanks, MCQs में हर बार आता है this question. House property loss is three lakh fifty thousand. But if you are not able to set off within that income, how much you can uh, set off outside? I just want to give you an example. See, suppose house property is three point five lakhs. How much you can set off in outside two lakh? So one point five. What you will do? Straight carry forward without outside set. Thumb rule is intra head, then inter head, then carry forward. Good. But this intra head house property loss with other heads you can set off only up to two lakh. So now, so now, lag raha hai two lakh rupees. Yes, in case of self occupied, the interest allowed is two lakh. Hmm? Right, chalo. So see, I have I oh I gave an example also. Like two lakh thirty thousand is the loss. Two lakh you can bring outside to set off in the four heads, and thirty thousand you need to carry forward. Okay, business loss cannot be set off in salary. One and three are not friends. You know, if you write like this one day before exam, it will be clear. Don't write like this in exam. Deepthi ma'am na aise sikhaya one and three are not friends. Yad rakhna hai unko apply karna hai problem solve karte wakt. Okay, you need to apply this. Capital gain loss. Can be set off only in capital gain. Intra head की बात ही नहीं है. Neither short term nor long term capital loss is not ready to come out of there. Now leave there. Business loss, house property loss, income from other sources can be set off in capital gain. They are not ready to come out. We can go and live in their living room, say hi, hello, and come. Income from horse races, casual income, no losses, no set off, and all. Okay. so here we complete and presentation is important at least you write one note like this what losses you are only set off is over carry forward i am teaching yeah 
monica what is your doubt dear 2 lakh is the maximum house property loss you can set off in interhead interhead kitna aage set off karo i'll i'll clear your doubt house 1 there is a loss of 4 lakh house 2 there is an income of 7 lakh can i set off full 4 lakh answer is yes how much income i will show 3 lakh so within the head intra head there is no limit dear 2 lakh rupees the only loss you can set off that is intra head with other heads that's why i said here the ka gaya wo example ye hai na here the loss is 230 2 lakh you can set off and 30000 carry for i hope i have cleared your doubts like this related doubts are there make sure you clear it you know what happens otherwise you are not listening to what next time saying your mind is stuck up there aise nahi karna so ask i am taking a pause here kuch aur doubt hai ya clear hai all clear at least if you are asking a doubt tell me whether it is cleared or not these are all the problems no chalo theek hai abhi mujhe iski zarurat nahi hai one second na i will share the same screen with all of you and then we go to the answer look at this this are material word document for this chapter so now we have finished this intra head ho gaya we have finished inter head what i explained to you in the form of diagram all that is given here theek hai chalo now carry forward see if you are not able to set off the losses with outside can we carry forward that loss to the next year can we carry forward that loss to next year yes few losses for eight years few for four years few for indefinite chalo let us see loss from house property you can uh, set off in house property only acha next year you can't go and roam in your neighboring colony next year when you are carry forwarding house property loss house property mein set off karna business loss business income but you know same property and same business should be running in the next year not necessary am i making it very clear so house property loss you can carry forward for 8 years and set off in house property business loss 8 years business may unabsorbed depreciation indefinite period speculative loss 4 years speculative income may short term capital loss short term capital loss you can carry forward for 8 years short term long term dono mein set off karna long term capital loss you can set off only in long term capital loss owning and maintaining horse races 4 years ek speculative 4 years hai ek loss from owning maintaining 4 years see makeup ka zamana hai 3d 5d makeup karo you all have these notes with you know spiral material so put different color ticks here put a star mark here so that last moment when you do the revision one day before exam it should be clear yes loss from speculative business uh, that is for 4 years or uh, owning and maintaining horse races 4 years unabsorbed depreciation indefinite period and loss from specified business also indefinite period but one thing is there unabsorbed depreciation indefinite period and next year also we call unabsorbed depreciation as like brahmas next year also uh, you can carry forward for indefinite period and next year also it will roam around in any of the heads kahin bhi set off hoga except income from salary why because unabsorbed depreciation is the part of business loss and business loss and salary are not same so don't fall into this water slide please ye bade wala water slide hai isme girna nahi मैम आपने तो बोले अनएब्सॉर्ब डिप्रीसिएशन कैन बी सेट ऑफ एनी वेयर नॉट इन सैलरी ओके राइट ऑल टाइप ऑफ लॉसेस कैन बी कैरी फॉरवर्ड फॉर एट इयर्स एक्सेप्ट हॉर्स रेसेस एंड स्पेकुलेटिव लॉस फोर इयर्स ओनली इन केस ऑफ ओनिंग एंड मेंटेनिंग हॉर्स रेसेस बिजनेस मस्ट बी कंटिन्यूड इफ यू हैव अ बिजनेस ऑफ हॉर्स रेसेस एंड इफ देयर इज अ लॉस रनिंग योर may not be for whole year but you should have 2 3 months also the business to be continued so as to set up rest nowhere it is required 
you know i am setting out house property 1 ka last year ka loss now in house property 2 and house property 1 to i have sold last year only still allowed in any loss except house property um loss and loss on account of unabsorbed investment and all return must be furnished again you mark this as mcq ke liye khas house property loss even if you filed a return late belated return 139 3 or 5 revised return and belated return we have no 139 1 139 5 so even if you file belated return for house property you can set off the loss but other losses you need to set off only if you file your return on time so make sure if you have capital gain loss house property loss business as as a losses hai so make sure that you file your return on time filing of return is mandatory and all and you know sequence we can say are unabsorbed depreciation to kabhi bhi set off karenge pehle dusra karo which is going to so current year depreciation you have to set off first you can say current year depreciation to an um, indefinite period hai last year ka loss this is the seventh year if i don't set off it will last no no current year's losses scientific research family planning ye pehle set off karo brought forward loss then brought forward depreciation and all okay right okay now you know in case of this is asked as a theory question also amalgamation hmm? x company is amalgamated or merged with y company and x company has loss this business loss or any loss business losses or uh, of x company can be uh, allowed to be carry forward by y company provided they fulfill condition c 5 years tak report machine continue karna and business continue karna and all if all the above conditions of set of loss of depreciation shall be deemed to be income okay one minute but this loss ye kahin diya nahi hai this is allowed for fresh 8 years ha huh? note it down if you want note it down if they satisfy these conditions then amalgamated company jo x limited a closing company their loss business loss can be carry forward for fresh 8 years by y and unabsorbed depreciation for unlimited period okay chalo next now closely held company super private company are allowed to carry forward their losses if 51% of the voting car part held by the shares carrying not less than 50% on the last day of the year in which loss occurred super you have a loss in 16 and 17 and you want to set it off in 20 and 21 are you allowed yes but at least 51% of shareholders who were there in 16 and 17's last day when you have shown that loss should be same if they are same you are allowed to set off the loss these 51% and all is also asked in fill in the blank above restrictions do not apply if the change in voting power is due to death to so, kuch nahi kar sakte gift by a shareholder to his relative you know sometimes father is retiring and he transfers the shares of private company by way of gift to his son so father ki jagah son ne le li to assume that 51% is same am i going fast or my speed is fine for revision hmm set of carry forward is uh, very nice topic or acche problems humne kiye the isme yes so that's all for the revision of this we will practice the mcqs or uh, shall we revise the clubbing also fir mila ke mcqs karenge jitna time hai what do you suggest we should go as you wish shall we finish the revision of the clubbing also hmm? small topic no clubbing of income like club sandwich aane do aane do sab ki income aane do one second i'll have to close the file
now we are starting the revision of the topic called clubbing of income listen all of you dear students i'm not teaching you this topic i'm doing revision so with emphasis i will go for the points where usually students do this mistake and this is a very simple topic two pages ka hai so i'm just revising it orally then i'll share the word screen also and then we will go for the mcqs practice listen now what is happening in clubbing of income See, first you are getting income from five heads. In the five heads, if there is any loss, plus minus, how do I do? That is set up. Clubbing is others' income. Is it clubbed or merged in my hands? Answer is yes. Then in what cases? So clubbing is basically section sixty four. There are around six cases wherein others' income is clubbed in my hands. So clubbing of income. One very basic question asked repeatedly is: Will the income clubbed of others, my spouse, my children, my um, any daughter-in-law, who be clubbing होता है? I am asking you some question. You need to answer this. Shall we add it in my income from other sources, or shall we add it headwise? क्या पता? बोलो. Say. Yes. Put it in the chat. And if you are seeing in mobile, not get able to type. No, it takes time. So unmute कर के बोलो no. अच्छे कोई answer. Very good, very good. Your answer is correct. But let us wait for more answers. And can you all please keep your chat open for everyone, not to me. Keep it open for everyone, as if this is a live class going. And how do you answer? Yes. Very good. सबको exemption मिलने वाला है अच्छा पढ़े हैं आप सब ने Yes. So whenever the income is club, it has to be club head wise. For example, I am not transferring the property to my sister Monica. I am just saying to my tenant, give the rent to my sister. No, she is only using the property, and out of that she will pay the college fees and all. Genuinely, I am not enjoying the rental. Still, that rent and income will be taxable in my hands because I am the owner. So, will this income be clubbed? If income is received by Monica, my younger sister, will this be clubbed in my hands? And other source answer is no. Headwise, clubbing is headwise. And you know these are asked in exam, but they are not clear in your theory. So, you write the non-running notes that clubbing is always done headwise. If your house property income is clubbed in my hands, yes. Suppose my spouse is receiving the salary from somewhere where I am a partner, and he is not qualified to do that work, but still he is receiving the salary and commissions just because he is my spouse. So it's like fake entry, no? So this kind of income will be clubbed in the hand. Spouse income will be clubbed where business head. Yes, minor's income. कहाँ से आ रहा है? If minor को some gift is given by Dada Ji and minor has made FD. If these interest is coming to minor, minor's income is clubbed in the hands of the parent. This is like highlights. I'm recently, to be very frank, recently I'm learning Instagram. उसमें मुझे कुछ ऐसे दिखा highlights ऐसे. So मैंने I've not yet started chapter revision. These are like highlights, pop-ups which come in every exam. कहीं ना कहीं, minor's income is clubbed in the hands of the parent. Who is having higher income? But while clubbing in the income of the parent who is having higher income in the very first year, done. Next year it will be clubbed in the same way. Next year my husband's income is more. So will my son's income clubbed in my husband's income? No, no. First year it was clubbed in my hands. It will continue. 
and in case of the parent who live apart by way of divorce to fir income kiske hath mein club hogi the parent who is maintaining the <coughs> minor child okay generally minor marriages are not allowed legally but if we have minor married daughter she is married daughter minor will the income be clubbed or not ha huh, some of you are saying ma'am we thought it's revision plus you didn't say it's artel plus the answer do ha huh. quick answer some of you giving all of you should answer i'll repeat my question for everyone minor married daughter's income will it be clubbed in the hands of the parents what is the answer yes 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 some of you are writing s s s chalega then super very correct married minor daughter's income is also club and uh, how many minors income shall i club three four children or in one hands or can we divide no no you cannot divide all minors income is clubbed in hands of the parent who is having highest income burden the income tax most of the act is lop sided department ke favor mein and for every minor child we get an exemption this comes in match the pair can someone say the uh, section minors income up to a limit is exempt under this section fill in the blank very good up to 1500 for minor child you get exemption and uh, are you all comfortable the way i am teaching i have not shared the screen kyunki screen pe likha hai to wo fir padhna lagta hai you you will not try to answer this i am trying to build up confidence in you all samajh mein aa raha hai orally ha huh? focus focus in the class so it will be clear so minors income is clubbed in the hands of parent for every minor child up to 1500 deduction is allowed You can say, ma'am, minus income eight hundred. Now, deduction fifteen hundred. Show a loss. No, please. It's an exemption. Exemption can never exceed income. Capital gain, I have five lakh. You have sold one house and purchased another house for eight lakhs. How much exemption you will take? Fifty four. Only five. Yes. So this is maximum up to fifteen hundred per child. Only up to two children. No, no. Whatever may be the number of the children. okay now one exception two exception sorry to the rule that minors income is clubbed in the hands of the parent two exceptions are there one is minor is having skill uh, income from skill talent and some vocational hobby painting and all those skills so minors income will not be clubbed in the hands of the parents if minor is getting income from some skill the small children they come in indian idol and dance programs and all whatever income they get their parents will find their self return as guardian not clubbing second is in case the minor is handicapped because when a minor is handicapped he is getting deduction in atu lump sum that's why minors income is not clubbed so clubbing of minor is clear clubbing of spouse is clear and now transfer to wife and to daughter in law directly or indirectly that is also club chalo iske liye we will share the screen i hope this revision was helpful to all of you ek hmm more than 45 minutes we are in front of the screen let the screen be like this इसके बाद वील डू इंटरेस्टिंग एम सी क्यूज एंड ट्रू एंड फॉल्स फिल इन लाइन सेक्शन कौन सा है माइनर का आई फॉर्गॉट टू यू डेंट रिमाइंड एग्जाम में आता है मार्च के पेज में वट इज द सेक्शन फॉर द माइनर टेन थर्टी टू हियर इट इज येस एंड माइनर इंक्लूड्स द स्टेप चाइल्ड एंड अडॉप्टेड चाइल्ड चलो रीड दिस एंड इफ यू ऑल्सो वॉन्ट टू टेक अ ब्रेक टेक अ वेरी क्विक ब्रेक ऑफ दिस एग्जैक्टली Two minutes go off screen and come back, and we are continuing for another forty minutes for MCQ.
we are back i hope all of you are also back what is the doubt pehle doubt clear karte hain minor clubbing ka read kiya some of you are not interested mcqs and all practice in fact some of the mcqs are really super chalo One minute, yeah. What is the doubt, ma'am? Adopted child income also clubbed in the hands of the parents. Yes, yes, yes. When we say clubbing of minor child, minor child includes adopted child and step child. So adopted child's income is also clubbed in the hands of the parents. Hmm? Yeah, ten thirty two is the section for the minor child. Or no doubt. So can I skip reading this? ये minor का पूरा हो गया. It should be clubbed in hands of the parents. And if they are divorced, income of minor will be clubbed in hands of parents who maintain it. अच्छा, one googly here while solving the problem. Listen, listen carefully. We say minor's income is clubbed in the hands of the parent who is having higher income. But within the parent also clubbing is there, no? My spouse income may be clubbed in my hands. So first, within husband and wife, they are called as spouse in income tax. Do all the clubbing. Husband and wife के हाथ में whatever is the clubbing you do, and after clubbing their mutual income, put a line across in the exam. Do the total, and then whichever's income is higher, in that all the minor's income you club head one. Am I clear? What I am saying? Husband and wife's own income plus clubbed income. This put together, whichever is higher income will be clubbed. ठीक है? Right. चलो. I'm doing it since the beginning. So if you don't transfer the asset without transfer of asset, if you transfer the income, that's taxable in your hands. If it is a revocable transfer, revocable means I'm saying I'm going to Canada and you keep my share. And whatever income you get, dividend and uh, interest, debenture interest, you enjoy. When I come back, no, give me back. So revocable transfer means I have not transferred hundred percent. I have kept some. Um, what do you say? I have kept some interest in that. In that case, such income will be clubbed in the hands of transferer. Okay. And suppose if it is irrevocable during the lifetime. Clubbing will not be done so long as beneficiary is alive. So lifetime clubbing नहीं होगा. तो फिर किसके हाथ में taxable होगा? Transferee till the lifetime. And afterwards, it will be taxable in the hands of the. Okay, okay. This is irrevocable during the lifetime of beneficiary. Clubbing will not be done so long as the beneficiary is alive. Okay. Till then, it will be in the hands of the transferee. Clubbing नहीं होगा फिर. Okay. After that, it will be revoked. So it will come back again to the transferer. चलो next now. Income of the spouse. Salary, commission, and all if the spouse is receiving from the firm, and spouse is not qualified, then it will be clubbed. If qualified, no problem. And when they say you have substantial interest in a concern, it's twenty percent of voting power himself or along with his relatives. Relatives means father, mother, brother, sister, son, like that. All. सबको मिला के And if you transfer any asset to spouse, and they they have reinvested it, proportionate income. So I have given three lakhs to my husband, and five lakhs he has himself put. He is doing with business with eight lakhs, and on eight lakhs he has earned one lakh income. So one lakh ka five by eight will be taxable in my husband. One lakh ka three by eight will be taxable in my hands. We have done problems like this. Proportionate clubbed income will be taxable. Okay, right. Minors income we have done and cross transfers are like super. I am teaching right now in final transfer pricing. 
that is in a way this cross transpose and all these are also called in at advanced level sir so, big word hai naam to mani hona chahiye aapko gaan general anti avoidance rule see um mr y is gifting um his friend mr z son 5 lakh rupees and mr z is making fd for mr y's uh, wife mrs y are you getting mr y is giving 5 lakh rupees cash gift to z ka son who is that his friend and z is giving uh z is making fd of 5 lakh in the name of mrs y indirectly mr y is giving to mrs y cross transfers so you know we in law we study a topic which is called as lifting of corporate veil so you look into the picture and if these cross transfers are just to avoid the tax then it will become taxable same way splitting of the income of huf ye bhi bataya tha ha when huf is partitioned huf ke partition ke char hisse hue ek mr a ka ek mrs a ka ek son and daughter d so huf is partitioned and a has thrown his personal property into the huf and through that common property partition mein a's personal properties one fourth part went to mrs a in form of partition i want to repeat mr a has transferred his personal property to huf he has thrown it in common hotspot theek hai sab to fine hai income will be clubbed in the hands of mr a only now uh, that property is belongs to huf so it is partition one fourth part goes to mrs a so indirectly mr a is giving mrs a this one fourth part's income will be taxable in the hands of mr a and you know income is taxed income on income is not taxed i have given um say a car to my husband he is getting rental income from car which is clubbed in my hands fine i have transferred asset to spouse without consideration so that rental income is taxable in my hands that rental income my husband has made fd on fd interest is received income is club income on income on rental income fd interest is not club same way shares if i have given you club may shares on shares you get bonus shares right shares all goes so that all belongs to you so that's all for this clubbing topic this is the only head listen all of you dear students this is the only head where you are allowed to compute the income in column form yes in the column form you are allowed to compute the income okay hmm when you attend these revision classes in a committed way that shows your commitment for this profession that shows that you have got your aim very clear that you want to become a cma uske liye cma final ke eight subjects for that cma enters eight subjects and for that this income tax revision class so when you are focused to achieve your goal nothing can stop you from doing i'm literally saying no bookish this is all i read my diaries in 2001 just qualified as a ca and i from the time i decided to become a ca inter and final that time only i used to teach accounts to my friends i say booster notes and all for myself i will make and they will xerox i will explain so i had written somewhere in 2001 i don't want to practice i want to teach at least some day i can teach foundation students and now 2021 i am teaching foundation inter and final so this is you know like I'm please. I'm not saying all this for my praises. I want to motivate you all. And very average student, tenth class, sixty-three percent, and twelfth class commerce. That to see, see sixty-seven percent. Fine. So, but this is one thing very clear: the hard core effort which you have already put in. So, don't leave the commitment that we will do. Ham ko sab aata hai. When a teacher is sparing time to take these revision classes extra. you should be committed enough to attend ask your doubts and listen to the revisions 
there's some important circuits. Yeah. Okay. What is the next down? My a small clarification. Minor do we assess higher income of parents every year? No, no, dear. Again, I want to make it clear. Minor income is clubbed in the hands of the parent who has higher income in the first year when you are clubbing. Full stop. Once you have clubbed in the hands of the father in 1920, in 2021, 21, 22, whoever's income is higher, don't bother. Just the file will go on, you know. Income tax may, your file is added to the file of your father. So every year the clubbing will be done in the hands of the father till you become 18 years and then you have to file your own return. Your doubt is clear? Chalo, or kya da your doubt tha? Yeah, ma'am, can you once explain 6414? As a section, Zaroor. Zaroor, I will explain. 6414. Where asset is transferred to spouse. Okay? Otherwise, then for adequate consideration or in connection with liver part. See, in divorce, so of course, I, the husband has to give some property, some cash to wife, no? It is called as some alimony or say kuch bolte hai, and that is not taxable. But otherwise, when asset is transferred to spouse without adequate consideration, you know, out of love and affection, then income from asset is taxable in the hands of the husband. Husband has transferred asset to spouse, then, you know, the thing is, husband has transferred asset to spouse. I told you the case of long back Tina Ammani, she got a yacht boat as a gift from Anil Ammani. This is an actual case. So as long as wife or spouse is using, no problem. But if she gets rental income, giving it out for parties, this rental income will be clubbed in the hands of husband. And this rental income, when it is clubbed in the hands of husband, is may ek exception hai house property. This clubbing provision is not there for house property. Achha, now directly this is taxable, no? So what some people they do, uh, husband is transferring the gift to a beneficiary. And through that beneficiary, 100% the gift is going to spouse. So indirectly also, ho bhi hoga. If asset is transferred otherwise and for adequate to a person or to an AOP, Income of which is for the immediate or deferred benefit of spouse. So transfer directly to spouse or to daughter-in-law, directly or indirectly, all is tax. Achha, is this is a uh, ma'am. What about the gift? Aajkal bohat hi trend chal raha na. Dada ji si de apne grandson ko gift de de the. Will the clubbing provisions come? Answer is no. What about father giving gift to son? No. Only two relations. Now, this chapter is not touched up. When it is made in that, that time, they said, okay, give to spouse and give to daughter-in-law. Finish. Same as Sanjay. They have not added the brothers and sisters and sons. So, can father give gift to son? Answer is yes. Will it be taxable? No. You could taxable. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Still any doubt, the screen is open for the word document. Don't show. Yes. So we can spare some uh, half an hour more to take up the MCQs and all for these two topics. No? One minute, I'll share the file. Okay, here we go. If you need this uh, sheet, I will ask sir to send you also. 
I'm asked few questions which are really very important in this. So we can take up that first time for this. We will take on the others also. Okay, chal. These are the MCQ questions for set off and carry forward of losses. Let us start from the first. Routine class, so we are never starting from the first now. I hope you are not opening the answer even if sir has sent you. It's a promise. You are solving it with me. Say yes. Be honest. Let us see how much you know. Loss from speculative business of a particular assessment year can be set off in the same assessment year. So it's a loss from speculative business. Kaha uh, set off hoga? Only speculative income. Correct? Right. Loss, uh, see, uh, we are lacking the times I am not reading, but sometimes the points are nearby. So make sure you read all the provision. Loss on owning and maintaining horse roses can be set off in business income, horse races, any other head or any of the above, only in income from horse races. Horse races ka income to horse race mein hoga aur wo set off ke karna padega. Right. Okay. Chalo. Next now. Long term capital loss can be set off in the same assessment year in short term and long term both or only long term. Or only short term or any of above, only long term. Why is it happening? I'm ticking and I'm going to go. No, answer for the fourth one is B. Long term capital loss can be set off in long term capital gain only. Okay? There are some googly questions. I feel they are very interesting. Let us take them. Loss under the head capital gain can be set off from any other head of the income. We carry forward. Neither we set off nor carry forward or none of the above. It can be carry forward. Capital gain may if there is a loss, it cannot be set off with other heads. But can be carried forward? Answer is yes. Be big. See Right. Sixth one, I want all of you to read on your own and answer. Did we take a separate class for 115 BAC? And I'll send you the link of all the playlist where I have kept the revisions of business head salary. Sub helps me. Kuch add less ke concepts. So keep on watching those videos whenever you want to watch for revision. Bolo. If you go for 115 BAC, alternative tax regime. Can you set off the loss under house property? Be allowed to be set off from any other head? Be allowed to be set off uh, with other heads up to 2 lakh? Not allowed to be set off? Not allowed to be set off from any other head? But will be allowed to be carried forward? True! Very good, Sampar. Now, what is 115 BAC mein house property within the head you do? And carry forward, but you can't go outside and set off up to 2 lakhs. That's not allowed. 115 BAC. Losses are not allowed to be set off. Okay? Right. You take one up, kar lena, simple. Chalo. Kuch achhe questions hai, which I have star marks so that there are calculations in that. And you can do there. Very good. Next one. During the previous year, SSE has incurred business loss. 120. And house property income 110. Can we set off business loss and house property? Yes. Abhi bhi business loss kitna baki hoga carry forward ke liye? 10,000. Hmm? Business loss and claim full exemption and loss that is option no. Yeah. Now, loss under business and profession other than specified business 35D can be set off in the same year in income under other head, income under other head except salary, income except house property or none of the above. Hmm? Aap bolo, ninth ka answer bolo. You can set off business loss including 35 AD. Where can you set off the business loss? Including 35 AD.
one and three are not friends. Super. B is the correct answer. Income under any other head except salary. Okay. Loss from specified business referred in thirty five D can be set off. Thirty five D कहाँ से set off होगा? Salary से, business head से, profit from only specified business. C one. The thirty five D loss can be set off only in thirty five D income. But if not, it can carry forward for indefinite period. Loss other than loss from house property is allowed to be carried forward only when an SSC has furnished return of loss. So true. Except house property, you have to furnish the return of loss. No. Hmm? In clubbing, actually, I have really marked some problems are there with the calculations also. So we'll stop doing it. Then it will be finished. Is my speed fine, or you want me to go still slow? Please put me a message. Clear, eh, Ani? Twelfth ka answer. Achha, it's already C. I should also read. Loss under head house property can be carried forward only if return is furnished. Even if it is not furnished, even if return is furnished after the due date. See, you can't carry set off the carry forward the loss if return is not furnished. You have to furnish the return, but belated return shall be the for house property. Belated return will do. Business loss can be carried forward and set off in subsequent years when business on account of which loss was arisen is continued. Continued or not? Continue करो या ना करो? Continued for at least part of the year, none of the above. No, not necessary. Business is continued. A की है. Income from horse races के लिए it is necessary. I hope you are feeling that ma'am things are repeated in last one and a half hour. Then that's what my purpose is. Understood? Fine. Now it's time to remember. No. Chalo. A business loss other than loss from specified business referred to in thirty five D can be carried forward for a maximum. Now this is business loss. Other than loss from specified business, thirty-five D, it can be carried forward for eight years, four years, six years, indefinite. Eight years. Speculative loss, four years. Specified business, indefinite. Loss from specified business referred in thirty-five D can be carried forward and set off from income of specified business only. Now, these are repeat here, same here, are here. ठीक है ना? So we can skip some of them, which are very easy. Four years, eight years, twenty-third percent. Brought forward loss can be set off in eight years. Must be set off in immediate succeeding year and balance in the immediate next year, or as per B, but within the time limit, or as per B within four years. Answer is. C. Twenty third answer is C. थोड़ा सा गुगली है ध्यान से देखो. Can we set off broad forward loss in the next year? In the next, you can say, ma'am, this year income is low. Can I skip to next year? Say it. करो. No, no, please. These are eight consecutive years from the very next year. Twenty twenty one का loss है. Twenty one twenty two first year. Like this eight years and it will lapse. So you have to set off one after the another in the time frame, eight years, four years, whatever it may be. Okay, right. This is actually asked in final exam many times, but आपको ये पैरा तो है C M M है. C A exam तो it is not there. In case of amal commission carry forward of business loss and unabsorbed depreciation, कितने साल के लिए होगा? Then it is you can carry it forward and you can set off. Uh, whether it is industrial undertaking, ship or hotel or banks, maybe it is a cooperative bank. Everywhere amalgamation, it is allowed to be set up provided the business and all you carry forward for five years, three fourth machinery you don't sell and all that, and they can carry it forward for fresh eight years. Fresh. This answer I am only sharing with you. You can carry forward the loss. In the new company, business loss for fresh eight years, 
and uh, unabsorbed depreciation for indefinite period. ठीक है clear है I think we have completed with the major questions, huh? Or sections which push say like seventy to A, they will write one side. Match the pairs. That's I think very good. This one you should star mark. Private company or closely held company cannot carry forward and loss unless on the last day of the previous year, fifty one percent of the beneficially held shares are same as the one just then loss was the. उस दिन एंड नाउ 51 परसेंट शेयर आर सेम ओके स्पेक्यूलेटिव लॉस कैन बी कैरीड फॉरवर्ड फॉर मैक्सिमम ऑफ प्लीज वेट फॉर क्लबिंग अप क्लबिंग में तो थोड़े क्वेश्चंस है एमसीक्यू दीज आर लिटिल सिंपल वंस थोड़े और दे आर आस्किंग द प्रॉब्लम्स आल्सो कि बिजनेस लॉस इतना है कैपिटल गेन कितना है कितना सेट ऑफ होगा एंड ऑल स्पेक्यूलेटिव लॉस कैन बी कैरीड फॉर फॉर हाउ मेनी इयर्स फोर इयर्स चलो पिक अप योर नोटबुक एंड आंसर नो ट्रू फॉल्स सी एफ ऐसे लिखो टू मिनट टाइम गिवन टू यू उसके बाद विल गो टू द्लबिंग ये करो खुद से करो रीड एंड फुट आंसर इन योर नोटबुक दैट विल बिल्ड जेन्यून कॉन्फिडेंस कि आप कर पा रहे या नहीं Yes. Okay. True and false are very tricky. Huh? Please remember. Pra carefully answer देना है आपको काफी tricky है. False, false, false. True. Monica third answer is wrong. So Sampath first answer is wrong. Second is correct. करो करो अच्छा कर रहे हैं. Some of you don't want to put it in the chat, and you're just writing in notebook. Okay, no problem. Take five minutes time. I'm here. Are you enjoying this way of preparing the objectives after doing the concept? Please give a feedback. Huh? Zaruri hai. No, it is not true. It's false. Yeah, some question you are asking, ma'am. Under hundred and fifteen BC is intranet set off. Or uh, okay, nice question. When you go for alternative tax regime, no hundred and fifteen um, BAC intranet is allowed. Intranet is allowed, or else carry forward interhead is not allowed. You can't bring the loss outside. That is there. Most of you are giving wrong answers for this. चलो अच्छा है मजा आ रहा है. So I will come to know how to discuss. And I am telling you all, this is a challenge. It's very easy to solve. Uh, What do you you say? MCQ. You know, in Hindi we call it tukka lag jata hai kabhi kabhi. No true and false. It's not like that. And so at the uh, levels ahead, you know, in finals, it's like true and false with reasoning. So unless you don't know the reason, thirty-three wala. Okay, correct. Hai. Okay, Harika, you are giving first three answers correct. Karo karo. Baaki log bhi karo. When it is over, tell me.
I say happy to see now pages you are saying 32 is up to 2 lakh so galat hai na aga see it's not that i'm doing critics for anyone it's so beautiful to realize your own mistake so that you don't do that mistake in the final exam 37 plus 2 falls to fall harika and if it has been Are you all enjoying? So I feel these all the students, this list should go in final then by next year. Chalo. Achha hai. Okay, enough time I gave you. Let me discuss with all of you. First only lot of googly was there and this one, I'll discuss. Short term capital loss can be set off from any other head of income in the same assessment year. Okay. Short term capital loss can be set off from any other income in the same assessment year. Answer is false. In the same year also, short term capital loss can be set off only in short term capital gain. And long term capital gain. They cannot go to other heads. No. Can we set off this year's short term capital loss and this year's house property income, business income? Can we do that? Answer is no. Okay. So, though some of you are saying true, make it false. See, I want to MCQs, my event little fast. Now I want to go little slow. Because, uh, you know, unless you don't try to justify the reason, you can't write FFTT. Even, yeah, yeah, in exam, you are allowed to write true, false, true, false, ek ke niche, ek without reasoning. In the CMA inter. Final mein with reasoning hai, tab dekhenge kya karne. Shalo. Now, all of you stop solving it ahead. Abhi, apne apne answers, you know, ab sab ke paas hai, be honest to yourself. If an SSE has incurred any loss under the head of income in particular year, it can set off from any other head of income in the same year. Answer is false. If this year you have a loss, this year you cannot set off in all the heads. One and three are not friends. Brought forward house property loss can be set off from income under the head house property. In the subsequent assessment year, answer is yes and pages and others 2 lakh ka limit ya nahi hai. I want to again repeat house property loss within the same head now or carry forward. There is no limit of 2 lakh. 2 lakh is intra head. If you have loss in house property 3 lakh, 1 lakh you carry forward. 2 lakhs you bring it outside to set off. So brought forward house property loss. Are you all clear with the 30th one? Can we set off an income from house property in the subsequent year? Answer is yes. So can I say this is true? Loss can be set off only by SSU as incurred. Are false. Abhi aapko pada hai amalgamation mein. Your company is merged in my company. Even I am allowed to set off the loss. So where is the question ki loss can be set off only by that SSE? Hmm? That SSE is closed. It's allowed in amalgamation. So it's false. No loss. Are, are you getting the conflict? And if you are correct, many of you are giving answers. Absolutely correct. Very good. No loss can be carried forward unless the return of loss is furnished on or before due date. Answer is false. House property Montana. Loss can be set off against club income also. Can we set off loss in the clubbing of income? Yes. Answer is true. Allow it. So I have a loss in house property. My minor's rental income is clubbed and there it is income. Can we set off? Yes. 
loss and the capital gain can neither be set off neither be set off nor carry forward 34 false this why because in the same year you can set off in long term capital gain no long term capital loss it's allowed theek okay? hai business loss is allowed to be carried forward only when fsa has furnished return on time true only house property loss you can carry forward even if you have not submitted the return loss from house property can be carried forward even if return is not furnished ye kya baat hai true or false i want all of you to answer again 36 mein kya likha hai apne house property loss can be carried forward even if yes say 36 answer is false why true abhi bhi kuch log true bol rahe hain kyun house property loss can be carried forward if you file late return then also they are allowing that emotion but you have to file the return without filing the return one rupee also you cannot carry forward go out of the class practically you upload your returns in that you put loss then next year it will be set off and all aap return hi nahi bhar rahe to how the department will come to know so i want to repeat if you want write a note for this in your book all the other losses carry forward only if return is filed on time house property allowed to be carried forward even if return is filed late but return file karna to mandatory hai very much mandatory to file the return i hope you are enjoying this business can be carried forward and set off in the subsequent assessment year whether business on account of which loss is continued or not true not necessary to have business continued and loss on account of owning and maintaining can be carried forward indefinitely false it can be carried forward only for four years are you getting a grip on how they are going to ask you questions on this chalo okay fill in the blanks are quite simple you check it and send me a click or whatever you are not getting okay we are going to clubbing now one second no clubbing 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 mein na question solve karne ke aise bhi they are asking are you able to see the clubbing on screen i have shared clubbing सबसे पहले थर्ड क्वेश्चन आई रियली लाइक दिस चेक इन सी इफ यू कैन आंसर दिस स्मॉल टॉपिक विल फिनिश फास्ट थर्ड वन इफ देर इज अ ट्रांसफर ऑफ अ सेट व्हिच इज नॉट रिवोकेबल ड्यूरिंग द लाइफ टाइम ऑफ द ट्रांसफरी से पहले फर्स्ट दो करते हैं तो इट विल बी क्लियर इट्स रिलेटेड टू ट्रांसफर विदाउट ट्रांसफर ऑफ अट इफ देर इज अ ट्रांसफर ऑफ इनकम विदाउट ट्रांसफर ऑफ अट सच इनकम विल बी क्लब्ड इन द हैंड्स ऑफ ट्रांसफरर्स इफ देयर इज अ रिवोकेबल ट्रांसफर स्टिल इट विल बी क्लब्ड इन द हैंड्स ऑफ ट्रांसफरर यस अब ये क्या हो रहा है right now if there is a transfer of asset which is not revocable during lifetime of the transferee and income arise from such asset will be included in the income of transferee till the death thereafter in the hands of the transferer i hope you are getting one asset is transferred by a to b till the person are alive clubbing nahi hoga i mean say i will not take by a thing okay promise till both of us are alive i'll not take back the asset so there is no question of clubbing b uh, this income will be taxable in the hands of transfer but if b is dt then this automatically come back to a and it will be taxable in the hands of a isko read karo 2 minutes i am pausing aap read karo
बोलो एनी वन इज स्टिल हैविंग डाउट इन ऑल द थ्री आर लिंक्ड एक्चुअली एंड दे आर रियली सुपर yeah i'll repeat if you want me to repeat i'll repeat listen a transferred an asset to b which is not revocable till the lifetime a or b so when it is not revocable revocable matlab wapas nahi aayega a ko so there is no question of uh, uh, clubbing no that b's income should be clubbed in a here why we are clubbing in the hands of transferer because it is revocable now i am saying a has transferred asset to b which is not revocable during lifetime so for the whole lifetime income kiske hath mein taxable hogi b ke hath mein but if b is deceased any one of them is deceased asset will come back to a who said that condition it is revocable after the lifetime the lifetime khatam hone ke baad it's coming back So now in whose hands it will be taxable? A. So it will be taxable in the hands of transferee till the death. No clubbing. Don't club income in the hands of the A. B K A has to remain there. Yeah. Ma'am, if the asset is transferred without adequate consideration, then in whose hands it is taxable? If it is without adequate consideration, then it will be taxable in the hands of transferor. Who will be rene do? Who will be rene do? Without adequate consideration, hmm? and if it is without adequate consideration to that uh, relatives, spouse and daughter-in-law, so income is clubbed, and to others it's not uh, clubbed because the reason is um, it's treated as gift, no? and anyhow they are paying the tax on the gift if i have transferred a house property to you which is worth 50 lakh at 1 lakh rupees so in your income 49 lakhs is added but ab wo rental income mere hath mein tax nahi hogi it's like wholesale consideration wo gift mein aa gaya na it's already covered chalo relative definition i hope all of you know spouse brother and baki ke confuse karne ke seventh one is ninth when spouse of an individual gets remuneration remuneration from a concern in which individual has substantial interest such remuneration is clubbed in all cases only when the remuneration received due to his technical or professional in all cases except when the remuneration is received due to technical qualification none of the above kya hai guys ka answer spouse income is spouse is getting salary and remuneration yeah chat is open dalo apne answers one yeah. second see one very very perfect in all the cases it will be clubbed except when spouse is getting the income due to technical qualification sab fir clubbing nahi hoga ठीक है, right. I'm skipping some of the question which are very easy because of the time constraint. चलो ninth वाला देखते हैं कि आप कैसे solve करते हो. अच्छा है. R sold 2014% debentures of 100 at 90,000. Market value of the debentures on the date of the transfer is 180 and he has transferred to wife out of love and affection for inadequate consideration. Market value 180 थी. तो स्पाउस को सिर्फ 90 में दिए आधी वैल्यू में नाउ इन दिस केस इंटरेस्ट इनकम विल इट बी क्लब इन द हैंड्स ऑफ आर हस्बैंड यस और नो देन आंसर आई एम सेइंग यस तो कितना कैलकुलेट करके बताओ फोर आंसर्स आर गिवन वे हाउ मच इंटरेस्ट विल बी क्लब इन द हैंड्स ऑफ आर Fourteen percent is the debenture interest. Or frankly, but I'm not so well calculated. No, teachers, that's not the right answer, dear. But appreciate it so much. At least you're trying to answer. Baki lo, karo karo. 
okay you are not having investment chapter no in account so may not be clear with one something very basic पर इशू ऑफ शेयर डिवेंचर्स तो पढ़ लूंगी बोलो हाँ हाँ ट्वेंटी फाइव टू हंड्रेड का आधा है ट्वेल्व सिक्स हंड्रेड नो अब ऐसे नो नो करके घूम घूम के लाइट लाइन इज ओवर दो से ज्यादा आंसर मत दो दूसरों को देने दो फिर तो आप पूरे चारों आंसर लिख दोगे कोई ना कोई तो कहे बोल ही देंगे मैम ऐसे मत करो <laughs> अभी तक किसी ने करेक्ट नहीं आई टोल्ड यू क्लबिंग प्रॉब्लम्स आर लिटिल ट्रिकी एंड दीज लेवल ऑफ एमसीक्यूज आर आस्क्ड मेनी ऑफ देम थोड़े मेनी तो नहीं थोड़े लोग दे हैव लेफ्ट थ्री टू फोर दे आर मिसिंग दिस मे बी नेटवर्क इशू और व्हाट आई डोंट नो समथिंग बेसिक इज नॉट क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू ओके वन हिंट आई एम गिविंग यू irrespective of market value of debentures interest is always calculated on face value you have purchased 100 rupees shares of mrf tires in 80000 you will get dividend 50% on 100 or 80000 100 dividend and interest are always given on the face value and what is face value 2000 200 फेस वैल्यू कितना है कैन आई राइट हियर आप सबको समझ में आएगा देखो नहीं अभी तक किसी ने करेक्ट नहीं दिया यू वांट मोर टाइम टेक इट एज अ चैलेंज ऑलमोस्ट 2 आवर्स वी आर टुगेदर अभी तो करेक्ट करो आंसर कोई तो सो दैट यूनाइटेड वी स्टैंड इफ ऑल द चैट्स वर ओपन ना तो कोई ना कोई तो देख लेते थे Appreciate it so much. You are trying to just to get this correct. That that shows your inquisitiveness, and I really like it. Chalo. Now one thing is clear to all of you. Irrespective of the market value, interest is paid on the face value. Two thousand debentures of hundred each. Fourteen percent interest comes to twenty eight thousand. Now I have transferred the debentures to my wife. I have taken ninety thousand consideration. No, pura pre me to nahi diya na. One eighty ki jagah I have taken ninety. So half of the interest, fourteen thousand, is the correct answer. Now it must be like, oh, we were saying twenty five two hundred. You all were taking interest on one eighty wrong. Some of you were taking half wrong. Some of you were taking twenty eight full wrong. Answer was fourteen thousand. इसको डाइजेस्ट करो च्यू करके खा जाओ दो मिनट टेक टाइम सुपर क्वेश्चन व्हाट डू यू से ऐड करें आपके जूनियर्स आ रहे हैं ना फाउंडेशन से नेक्स्ट बैच में उनको पढ़ा देंगे उनको भी एमसीक्यूज में ही मिलना है Just tell some of you are not clear. Why am I taking half? Then listen. One eighty is the sale consideration. I should receive from my spouse. Uh, I mean, say I should receive from wife. Ninety the wife has paid. No. Clubbing is when something is given for inadequate consideration. So ninety the wife has paid and for the. तो नाइंटी रिलेटेड वन लैक के जो डिवेंचर्स हैं वन थाउजेंड डिवेंचर्स इट्स स्पाउस यू हैव पेड एंड दे आर योर्स आउट ऑफ वन एटी शी पेड नाइंटी नो सो व्हाट इज गोइंग फ्री दैट इज क्लब्स नाउ इज इट क्लियर टू यू संपर्क पढ़ो अभी क्लियर है या नहीं राइट Okay, chalo. We'll take up the next question. That is also very interesting. I hope you have finished writing this uh, this part because I'm deleting this so that you can read the next question. Where an individual transfers the house property to wife without adequate consideration, income from house property shall be subject of 64 clubbing 
or 27 transfer shall be deemed to be owner of the house property and taxable under 20 to house property may or none of this when you transfer house property to spouse clubbing aane ka to sawani nahi hai but yes in income from house property they say if you transfer um you know um, house property to someone without adequate consideration you are the deemed owner and income will be clubbed in your hands please go home check your house go home ke ghar pe hai online class hi chal raha hai so you check the definition of deemed owner i want to repeat if you feel i am going fast i have transferred property to my spouse out of love and affection house property ko clubbing provisions are not applicable but am i the deemed owner have i transferred rental income without transferring the assets am i the deemed owner then house property says rental income will be taxable in the hands of owner super our gift file like to wife who invested same in partnership this is a googly for you abhi jaldi jaldi correct do we all are getting late r gives 5 lakh to wife who has invested same in form mrs r receives 265 as per the share of profit in this case amount to be clubbed in hands of r you have gifted the money she invested in partnership form and uh, mrs r receives 265 as the profit you know uh, mrs r has entered partnership with a third person but jo r se gift aaya that she invested and she got share of profit so it is clubbed in the hands of the r 265 15000 after giving 250 exemption nil 15000 if wife is less than 60 years and all four bit kya answer hai I want you all to answer the twelfth bit. How much of wife? If I give money to my spouse and if he is getting income, that income is clubbed in my hands. So will two sixty five be clubbed in my hands? Answer please. I am waiting. Karo. Answer is A. Okay. Or A. Okay. A. अच्छा कर रहे हैं भूल जा रहे हैं आप लोग. A. Okay. Ma'am, if she is a professional or technical connection, then it, no, 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 no. Don't clap two things. Spouse is not getting salary and remuneration where we see technical skills. I have gifted to spouse. My spouse has invested in a partnership firm. R has given gift to Mrs. R, and she has invested in a partnership firm with Mrs. A. Or वहाँ से income आई है R को two sixty five. Will this income be clubbed in hands of R? Better no no. This is not salary remuneration case here. Please make sure you spare time to solve these questions again at home. I want some more responses. So many of you are there, and if you feel lot of effort has gone in taking this revision class, बहुत energy लगती है, and uh, great efforts from uh, sir also to make up all these material and all and send to you on time. If you feel it is fruitful next time, get all the others who have missed today. Revision classes are very important. See the portion is over. If we say the portion is over, done nothing. But uh, every every week Thursday, if we take one class, no, we can be together till exam. And I'm telling you, next Thursday I'm going to take deduction. So if you read and come, your listening will be like a super clear level. Ma'am, chapter nahi pada rahe aapko. Ma'am, revision kara rahe. So aap read karke aur deductions ka chapter. Yeah, why some of more should answer Harika, Akshita, Hari Priya, Anusha. Karo karo. Try, try. Whatever you feel like. 
इस पर एक काम तो हरी का इवैल्यूएट के लिए नॉन कांसेप्ट बट करेक्ट शी से ही आंसर इज नील एंड आंसर इज नील कैन यू एक्सप्लेन दैट इफ यू कैन नॉट टाइप यू आर अलाउड टू अनम्यूट एंड से व्हाई यू फील लाइक आर गेव 5 लाख रुपीस टू मिसेस शी इन्वेस्टेड whatever income you receive actually that's clapped in our income part but you are saying the answer is nil why quick 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 response why is it nil essay bolo or you have some reason in your mind type quickly or you can unmute and speak aise kuch space hi press karna padta hai na unmute ke liye Listen, all of you, carefully. I am discussing the answer. I told you, clubbing. There are some googly problems. So, if you have, uh, if you have the notebook, write down ninth one, twelfth one, number. So, let's do solve it again at home. Listen. R has gifted five lakh to wife. Why she invest outside? Whatever profit she is getting, it should be clubbed in hands of R. But why she didn't do the business? She invested the money in partnership fund. A partnership firm say whatever share of profit you are getting that is exempt. Share of profit from the firm is exempt because firm itself is paying thirty percent tax. So firm say if income is coming to Mrs R or Mr R, it is exempt. Share of the profit is exempt. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. It is very important, and you are so sweet and obedient to take permission and leave. You can hmm? take care. Bye, bye. Baki lo. समझ में आया? I want to repeat. R has given money to Mrs. R. Mrs. R, wherever she is putting the money, wherever she is putting the money, income is clapped in the hands of R. वो तो कॉमन से But this time, Mrs. R has put the money in partnership firm. So partnership firm say what profit you receive that is for exempt now, right? Okay. Next now, sixteen. When income of minor is clubbed in hands of parent, such parent is allowed exemption of fifteen hundred. If marriage of parent does not subsist, then parents whoever maintains it, huh? In their hands it will be clubbed. so like that we have few more questions 18 karte hain income of minor who is disability it will be taxable in hands of minor only income of minor married daughter isko five star khilao kit kat khilao income of minor married daughter will it be clubbed in hands of husband no will it be clubbed in hands of the parent Other than such income is greater, yes. Not to be clubbed, no. None of the above, no. Bilkul club hoga. Minor married daughter. Or last one, I want you all to answer, please. If any income has to be clubbed under sixty-four, it will be clubbed under the. <laughs> I discussed it while revision of the relevant head. Not in other income from other sources. का नाम इज रेसिड्यूल है बट इट्स नॉट बचा कुचा है हम राइट सो दीज आर सम वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स टू एंड फॉर द सिंपल विल यू डू इट होम ठीक है चलो कुछ करते हैं ऑल इनकम दैट अक्रूज टू माइनर चाइल्ड विल बी क्लब्ड इन टोटल इनकम ऑफ पेरेंट हुज इनकम इज हायर ट्रू ऑल इनकम नो सॉरी फॉल्स नॉट ऑल द इनकम ऑफ द माइनर नो If it is talent and all, it will not be clubbed. Acha same minor who is having income from talent and he is filing his own return. He is having other income also. So other income will be clubbed. Talent income will not be clubbed. False, huh? Answer is false. Income of one person is clubbed in the hands of another. Then in case of loss, the loss shall be clubbed. Super true. If your income is clubbed in my hands, your loss benefit also I should get. This I say in routine class also. 
salary received am i very clear hmm? salary received by spouse of individual from a concern in which such individual along with his relative has substantial interest shall be clapped salary is received by spouse of individual in which individual along with received has substantial in or clapped in all the cases false if it is derived by skill and talent to club nahi hoga false if there is a revocable transfer any income arising from asset shall be included in the income of transferor false hmm ha revocable transfer is true really sorry why i am doing mistake now true 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 if it is a revocable transfer then income is clubbed in the hands of transferor but if it is not revocable during lifetime no club chalo if option 115 bac is not exercised income of minor is clubbed in the hands of the parent 115 bac is a new provision surely chances of getting the question so make sure you practice that a lot and separate video is also uploaded for that if you want you can uh, revise it four times five times karo wahan se such parent will be allowed exemption to the extent actual income or 1500 theek hai true every minor child ke liye 1500 tak ka to milega and these are fill in the blanks i think they are all repeated yeah few questions which i have left if you feel ma'am we are not able to get and interpret the answer for the fill in the answers are there at the end but you write it in the print out and then check how many you are getting correct if you are getting wrong try to understand yourself still you are not getting click the photo and send me and gear up for the weekly revision classes and already revisions are over for salary business and capital gain jumbo topics so repeatedly solve all the problems and once you finish the revision uh, and you have solved study material problems सीएमएसई जो भी आप फॉलो कर रहे हो एंड आफ्टर दैट मेक श्योर पास्ट एग्जाम जून 2019 दिसंबर 19 मई 19 व्हाटएवर इज द एग्जाम इन दैट बिजनेस एट वन क्वेश्चन विल बी देयर फॉर 10 मार्क्स पिक इट अप एंड सॉल्व इट विद टाइम लिमिट सो गिव योरसेल्फ स्मॉल टेस्ट ऑफ कोर्स आफ्टर 1 एंड 1/2 मंथ आई डेफिनेटली से इन अक्टूबर 3 घंटे का एग्जाम लिख के देखो विद अ माइंडसेट दैट यू रिमेंबर एवरीथिंग एट अ टाइम बिजनेस एट but right now can you give yourself 10 10 minutes test right ha huh. so that's all from my side thank you so much for responding so well in the class and your enthusiasm is what i really like and that always motivates me to give more and more still if you feel ma'am this topic or this is needed more and earlier let me know otherwise next week we are revising deductions and if you really feel these two hours were energetic and fruitful get your friends along i've taken the coaching but i'm not seeing few of the names now in the class sabko leke aao the strength should be above 50 which had in our routine class right or not ha huh? right so that will be a great help hmm? confidence genuinely aise hi badega when i say deductions revision aap revise karke aao attend two hours class and then with me you solve mcqs then after the class also after having your dinner what is right job so genuine wala confidence badega and then come and tell me you've got exemption it's a challenge i'm literally saying to way the way we have studied in depth every chapter every bit bahut patience ke sath huh so more than 190 hours of learning is not a joke for this you have spent so much time so make it fruitful by quality revision thank you so much all the best to all of you bye bye hello all of you very good morning to all of you how are you all after a long time we are meeting for this revision class monika nitya navya shivani tarun 
Mani Saran, all of you, Santoshi, how are you all? And how is your preparation geared up? Exams are starting, I think, 21st, no, October. So exactly two months to go now for one and a half months to go for your exam. We have already finished the portion well in advance. And today we are together to revise deductions, all the concepts, and then we will take up the MCQs. Okay. The answer to the first message is that uh, PDF file is not sent to you because you all should answer the MCQ in the class. Once we complete the class, sir will send you the PDF file also so that you can practice MCQs also with this. And in the meanwhile, be comfortable. I'm going to ask you some questions because this is a revision class. We have already taken eight routine classes for deductions. One concept, one problem, ATC, ATD, very slowly with all the booster notes. But still, if you have any doubt, put it in the chat or unmute and ask. These are the two permissions exclusive given to all of you. Be comfortable that you are going to take away many good things. And how did you like this idea of putting on some very good music just before you start your studies so that you start it with a very energetic mode. Baki sab ke income tax and our material and book and now we are ready to go. Yes or no? Already all set? When I ask, I should get all the more many, many answers in the chat box. Okay. And I love the response you are giving. I thought I'm meeting you after so many days. Con, Deepthi ma'am, con, income tax. Who all will come for the revision class? But glad to see so many of you here. Right, chalo. Now, deductions is a very important chapter. But as we say, heads of income, separate questions are asked. Yes or no? Like salary, capital gain, house property, business head. You have 8 8 marks specific question. Deductions, the weightage is bare minimum 8 marks, as good as your any other head of income. You know why? Uh, like if you take the CA exam or if you take CMA exam, when they ask you one question, no, 15 marks of computation of income. There in itself, they are asking you deductions and super favorite for your MCQs. And in the final exam also, when you do non-resident taxation, many other chapters, without the deductions, you cannot complete your problem of the total income. Okay, right? So we are starting with the revision of the deductions. I hope you all are comfortable. Revision is done in a routine way. I'm not going to explain you all but with weightage wise wherever we need to pause and take it okay right now before i start deductions two or three important conditions the first one is when i get income from five heads i club others income here i hope you are getting five heads of income i have got whatever if it is there fine if not four heads whatever after that Minors income, spouse, spouse income. So clubbing of income is there. Then we do set off carry forward plus minus. If there is a loss in one head, profit can be set off. That rules we have already taken in the last revision class was for set off and carry forward. Once I complete that, what I write in the outer column, I call it gross total income. Knock, knock. Here comes the entry of deductions. Deductions are covered under section ATC to ATU. First and last are only very important. Today I will revise deductions weightage wise also. I have taught you all, but jo bar bar aate na, I'll highlight so you can keep a notepad with you. ATC to ATU, all the deductions are covered. So frankly, your income is like gross total income and pay the tax. Yes, but they say. If you do good investment, TPF, LIC, if you do good expense, donations, rent you pay, or if you get good income, all ATI series income, cooperative societies income, then you get a deduction subject to some terms, conditions and limit. After gross total income, 
when you get deductions the total income what you get on total income you have to calculate the tax is this clear to all of you so one thing we should know deductions can never exceed the income gross total income minus the deductions you get total income you calculate tax on total income surcharge on tax ecs on tax plus surcharge these are everyday dialogue right or not so now deductions can never exceed gross total income just a small silly example my gross total income is 50000 i have put in ppf 65000 can i show 15000 loss and set off next year and all no deductions are limited to gross total income first funda they are given for three reason good investment your uh, good income and your good expense okay now there are some deductions the list which i am reading now i'll share the screen it is given in section 80a c and they say 80a c may that this deductions um how do you say this yeah atac may they have given a list of these deductions will be given to you subject to the condition that you file your return on time so if you don't file your return on time all the deductions are not allowed to you yeah at double j double a there are some new employment 30% if you remember that's allowed but not all okay now we have also studied separately there's a revision video also for that 115 bac alternative tax regime that's a choice given to the individual and slab rates are different but then they are not allowed all the tax uh, deductions and all so if you are going for alternative tax regime you will not get any deduction under atc to at u okay ha ah, have i opened a vad and vad income tax so na samajh mein aa raha hai ni give some response and is my voice screen everything clear or not yes then here we begin i'm not writing much if required let me know acha okay okay ye to mcq ka screen hai na ye baat nahi kar rahi hai pehle let us revise the chapter are you able to um, see on screen yeah i have that one note material also what we have used for our regular class if required we can open that also okay so deductions is given for good investment good expense some good income and atac says if you want to take these deductions you need to file your return on time are you all having your hard copy of this material open in front of you that will be an added advantage hmm? so what all deductions you cannot take if you are uh, uh, not filing your return on time all ati series you know good income infrastructure and industrial undertaking and startup and housing projects and all okay right then at AT double J double A deductions in respect of new employees. Okay, this also you cannot take if you don't file your return on time. ATM the newly added one deductions in respect of the dividend. This is most important for the final students because this is only for corporates. So at inter level, corporates uh, dividends are not there. ATP, ATRRB, ATQB that is related to royalty. so for taking these deductions it is necessary to file your return on time yeah what about atc what about atd atu what about two of my most favorite in fact when i talk about deduction we should start with attpt and attdb usi se shuruaat karni chahiye because there is never an exam without attdt a smallest of salaried employee will also be taking these deductions hmm so for this this rule doesn't apply that you have to file the return on time theek hai right now let us start reading the list and the deductions the most detailed ones which is asked in exam is atc d t and u these four series if you want you can note down atc series atd series 
directly AT, TT, AT, TT, B, and AT, U. So I'm also taking up these only first weightage wise. Then I'll go to the remaining, which are, of course, I have taught you in detail, but these are like repeatedly asked. Hmm. Okay. So ATC says individual and HUF, if they do some good investment, they get a deduction uh, of one lakh fifty thousand maximum in section ATC. Now in ATC, what is the list that we will see very quickly? You know. ATC may, if you are an individual, you can put the money in LIC. Now, for this separate four or five marks question is also asked many times. So pay attention, look at the screen, look at the screen to revise this. Ye doubt bohat bar students who stand, I am clearing it again. LIC, life insurance premium, you can pay only for individual spouse, spouse means husband, wife, wife, husband. And children. Whenever I use the word children, it includes your adopted child and uh, stepchild and all. Now, premium obviously you have to pay by check. So any premium paid after 1-4-2012, then what, what is the policy value? Maturity value. That is called as the sum assured. So sum assured ka maximum 20%. Maximum 20% of the sum assured you can take as premium deduction if the policy is taken before 1 4 2012. Clear to all of you? So, suppose you have taken the policy in 2010 for 5 lakh. 5 lakh ka 20% kitna aara hai? 1 lakh. But you have paid the premium only 1 lakh 50,000. How much ATC deduction you can take? Maximum 1 lakh. Ma'am, remaining 50 ka kya hoga? Lakhs ho jayega. You have invested more. But if you have taken the policy before 1 for 2012, maximum deduction you can get for premium is 20%. But suppose you have paid only 50,000. 5 lakhs, 20% is 1 lakh tak allowed. But if you have paid only 50, how much deduction will be allowed? 50. So whatever premium you have paid, or 20%. Whichever is lower is allowed. After 1 for 2012, only up to 10% it is allowed. Okay? And then, after 1 for 2013, for disabled person, now disability is eyes or hearing or physical disability, you have to get a certificate from medical doctor. And if the person is disabled, then 15% deduction after 1 for 30. So only three dates are there. 1 for 2012 ke pehle 20%, after that 10%, and 1 for 2013 ke paas 15% deduction. Theek hai? All right. So this is all about LIC. Extra premium if you pay it will last. And you have to pay continuously the premium. Suppose you pay premium for one year, second year, aapne nahi pay kiya, they have ceased and all. Then whatever deduction you have availed, it will become taxable. So in ATC, how much money you can put in LIC? This restriction. And for whom? Individual, spouse and child. What about HUF? HUF can put for karta all the co-partners, but of course within the same limit. Anyone is having any doubt in LIC? Ucho? Specifically, this is like inter-final high jaga MCQs mein to bohat puste Very, very important. Great. All clear. Next. Yeah, these are all our regular problems. I'm not to be able to because if start doing this, it will take time. You can put the money in PPF hmm? or superannuation fund. Public provident fund maximum limit is 150. National saving certificate. Where you put the money and it, you get double after six years. Now here very important is, suppose I have taken NSC for 10,000. And you know, interest is auto-invested. I don't get the interest. After six years, 
I get double the amount, principal plus interest. So whatever interest is reinvested, tables are available for that. That interest is also covered in ATC. National Savings Scheme, ULIP plans, hmm? repayment of housing loan. When you take housing loan, go to income from house property. It's a win-win situation. Interest on loan is allowed as a deduction in self-occupied let-out property. So many of you were asking me doubts for interest on loan. So I've already made a separate video for that. You can check it and take note of the flowchart. Okay. Now, interest on loan, to I told you, there it will be deducted. Principal, you know, when you pay EMI, EMI includes interest plus principal. So principal is allowed to be deducted here, provided same construction is over in five years and all. You can put the money in equity linked savings things. Sukanya Samriddhi scheme. This is a name derived from Hindi meaning Sukanya means girl child up to 18 years. You can put the money. This is a government scheme, Sukanya Samriddhi scheme. And whatever money you uh, put for the girl child, you get a deduction in ATC. Some specified mutual funds, some infrastructure bonds, REC and uh, NHAI, you know, national highway bonds and all that are covered. And long-term deposits are covered. Post office deposit, you can make tax saving FDs in the bank and all, okay? But tax saving FDs in the bank, you can make only in your name. Now, that's why I've highlighted this only in the name of SSA. If I make tax saving FD in the name of my spouse, I will not get a deduction. Yeah, I can pay PPF and LIC for my son, for my spouse, for myself. But FD, tax saving FD, you have to make it for yourself. Okay. Now, such a big list of 20 items. All this put together, it is the upper limit is 1,50,000. Nice. So PPF 80,000, LIC 80,000, 160 and uh, 40,000 repayment of housing loan. Ma'am, I have put 2 lakh rupees. But outer column, the limit will be 1,50,000. If you are able to recollect our regular classes with this revision, then I have taught some worthwhile, very slowly, very slowly, but ATC deduction only took two classes for us, right or not, in routine. Now, ATCCC is pension plan. Some pension plan are there, hmm? you live and all the pension plans, if you put money, you get maximum deduction 150. Now, ATCCD deduction in respect of pension scheme. And who is contributing? Employee. If employees contributing to the NPS, National Pension Scheme, maximum how much employee can contribute? 10% of the salary. And what is the definition of salary? Basic plus DA. Here I have not written, but DA only which is included in terms of uh, retirement. Okay? And if you are not an employee, you are self-employed. You are doing your own uh, business. Still, if you have invested, then you can invest maximum 20% of the gross total income. Okay? So, ATCCD 1. How much money you can put in the pension scheme? Maximum 10% of salary if you are employed, central government or anywhere. And uh, if you are self-employed, 20% of your gross total income. ATCCT2, employer can put the money. How much? Same, 10%. And if your employer is central government, aha, central government some extra benefit. Aise yaad rakhna hai, 14%. Routine employer, private company ka employer. How much employer can put? You know, whatever employer puts is added in your income, salary income, again you get a deduction. Only for these deductions, we have specifically solved problems. And any teacher, whenever they explain the dialogues, the concepts, the weightage, the revision is there in your mind 24 hours. And it's a good, nice weekend. So after this, if you spare two hours in the evening, late night, tomorrow, early morning, 
to revise the material which I have given and the problems orally also, you will get full-fledged benefit of this revision class. Sir, ATCCD 1 and 2 ke liye we have solved problem. So, achha, one more last one with this added is ATCCD 1B, 50,000 deduction you can get if you put your money in national pension scheme over and above this all. So now there is an upper limit. I'll tell you what is upper limit. ATCC says ATC individual limit 150. AT triple C individual limit 150. Okay. ATCC D1 limit is 10%. Okay. Now put together for these three, the limit is 150,000. I want to repeat. ATC, AT triple C, and ATCCD one. You yourself are putting the money in NPS. These all put together, the limit is one lakh fifty thousand. And your employer can separately put up to ten percent. And beyond one lakh fifty thousand, also suppose you have put one lakh eighty thousand in NPS. 150 you are taking deduction here. 30,000 you can claim deduction here. Got it? So this ATCC, aggregate amount of ATC, AT triple C, AT1. ATCCD1 is employee. ATCCD2 is employer. ATCCD1B. Okay? Okay. So now with this, just I am opening up another chart for you. Go through it once and if you need any revision, tell me. Yeah. The table they go or revise for two minutes. I'll be back. Revise this and ask me any more. You want me to repeat any concept. Look at this. Hmm? Okay, tell me one thing, are we going fast or the speed of the revision class is fine, you all are following? Ha, this class is little, you know, exhausting. Continuous, continuous bona revision. Huh? Can you respond? Speed is fine, you all are following. Okay, thank you so much. And um MCQs my mother. MCQs karoke na, you all will enjoy. Okay, this is from our material only which I have given you all. 
ATC 150, ATCCD 150, ATCCD 1. 10% of salary or 20% and this all put together is 1,50,000. Now additional 50,000 and for employer 10% of the salary and if you are central government then 14%. Okay? Right. Salary includes uh, DA in terms of employment. Baki kuch bhi include nahi hoga. Okay. Now we are going towards our health. You all have become so conscious now for our health. Hmm? So D, D series is all for health. Right, chalo, shuru karte hai. D, D series is all for health. ATD, you get a deduction. Okay, I skip this one, ATCC, jitthi ke chodo. ATD karte hai. ATD may you can play health insurance. In ATC, what did you pay? Life insurance. In ATD, you pay health insurance. Okay. Right. Hmm. Okay. So AT, ATC may it was life insurance premium. ATD is health insurance premium. You know what is health insurance premium? When hospitalization is there, you get the bills. So premium you can pay for individual and HUF. Maximum limit of ATD is 25,000. For senior citizen and parents and all, it is 50,000. So for you, 25,000. For your parents who are senior citizens, 50,000. So maximum how much deduction you can get for the premium paid? 75,000. And if you are individual is also senior citizen and parents are also senior citizen, then how much deduction? 1 lakh. And you know, MediClaim includes up to rupees 5,000. You can include health checkup expense. You know, we go to diagnostic centers and we do health checkup expense. All that is included. And health checkup expense up to 5,000 for self, for spouse, for children, for parents. Milake 5,000 is the upper limit. You can pay it in cash. And this 5,000 is included in this limit. I want to repeat. Mediclaim limit of 2550 includes maximum 5,000 tuck health checkup expense which can be paid in cash. All this should be paid other than cash. ECS check, a NIFT, RTGS, all that. Okay? And you have to pay MediClaim for individuals, HUFs and all. Okay? So ATD is clear, MediClaim. Let us read note 3. You know, uh, many times nowadays, MediClaim policy kaise lete hai? At a time, they... Um, Pay the premium for three years. So suppose I have paid 30,000 premium for three years. Can I divide by three and take 10, 10,000 deduction every year? Answer is yes, I can. So let us read note three for that. Yeah, these ones I want to go slow because they are very, very important. Here. You can pay, take up to 5,000 expense and for self, spouse, dependent, children and parents. Parents, dependent or vese nahi hai. This is self, spouse, dependent, children or parents. Okay? And that is included in the limit of this. Uh, okay. And if you pay lump sum, then whatever you pay, you can divide and take it over the number of years. Okay? Here, one important point added is the fifth one. Listen to me what I'm saying. Sometimes when our parents go above 60, they don't get the MediClaim. Health policy bando jati because once you cross 60, more hospitalization and health issues. So many times the health policy is not renewed after 60. So if both the parents are not having health policy, then in ATD, instead of premium, Whatever expenditure you do, you can deduct. Medical expenditure incurred on the health of SSE, 
any member of family any of the parent up to 50000 senior citizen on whom health insurance is not eligible aggregate deduction including medical expenditure is 50000 so if senior citizens are hospitalized and if you don't have any medi claim but still the hospital bill was 60000 how much you can get the deduction 50000 subject to actual money spent this is only in case if you have not taken health insurance if you have taken health insurance for parent, parents for them 50 for you 25 is the maximum limit paid by check and this includes 5000 paid by cash theek hai right and for atd the definition is individual spouse children and parents atd at double d and at d d d now what i am teaching it will include brothers and sisters also who are dependent okay at double d and at d d d chalo what is at double d at d is over medically what is the limit 25000 for the parent what is the limit 50000 now at double d deduction individual will get or huf will get if any of the member is suffering from disability disability is to be defined as per the act and you have to go to any government hospital to get a certificate that certificate is usually valid for 12 months again you have to go right so if you are maintaining a handicapped child a handicapped brother sister parents relatives hmm, then you will get a flat deduction i use this word highlighted flat deduction of 75000 if it is normal disability and many times in the exam they are giving 100% blindness or relative is suffering so that is like severe disability 125 land deduction i want to repeat mr beans is maintaining a handicapped child and he has spent 30000 for the handicapped child but he is taking care of the handicapped child and he has spent 30000 whatever is his training maintenance expense still how much deduction he will get flat 75000 i hope you are getting if you are maintaining a handicapped child or relatives individual huf jo bhi hai and this time it includes brothers sisters parents who are dependent on you but they should be dependent on you okay and you are taking care of them how much deduction you will get 75000 flat severe hai to 125000 flat now the most important linked knowledge here i have already written in detail atdd or atu now what does this mean generally disabled people they file their own return if you remember minors income is clubbed in the hands of the parent who is having highest income in the very first year right or not and parent just get a deduction of 1500 per child In 1032, no upper limit of two children. Na, sir. So, but if the minor is handicapped, income will not be clubbed in the hands of the parent. If minor is, uh, you can say handicapped, or ya fir he is having income from talent, he files his own return. So now listen carefully to next what I am saying. If an individual is handicapped and he is filing his own return. he will get the same deduction in atu atu or atw maa bhi waise hi likha hu ye sab na bade important taglines hai okay some internet disturbance was there are you all connected We will wait two minutes for everyone to join in. Back. One minute. I'll put the message on the screen.
yeah some network issue was there are you all still connected with me can someone message Okay, it's a nice sunny day. I'm still barish being here. Productions to put nahi hai. Chalo. So I want to continue now where I left. That is, if you are maintaining a handicap, you can take flat seventy five or one twenty five. If handicap is filing his own return, he can avail flat deduction of seventy five or one seventy five in case of normal disability. One lakh twenty five thousand in case of the severe disability. Okay, so eighty double D or eighty U. All right. Now the third one. I said D series is for health. So eighty D is over mediclaim. Eighty double D is over. Now eighty D D B is deduction in respect of specified diseases. L I C that L I C no premium no pay karoge. With specified diseases, they have defined in the act. So, if anyone is hospitalized and they are being treated for, you know, these diseases like HIV, cancer, all these kind of diseases, then maximum deduction. This is not flat. Maximum deduction you get forty thousand, and for senior citizen up to one lakh. This is this has got nothing to do, dear student, with the health premium what you have paid. प्रीमियम जो आप पे करते हो वो तो एटी डी में आएगा एटी डी डी बी सपोज फॉर सम कैंसर एच आई वी दीज काइंड ऑफ स्पेसिफाइड डिजीजेस इफ अ पर्सन इज हेल्थ हॉस्पिटलाइज फॉर सेल्फ और फॉर एनी मेंबर ऑफ द फैमिली और एच ई एफ इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन हिम मैक्सिमम अमाउंट ऑफ डिडक्शन इज फोर्टी थाउजेंड सीनियर सिटीजन वन लैक हियर वी कंप्लीट ऑल डी सीरीज सी खत्म हो गया डी खत्म हो गया Are you all enjoying this? Are you all following this? ATD, Mediclaim, twenty-five fifty. You know, for only for Mediclaim, we have solved so many problems in the routine class. AT double D flat deduction. Whenever I say AT double D, पीछे से दौड़ के आता है ATU. ऐसे याद रखना. AT double D और ATU. You can't take both. Okay, you are managing a handicap. AT double D. Handicap is himself filing. AT. Then, चलो. Now, as I said, weightage-wise, I will go. So, I want to take up some very important ones. Fill in the blanks. MCQ, main computation of income. This ko sab khela ho. Kit Kat, Five Star, Dairy Milk, Silk. Sab khela do. ATTA, interest on. See, every every person who is filing the return is having saving account. So, saving account interest. What you get? No, six monthly. पोस्ट ऑफिस में कोऑपरेटिव सोसाइटी में इंडिविजुअल्स एंड एच एफ मैक्सिम अपू टेन थाउजेंड यू गेट अ डिडक्शन अंडर एटीटीटीजन लिमिट इज फिफ्टी थाउजेंड एंड डिडक्शन नॉट ओनली ऑन द सेविंग ऑल्सो ऑन द एफ डी See in my notes, I have already highlighted these clue words. कि आप भूलो नहीं. One day before the exam, if you revise, you should know. And see here also I have written A T T T or B. Okay, you are sixty years above. You are a senior citizen. Whatever is your saving account and F D and all interest, you can take fifty thousand. Now don't have that greed of availing A T T T. मिल रहा है ना? Instead of ten, you are taking fifty. No, enough then. <laughs> I'm joking, but I hope in that way it is clear to all of you. So A T T T A or A T T T B. Just a second, now huh? some students are not able to log in back. I put a message to them. ठीक है 
ATTT and ATTTB is all clear to all of you and AT you also. Chalo. Next one we will go for now. We will revise ATE series. E is for interest. E or I, A, jaise likhte hai na, aise aap rakhna hai. So E is for interest. So deduction in respect of payment as interest on loan for higher studies. E is for education loan if you have taken. For whom? For self, for spouse, for children. And you are repaying interest. There is no upper limit. But for eight years, whatever housing loan, uh, sorry, educational loan interest if you take from banks, financial institutions, charitable trust. You know, Ajkal Samaj or Sanskars also, they give you loan. So you get a deduction. So it is for what? Education loan after 12th for full-time course in India. If you take an education loan in India and you are going for your further studies to Australia, you cannot get a deduction. Education in India above 12 for your higher studies, whatever interest you pay. Now here Google, twice when they have asked problem in exam, no? Education loan repaid is 35,000. Interest is 15,000. How much deduction you will take? Tell me in the chat box. Education loan repaid is 35,000 and interest repaid is 15,000. 35 loge, 15 loge, 50, 50,000. Only 15,000. So they will confuse you like this. Ma'am, the repayment of principal kaha deduct hoga? Housing loan. And where? In ATC. Clear to all of you? Right. Chalo. Next then. Uh, ATEE and ATEEA. These two, they go hand in hand. These are for, you know, small people who are taking housing loans. Uh, interest on loan is deductible in house property. So let out. And being let out, there is no upper limit. Self-occupied, there is an upper limit of 2 lakh. Hai na? 2 lakh ke upper limit hai na? Right. Over and above 2 lakh. Interest on housing loan, you get a deduction here. Subject to conditions. So deduction is in respect of interest on loan for house property which you have taken in 1670 and 50,000 is the limit over and above. I want to go to the note and read the terms and conditions. Loan kitna hona, property ki value kitna hona. Just remember this. It's in there so many huge time questions in this. Yeah. ATEE says uh, if you take a loan, interest on loan for individual, deduction up to 50,000 over and above 2 lakh what you are getting in house property. Loan should be taken in 1617. Maximum loan should not exceed 35 lakhs. Property's value should not exceed 50 lakh. Now tell me in 50 lakhs you are getting just one bedroom hall kitchen. So small people who are buying house with value less than 50 lakhs this. Payment should be made out of income. Hmm? They should not own any other house and no double deduction they should take. Now, what is the difference between ATEE and ATEEA? I'll tell you. This was only for loan taken in 16 and 17. Okay? Now, we will go for ATEEA. This is nice. Amount of deduction up to 1,50,000 ATEEA. Okay. Here it is 1,50,000 deduction you are getting over and above 2 lakh. But loan should be taken between 2019 and 21. 19, 20, 20, 21. Value of the house should not exceed 45 lakhs. Loan ka koi limit nahi hai. And no other deduction. And one nice deduction they have added. Nowadays, you know, pollution ke liye, we all are quite aware about it. So if you are buying electric vehicle, okay, on loan. So for that electric vehicle which you have taken on loan, whatever loan you have taken, whatever interest you are paying, 
maximum interest up to 150000 you can deduct provided the loan is sanctioned between 2019 to 2023 80 e i'll, I'll revise all pehle ye dekh lo kisi ko doubt hai this question also in uti so today evening if you check up this question orally along with this it will be clear Hmm. So we will revise all the ATE series from the table. All right. I said ATE series is for interest. So this was for education loan. This is housing loan taken in 16 and 17. Housing loan taken in 19 to 21. But here it is 51, 50. ATEED. We have taken loan to purchase an electric vehicle. Battery operated vehicle you have taken and um, loan is sanctioned between 19 to 23 up to 1 lakh 50,000. Next now, ATG, most important. ATG, you know, like uh, listen all of you two minutes very carefully, right? If you want to write and keep in exam. As we have toppings on the ice cream, like that in the total income problem, there are two favorite toppings. One is agricultural income. So, you know, in tax calculation, you have to apply the step method. Agricultural income, non-agricultural, calculate the tax. Right. So, either that one or ATG, because in ATG also you have to calculate in a different way. Ye dono may say any one of the deduction is surely coming in a combined problem, you know, where you have salary, income, business head and so on. So ATG is for what? Donation. As soon as I say donation, the first indicator in your mind for filling in the blanks, MCQ's hot favorite question, donation above 2000 should be paid other than cash. Genuinely, I have given a donation to a temple and I want to claim deduction, but I donated in cash 10,000. No deduction. Are ma'am, 2,000 tak to allow karo? No. Above 2,000, any donation if you are making and if you want to claim a deduction, you have to make it by mode other than cash. Yes. Uh, two minutes, I want all of you to recollect. Are you having that... Uh, you know, one flashcards I used to send in the class and I've made a video for all the flashcards. It is having all the amendments put together. Like scientific research, no weighted deduction is there. Donation above 2000 if they pay in cash. Don't. Donation, this is student do ATG. Are you check if they have paid in cash. 10,000 donations, they will not get a deduction. So, this should be the first thing. Now, let us go to ATG. If you donate, how much deduction is allowed? Okay. Uh, more than 45 minutes we are in front of the screen. So exactly look your watches and two minutes break. Thoda aankh hata lo screen se. Udar udar hawa kha ke aajau. Wapis two minutes break. Until then anyone is having any doubt you can put. After two minutes break we will continue with ATG. Jaldi se break leke aaja. And any doubts are there, keep putting in the chat box.
Okay, any doubt anyone is having? <laughs> 10 minutes more we need for the revision of important sections and then we will go for the MCQs. Okay, right. Now, donations when you give 80 G, deduction you get in four ways. Some donations are 100% allowed directly, like all this, Prime Ministers and National Culture Fund and in that recent one added is PM Scares Fund. After this pandemic, they have added PM Citizen Assistance and Relief in Emergency Situation. So PM Care Fund and National Fund, Clean Ganga, Swachh Bharat, all this is added directly 100%, whatever you donate. 50% directly in that only four names are there and for remembering this for exam purpose. This is like Gandhi family, Jawaharlal Nehru, Indira Gandhi and Rajiv Gandhi Memorial Fund and PM's Drought Relief Fund. Now, 100% direct and 50% direct is over. Now, 100% and 50% subject to qualifying amount. So, now first we should know what do you mean by the qualifying amount. So, qualifying amount is first you calculate adjusted total income. Adjusted total income, what I am calculating for ATG, that same is used for ATGG also. ATGG is a separate deduction. We will take it up next. Okay. Now, what do you mean by adjusted total income? Gross total income minus all the other deductions you give from ATC to ATU other than ATG. And any income on which income tax is not payable. If generally, we don't take exempt income in the outer column. Just say PPF interest. It is exempt. So we write in inner column, outer column, we write a nil. Long term capital gain and short term capital gain on shares. They have a separate method, section 111A and 112A. So long term capital gain, pura. And short term capital gain only on shares. Remove it. Okay? Don't remove the casual income. If casual income is included, don't deduct it. So, for adjusted total income, kaise karna hai? Gross total income minus long term capital gain minus short term capital gain only on shares and minus the other deductions. If you do all this, then um, <clears throat> you will get adjusted total income. Okay? This adjusted total incomes, 10% is the qualifying amount. 100% direct allow karo, 50%. But now what deductions I am taking, they are 100% of 50%, but maximum kitna deduction milega? 10% of adjusted total income. Now how to calculate this? You need to solve problems in detail. They are there in your material. They are there in our classwork. Okay? Did you all get it? 10% of the adjusted total income or total donations, whichever is lower, is the qualifying amount. 10% of adjusted comes to 50,000. And you have put only 30,000 in your, um, say, okay, 10% of adjusted uh, total income comes to 50,000. And suppose you have donated 3 lakh to a temple. So this or this, whichever is lower. So how much deduction you can take? 50,000. And this is the qualifying amount. If you give to temple and all, it's going 50% hoga. I want to repeat. Qualifying amount is your actual donation, 3 lakh to the temple or 10% of the adjusted total income, whichever is lower. And of that, 100% or 50%. That depends. Now, 100% may you have a very limited list. That is family planning related donation if you are giving. 
to some government and all or indian olympics related okay and 50% you have all temple trust gurudwara society school colleges you know so they all come most of the schools same if you see and all they are they all come with this only hmm? so then it is uh, coming under the 50% so to complete now atg 100% direct 50% direct 100% mein do hi hai family planning and olympics 100% subject to qualifying amount 50% subject to qualifying okay that's all for your atg we have finished the revision and next now i'm going to atg g a b c these are asked in mcqs only what i'm taking now na atg to problem aata hai pakka atg g a scientific research okay if you are having business then 100% whatever you donate for scientific research in house outside kahin pe you are allowing but if or for all the ssc is not having business income i am a salaried employee but i am interested in donating to drdo hyderabad they do scientific research okay 100% of the deduction but again donation above 2000 should be other than cash atgb contribution by companies to political party or electoral trust c in business head if you give any donations to political party you don't get a deduction acha advertisement in political parties brochure one side bjp and second side your companies are not allowed advertisement souvenir pamphlet kahi allowed nahi hai but you want to support registered you know registered political party which are registered under people's authority then 100% deduction you can claim okay so under atggb if you are contributing to political party or electoral trust electoral trust is a channel they collect the donation from public and they give to the registered political party so 100% deduction you will get and atggc is contribution by any person atggb kiske liye hai company donating to political party atgg a scientific research atggc other than company those who are donating for political party 100% of the sum should be paid by check up to 2000 cash is allowed only for atg and atgg a ggb and gc to pura hi hai okay now i am going back to atg c yeah atg g we are doing now suppose you are paying rent ha na aap rent pay kar rahe ho and you are a salaried employee go to your salary chapter dear students if employer is paying rent rfa if you are paying rent and they are giving you allowance hra so that's all fine hra you get from the company and whatever rent you are paying you are taking a deduction under 1013a house rent allowance but if you are self employed and you are staying in the rented house how do you get a deduction 5000 per month rent paid minus 10% of the adjusted total income or 25% whichever is late fir se ek baar if you are an individual and if you are paying rent of your house yeah your personal house where you are staying and you want to avail a deduction you can get provided your spouse your children you should not have any other house in that city your own house you are given on rent in kokatpalli and you are staying in next to the school of your child and you are paying rent you don't get any deduction atgg deduction is for individuals who are paying rent other than hra because if you are getting hra hra mein to aap deduction claim karte ho na rent pay so here also how much deduction you are getting 5000 rent paid minus 10% or 25% theek hai right 
सबको मिलता है डिडक्शन एटी जे डबल जे ए वॉज ओनली फॉर कंपनी अर्लियर now all the tax audit cases they will get a deduction for that we will read no tax i know i have been scrolling up and down but aise hi padhna hai isko so only few are left and then we will go for the mcqs yeah look at this deduction in respect of additional employment unemployment is a problem so you are generating additional wages whatever you are paying 30% of the new employees okay provided your books of accounts are audited you have filed the return on time and this will be given for 3 years hmm but additional employee does not include an employee who is drawing more than 25000 or an employee for whom entire contribution is paid by government hmm so pf wo sab nahi hai aapke liye temporary worker hai an employee who has worked for less than 240 days and an employee who does not recover na participate in the rpf means you know temporary workers who come and they take the payment every day they are if you pay them wages you can't claim 80 double j double a deduction and to work this out we have already solved these problems in our regular classes you can refer that theek hai so 80 double j double a is for 30% deduction of whatever wages you have paid g j all the series are over theek hai chal now the last one but the newly added is atm you know till last year we had cdt concept cdt ddt so dividend received from indian company was exempt from this year dividend received by indian company from indian company is taxable in income from other sources but if you are a domestic company and you are receiving dividend and you are paying dividend also then dividend received what you have received dividend and taxed in income from other sources or whatever dividend you have paid before due date of filing the return whichever is lower is deductible once again atm is started from financial year 2021 very important for the final students atm deduction is not allowed to individual hf no ma'am but i am an individual i am investing in share market i am getting so much of dividend every dividend is taxable from this year in your hands but if you are a company you have received like you know inter corporate dividends and you have taxed it in income from other sources you are a domestic company then whatever dividend you have received and whatever you have paid whichever is lower is allowed to be deducted and you know dividend received is after that expense up to 20% of dividend received you can pay interest on loan which you have taken to invest in the share market right now related to royalties copyrights and all what you bring in india 3 lakh or amount of royalty only limit is enough how to calculate this is a detailed procedure agar part mein aata hai lump sum aata hai expense kitna allowed hai that's not there in our syllabus humne nahi kiya patent copyrights hai articles hai other than school books and all whatever royalty you receive or 3 lakh whichever is lower and these were the beauties we have already covered pehle okay ask your doubts otherwise we will go to the mcqs i have skipped taking 80 i series frankly if you try to remember everything no you cannot so 80 i you know 100% for the 5 years 50% hai but just read this list enough that they have to file the return on time okay so ati a and all is good income okay let us scroll ek ek karke kahin kuch koi note miss to nahi ho gaya 
Excuse me. This one is a nice table now. Huh? You can expect a salary question with this ATC series. You can note down. We have one concept, one problem. We health say related. They could get problems on that. Solve kiye the. E series is for interest or G for donations. Donations related problem. Additional uh, wages. What you have generated. Yeah, this you can pick up. Ek bar revise kar lete. Dividend income. Gross total income by way of dividend, which you have received, and dividend distributed is whatever you have paid. Whichever is least, you get a deduction in ATM. Is this clear to all of you? Hmm? Right. No double deduction. You should take and take care of the upper limit. Acha, very important is I think these are problems. Maybe I have solved them. You know. Eligible gross total income. अब ये क्या term हुआ? Eligible gross total income. Yeah, this is like something very important. Please wait all of you two minutes. ये देखो. You know, no deductions are allowed from long term capital gain, short term capital gain on shares and casual income. So in your gross total income. Okay, it's not mentioned here. I mean, I mentioned to be up here. Yeah. So suppose I'm having gross total income. Are you all checking what example I'm having? Ten lakhs. In that, three lakhs is casual income. मुझे lottery लगा था. And two lakhs is short term capital gain on shares, which is subject to STT. So three plus two, five lakh is not eligible only for deduction. So gross total income is ten lakhs. How much is the eligible gross total income? Only remaining five lakh. This is like an indicator. How you drive a vehicle and the mindset is. आगे वाला ही showing the right indicator. हम automatic थोड़ा left हो जाते हैं. So in your gross total income, if you have a casual income, if you have any long term capital gain, property, jewelry, shares, any short term capital gain only on shares. So on these three chapter six A deductions ATC to ATU are not allowed. So just don't take blindly. Man, PPF me to dead lakh rupee dala hai. I want to claim, but pata chala your gross total income is only share trading income. You can't even earn one rupee in PPF though you have paid. Is this last point what I'm discussing clear, or I should go to notebook and make a flow chart and make it clear? Bolo. आप लोग चेक कर रहे हैं यू ऑल टेल मी वेदर व्हाट आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग इज क्लियर और नॉट एलिजिबल ग्रॉस टोटल इनकम इफ यू राइट एन एग्जाम नो हाउ स्मार्ट इंप्रेशन यू विल प्ले वाइल वर्किंग आउट डिडक्शन प्रॉब्लम आई हैव ऑलरेडी टॉट यू हाउ टू राइट इट एंड प्रेजेंटेशन प्रेजेंटेशन शुड रिफ्लेक्ट योर नॉलेज ठीक है ये सब अब रूटीन प्रॉब्लम है या So here we complete with the revision for all the deductions. Anyone is having any doubt or any repetition or at least all clear? Did I do weightage wise properly? Give some feedback. Two minutes, may relax, Kano, and then we can go to the MCQs list. All clear. Good, good. Yeah, eligible gross total income. If you want, write down and dictate your gross total income. Minus long term capital gain, minus short term capital gain on shares, minus casual income. 
Of course, what you are minusing is taxable, but this is not eligible for deduction. So you will get the eligible. ठीक है चल. Thank you, thank you. Yes, ma'am. All clear, all clear. Good, good, good. चल. Please don't hesitate कि सबको clear है मैं कैसे doubt पूछूँ? No doubt, it's small. No, पूछ लो जो भी doubt है. Okay. And now you know whatever MCQs I'm reading, it will say where uh, 115 BAC is not excise. Because if you remember what is 115 BAC, alternative tax regime. If you go for this anyhow, you're not allowed ATC to ATU deduction. So if I'm talking about deductions, it's going to be that assume that 115 BAC you have not availed. Am I making it clear? If you go for 115 BAC, alternative tax regime, here anyway is not taking ATC to ATU deduction. Okay. So now we will see maximum how many we can cover up. These are nice MCQ. Today I am discussing a little bit. I will give you time on screen and you should solve it and then I will check out. Okay. Right. Where option of 115 BAC is exercised, you are going for alternative tax regime. Okay. Then shall not be allowed any deduction under ATC to ATU. ATC to ATU, koi deduction nahi milta hai. Ye, ek, ye milega. Section 80 double J for the new employment. Okay. One second. Hmm. So this one you will get. Which is the answer? C1. Now where SSE has not excised the option in respect of LIC to PF etc. Okay. Deduction under ATC in respect of LIC. Kis kis ko milta hai? ATC is deduction any SSE only individual HUF or individual or individual and HUF who are resident in India. Any individual and HF. Any individual and HF can take ATC's deduction. Not necessarily only resident. Okay. Great. Some of you are already reading and putting the answers. Deduction under ATC is allowed maximum how much? 1,50,000. Some of the questions are tricky and nice. I have marked it. At least these I should discuss. Thode flow me karte hai. Then I'll give you time. I'll show you on screen. Get to attempt karna. Where an SSE has not excise option, deduction under ATC is allowed from gross total income. Gross total income excluding this, 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 this. This is matlab mujhe lagta hai abhi note bana ke likho. See if you don't remember this point while solving the question also you can go wrong. Tarun, Navya, Ashwini, so nice of you that enthusiastically you are attempting. Read it, read it, word to word. Paro. Gross total income exclusive of short term capital gain, 111A wala, matlab ho, 15%. Long term capital gain, any. And casual income, winning from lotteries, horse races. Isko chhod ke, you will give. That's why I use that beautiful word called as Eligible gross total income. Nice, clear to all of you. Right. Or then, where an SSE has excise uh, option, not excise option, we have to pay for ATC, LIC premium can be paid for himself only, a spouse, or spouse and minor child, or any child. Or right? This is like superb question. What is the answer D? In my routine class, I give example. We are all daughters only. I am all sisters. My father is paying LIC for married daughters. And he is claiming ATC deduction. So, can an individual pay LIC for himself or spouse for any child? Not minor child. Major child, independent child. And you can say married daughters. Kisi ke bhi pay kar sakte ho LIC. Theek hai? Lekin, lekin, listen all of you. You know, this lekin word is like reminder for all of you. If you put money in tax saving FDs, that you can do it for yourself. PPF also you can pay. 
for yourself, child, and spouse and children. ATC, no entry is given to parents. Parents will enter in health issues. ATD, knock knock, parents come inside. And ATDD, or bada, brother, sister, dependent, no, come, come. If they are disabled, we will take care. If they are suffering from specific, like this, you remember. ATC, narrow minded, self, spouse, children. ATDD, parents, welcome. ATDD, DDB, okay, okay, brother, sisters, if you are dependent, come, welcome. अच्छा सिक्स वाले का आंसर डी है क्वेश्चन पढ़ने से पहले लवली लवली दैट्स व्हाई आई ऑलवेज आई एम ग्लैड टीचिंग यू ऑल ऑलवेज वेर एन एस एस सी हैज नॉट एक्साइज एटीसी फॉर एल आई सी पेमेंट इज मेड बाय एस एस सी फॉर चाइल्ड देन द चाइल्ड मे बी मैरिड हाँ हाँ जस्ट ना आई शुड टोल यू हाँ ठीक है एच यू एफ में यू कैन पे फॉर एनी ऑफ द मेम्बर नो ऑफ द एच यू एफ ओके Some questions, if they are repeated, you know, we can go fast. A काम करते हैं. Eight, nine, tenth, or eleventh. ठीक है. ये पढ़ो. एक साथ करो. A B C D ऐसे लिखो. Two minutes time. Or I will check it together. Eight, nine, tenth, eleventh. Eight, nine, tenth, eleventh. करो. Yeah, you are only right. The answer. Continue sitting, sitting. Sometimes you know it's straining. So the laptop just to use. करना है. करो करो. Okay. Eighth answer is B, is it? Where an SSE has okay. Great, great, great. Now we are seeing all of you are giving nice answers. Where an SSC has excised, uh, okay. I have to read. No, the SSC has paid LIC premium during the year for two lakh. It is taken on one fourth. So twenty thousand का के deduction मिलेगा. Two lakh का ten percent. Before one fourth two thousand twelve, if you have taken the policy, then twenty percent. One fourth two thousand thirteen के बाद for handicap fifteen percent. Where an uh, ATC PPF contribution must be paid by individuals in the PPF account for anyone you can pay. Hmm? For himself, spouse, and children, PPF you can pay for children also. So ninth answer is not B, dear. It is C. Ten. 
whereas uh, for claiming atc individual in respect of ppf contribution by any child child should be any child dependent theek hai dependent child you know lic ppf all this have got nothing to do with the dependency you can pay for them so the answer is c for claiming deduction in atc national saving certificate should be acquired only in his name nsc fd only in his own name then where an ssc is put the money in national saving scheme in his own name sukanya samruddhi ne this is individual making payment for jeevan dhara and akshay and all ha huh? some specific plans are there okay this is all in his own name yeah this one is a nice question where ssc has not excess and ssc discontinues the lic before premium of 2 years okay now if you pay lic you claim deduction this year next year it was due you didn't pay it then whatever mentioned in a aggregate amount deduction from income so allowed in respect of previous year shall be deemed to be income and shall be liable to tax third kya beside what is a the case of past years in which deduction was allowed shall be reopened and tax shall be recomputed no 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 this c saying that those years return you file again no not like that last year i availed atc deduction this year i did not pay it lapsed so last year uske pehle year whatever you have availed deduction everything will become taxable in the current year so answer is b you will not reopen and revise those returns it will all become taxable now this year acha hai clear hai yeah theek hai chalo next then we will go up 16th one where an ssc is ex not like the member of ulip plan terminate participation same the same here 16 wala hmm? so it will become taxable annual accrued interest of nse will it be allowed deduction yes i told you interest is accrued so you will get the deduction where uh, claiming atc the payment or deposit should be fd you know if you make any fd and deposit should be made out of income chargeable to income tax or out of any income or any income during the current year any source of income or out of salary income during the current year whatever see when you are putting the money in ppf and all you should earn and invest that's why we are giving you you can't take loan from someone and then put the money in ppf got it right atc shall be allowed for uh, tuition fees other than you know development fees and all tuition fees should be paid in any university college educational institute within india c is the answer aha uh -huh, sorry not c very wrong d within india this is to india ke andar ya bahar no it should be in india is the way i am reading clear or shall we go more slow samajh mein aa raha hai where an ssc is not excise deduction the atc for tuition fee shall be for full time education hmm kisi ke bhi liye individual ke liye member ke liye kisi ke bhi liye aap le sakte hain atc in respect of the tuition fees allowed no hf will not get a deduction for the tuition fees tuition fees ka hf will get a deduction only for lic and ppf lic hf can pay for karta in co partners ppf also hf can pay tuition fees to sirf individual ko hi milega tuition fees yeah see mcqs karne se very in depth the knowledge is clear ATC in respect of tuition fees is allowed, of course, for only two children. Two children. 
माइनर और डिपेंडेंट वो सब जरूरी नहीं है टू चिल्ड्रन और माइनर इसलिए जरूरी नहीं है बिकॉज इट्स लाइक अब ट्वेल्थ ओनली फुल टाइम एजुकेशन तो ट्वेल्थ के बाद ही नॉर्मली विल ऑल बिकम मेजर नो सो फॉर अ मेजर चाइल्ड ऑल्सो यू कैन पुट द मनी सुकन्या समृद्धि स्कीम ओनली फॉर द गर्ल चाइल्ड वेरी गुड वेरी गुड द वे यू आर टाइपिंग एंड सेंडिंग चलो फिर दो मिनट टाइम लो आई एम योर ओनली एक साथ पढ़ो और करो उसमें मजा आ रहा है Rather than me reading, no, you all read on your own. I'm here only. Ask. 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 Yeah, twenty-five onwards. In the meanwhile, I will just recollect and salary business head capital gain all revision lecture by over. I think house property is left. Please message me because you all are doing it so nicely. Next, which topic you want a revision? TDS, TCS, करें या house property करें. ओके टाइम इज ओवर शुरू करें डिडक्शन अंडर एटीसी इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ द टर्म डिपॉजिट विद द शेड्यूल्ड बैंक इज अलाउड इफ द टर्म डिपॉजिट इज फॉर अ पीरियड एटलीस्ट फाइव इयर्स नॉट लेस देन फाइव इयर्स When an SSC is a deduction under ATC in respect of post office deposit is also five years. Contribution for annuity plan, pension plan, you can put it only for yourself. Eighty triple C maximum, kitna hai? One lakh fifty thousand. Okay, very smart answer. When an SSC is not the amount received from surrender of annuity or pension plan by SSC or his nominee, it will all be exempt. Hmm? Pension plans and all is exempt up to a limit, no sixty percent on maturity. Whatever you get from pension plan, it is exempt in sixty percent and premature me twenty five percent. Beyond that is taxable also. Or us pe TDS bhi katta hai. TDS chapter me bhi hai pension ka. Okay. Eighty CCD in respect of pension scheme. पेंशन स्कीम तो सबको अलाउड है ना सेंट्रल नॉन गवर्नमेंट एनी एनी एम्प्लॉय बट इफ यू आर सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट योर एम्प्लॉय कैन कंट्रीब्यूट फोर्टीन परसेंट अदरवाइज टेन परसेंट या नो 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 दिस एटीसीसीडी पेंशन स्कीम अभी हमने किया ना एटीसीसीडी वन एटीसीसीबी टू वन बी दिस इज ऑल अलाउड टू ऑल 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 ठीक है ओके ATCCD deduction हाँ कितना allowed है employees and employers ten percent and in case of self employed it is twenty percent and this is the answer employee and employer both can put up to twenty percent of the basic plus DA and if you are a self employed you can put twenty percent of gross total income and additional under that ATCCD one uh, B Fifty thousand you will get. ठीक है, right. ATCCD in case of government employee है, तो फिर आपके लिए ज़्यादा है ना? D वाला. Employee can contribute ten percent. Employer can contribute forty percent. And additional employee can contribute fifty percent. ठीक है? Am I going fast or you are getting it? Nice, no? See when you do uh, MCQs, no, it enhances your knowledge so in depth. The whole building is standing tall, but the pillars, no, these are all in depth pillars. Okay, right. 
ya weightage and all i'll tell you in the end not is the important time to you study weightage why 25% of your paper is this 40% and we will take one separate class on how to attend the online center based exam for the ca hmm? right so next is 33 where uh, atcc deduction ab ye atcc bahut ho gaya we can skip now we know now ATD is allowed on account of preventive health checkup. SSC, his family or parents. सब के लिए allowed है ना? Mary claim में, thirty four में, या right. And where an SSC ATD on account of health checkup is allowed only when payment is made by cheque. ऐसा नहीं है cheque. Any other mode other than cash. This will be the answer. Thirty fifth answer. Any mode. Including cash, yeah, because it is health checkup than cash. Other than health checkup, any mode other than cash. So thirty-five answer. They go. How many nearby answer? Hai. And in the rush of completing, we go wrong. Answer is any mode including cash because it's health checkup. ATD on account of preventive health checkup is allowed maximum to the extent of five thousand. Which is a part of twenty five thousand. Five thousand deduction is allowed, and it's a part of twenty thousand. Clear to all of you? Some I have marked very important. Just ten minutes, we'll complete it on time. Yes, yeah, sure. Where uh, deduction under ATD in respect of medical premium is for SSC individual or HUF individual or HUF who is resident in India. Okay. So it's for any individual or HUF. Resident is only for the tuition fees and all. ATD is allowed if the premium is paid to um, LIC, general insurance, any insurance company. It will be allowed, you know, to any insurance company, general insurance, other insurance, any insurance, not life insurance. So in fact, the answer should be B. Because this is ATD, na. If you write any insurance, it will cover LIC. LIC ni chalta na. I hope all of you know Religair and all these are general insurance policies. Okay. Deduction under ATG is allowed to an individual for premium paid to insure the health of kis kis ke liye aayega? Individual himself, individual and his family, and dependent parents. An individual himself or his family and the parent, any parent, dependent का कुछ नहीं है. ATD is self, spouse, children, parents. AT double D में you include dependent parents, brothers and sisters. ठीक है? I think enough of questions. सब ये ATD वाले ही हैं. So if you are very easy, we can skip. Let me see. I have marked few important ones. Two and four, and still sir will send you this PDF also. And if you feel any bit is not clear, ma'am, by this answer, you can ask me. Yeah, forty third I have marked. Where uh, the quantum of deduction under ATD in case of individual twenty five or twenty five for himself and twenty five for parents, twenty five for himself or his family, and fifteen for parents, fifty for individual, and his second one. Twenty-five for himself or family, and twenty-five for the parent. Mere hi twenty-five ho ja raha hai to spouse or children ko bhi parents me le le aise nahi. Self, spouse and children twenty-five, parent twenty-five. That's the basic limit. Okay, if parent are senior, then fifty thousand, of course. Uh, quantum of deduction allowed for ATD in case of HUF same. इंक्लूडिंग मेडिकल ट्रीटमेंट वो फिर रेसिडेंट के लिए ही मिलेगा इंडिविजुअल एच यू एफ वो आर रेसिडेंट एटी डबल डी एटी डी एन ए टी सी में रेसिडेंट का कुछ नहीं है अच्छा दीज आर वेरी नाइस बन सब डबल डबल बिट क्वेश्चन 
where a deduction under ATDD shall be allowed for seventy five thousand, irrespective of actual expend uh, deducher for forty thousand, for one lakh, irrespective or for to the extent of actual expenditure or deposit or fifty thousand, whichever is lower. Okay, so maximum kitna ala hoga. 50, डी है आपका एटी डबल डी इज दैट डिजेबल्ड पर्सन सेवेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड इन ऑफ द एक्चुअल या ओके चेक विथ मी आई होप यू ऑल आर गेटिंग एटी डबल डी डिजेबल्ड को आप मैनेज कर रहे हो तो सेवेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड फ्लैट इर रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ योर डिडक्शन एक फिफ्टी वाला अच्छा क्वेश्चन है डिडक्शन अंडर एटी डी 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 स्पेसिफाइड डिजीज इफ द पेशेंट इज लेस देन सिक्सटी इयर्स देन फोर्टी थाउजेंड इर रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ एनी एक्सपेंडिचर फोर्टी थाउजेंड और एक्चुअल एक्सपेंडिचर नो दिस इज अप टू फोर्टी थाउजेंड So the answer for this one is D bit. It's not flat. Flat is only for disabled, seventy five and one twenty five. For eighty uh, DDB specified diseases, forty thousand or actual expenditure, whichever is less. Okay. All right. So like this, they are very simple questions. I think you'll be able to do one or two important ones. I've marked. Ha. Huh. Ab jaise eighty hai by way of interest on loan. Five years, eight years, ten years. So eight years is the maximum limit. Very easy questions now they all are. Eighty shall be allowed higher education of SSC himself, spouse, or children, or for whom you are a guardian. Sab ke liye. I am working and I am taking for myself for the studies ke liye education loan allowed. Self, spouse, children. Sab ke liye. Even for the child for whom you are a guardian. You can take an education loan and it is allowed. And you know these housing loans and these vehicles related loans, you have to take it from a financial institute. You can't take a loan from your friend. Those that are paise do main bike kharita on that battery operated bike and all. No, those loans are to be taken from proper financial institutes or housing uh, banks. Okay, they have given. Okay, these are true and false. Karuna, five minutes we will take extra one to nine just, and in uh, some of the exams, CA exams and all, you have to write true false with reasoning. CA may be allowed. You can write true false two two two. Karuna, click off and hear only and check up. Nice question. Just five minutes more, and then we'll close. Yeah, T F F T whatever it is, you write generally, no problem. Okay, shall we discuss deduction in ATC is allowed one forty false. Yeah, so nice answers you are sending. I always say, dear students, keep your chat open to all. You know how you are sitting in the live class, sixty seventy students, or not? पीछे से आप आंसर करते हो ऐसे confidently, है ना? So you should have uh, your chats open for all. It's false. Uh, ATE for interest on loan is eight years, so this is also false. एटी डबल जी द लिमिट इज फाइव थाउजेंड ये भी फॉल्स क्या बात है सब तो फॉल्स नहीं है एटी यू शेल बी अलाउड ओनली वन एस एस सी सफरिंग फ्रॉम अ परमानेंट डिजेबिलिटी एट द बिगनिंग फॉल्स 
disability at any time during the year and not permanent that uh, what do you say severe and all that will be decided by government hospital atqqb in respect of income from royalty is allowed only to individual who is resident in india very true if you bring royalty from outside india you know patent copyright author so you have to deduction milega atc to at you are not available for long term capital gain but the same is available for short term capital gain other than st true short term capital gain you get deduction other than shares wala there is no sectorial cap in case of payment investment made for claiming deduction under section atc sectorial cap nahi hai true matlab you know ppf lic ye wo uh, sab mila ke 150 hai ek 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 nahi hai okay next deduction under atc is allowed in certain amount deposited in an account under senior citizen rules yes you can true subscription for any bonds nabard shall be eligible for deduction under at c nabard ke bonds jo hai na specific nabard bonds you cannot claim a deduction no here what you can claim is nha bonds <coughs> rec bonds not nabard nabard bank ke bonds pe nahi milta okay so like this some fill in the blanks are there they are very simple with answer sir will send you the pdf okay was this one and a half hour no one and a half hour no two hours almost like was this fruitful i thoroughly enjoyed discussing with all of you revising the gist of the deductions weightage wise indicator atc atd last may attt atu ye char ko pehle kar lena hi hello and then you go for the remaining this is the way you should do revision one day before exam and now dear students um very important thing yeah yeah we will share it for inter final all the students sure 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 thank you so much and even if we miss out you message we will do it okay and now listen all of you now that you are already preparing at home we are not making a meeting every day many students are asking me the question ma'am how do i prepare so that one day before because you are having exams on alternate days sometimes continuously whatever it is now it is very important that suppose you are doing today and tomorrow you have decided to do deductions so in our material there are 28 questions in our routine material so e for easy same as third not to be done again very important there are one or two deductions question if you check in my material tabhi bhi maine bola tha this is very important this is covering so many deductions so you use different pens or stick ons or mark so that one day before exam you first revise all the concepts and booster notes anyone has missed the class for salary business i take the booster notes from your friends we have written wonderful booster notes after every chapter in the inter classes so you revise the concepts the booster notes the concepts the booster notes for the whole syllabus and then time permits chalo some problem i have to go through orally so these are the matlab aise table pe taiyar milna chahiye aapko ki what so what you have to study one day before exam if i tell you one week before exam it's not going to help you that's why i'm saying you now that you plan ki okay i am reading everything now in depth and of course it's there in your subconscious mind see how you all are answering kyunki tab bhi kiya tha yaad hai 150 150 10 baar to tab learn kar liya tha in our routine classes so you will recollect never say to yourself that i ma'am have studied everything but i keep on forgetting it's relax it's everyone's mindset i remember thousand of my students faces you know i'm trying to recollect but naam yaad nahi aate हाँ फिर सामने आ जाए तो हेलो बोल लेते हैं पूछ लेते हैं हाँ तो ठीक है जो सब पार्ट अभी आपको जो स्टडी करना है फोकस से करना है नथिंग शुड कम बिटवीन यू एंड योर एग्जाम एंड यू हैव टू ऐड दैट डिग्री इन फ्रंट ऑफ योर नेम फॉर दैट यू हैव वर्क सो हार्ड सो इंटेंसिव मोर देन टू हंड्रेड आवर्स ऑफ कोचिंग यू टेकन फॉर डायरेक्ट टैक्सेशन so now that will be fruitful and comment tell me ma'am we have cleared income tax exam with 